ready for qualification resumes as the World Surf League arrives in Sydney, Australia for the second stop on the 2023 Challenger Series. There's no gimmies on the Challenger Series. Every round's an elimination round. With a rich history of competitive surfing, iconic North Narrabeen is back on the world stage to showcase its breathtaking beach breaks and the next generation of surfing superstars. 80 men and 48 women clash in pursuit of the same dream, getting one step closer to the WSL Championship Tour. For the world's most promising surfers, the quest continues here at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. Good morning once again from North Narrabeen here for the GWM. Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. This is the second stop on the Challenger Series and we've had a, a magic couple of days of competition. The field it has been whittled down to the final eight on the women's side. We've still got to get through a couple of heats in the round of 16 to determine quarterfinals three and four. But have a look at the warm-up going on here for wow. Justin Bacret, the Frenchman. He's psyching up. I wonder where he's getting his morning coffee. I've got to hit that spot up. <laughs> he's got a gut full. He is uh, absolutely amping to get out there. So very likely we will see the completion of the round of 16 out there. Here on the Harvey Norman host there once again, Ronnie Blakey joined by local legend Laura Anova and a former CT hero. Had a big victory at Trestles. More magazine covers than I can count. And Rich, you've seen a, a lot of sunrises in your life but uh, today was a pretty special today one. Today was absolutely magic. Sensory overload. We had the double rainbow, beautiful sunrise and uh, some fun little waves. Yeah, the, uh, the sun coming up over the horizon. It shed light on the, the lineup. We saw the surfers warming up. What are we looking at today? Uh, it has dropped a little bit and uh, everything's shifted back onto that true North Narrabeen peak. A uh, couple little alley rights, a few fast little running left-handers, strong offshore wind. And uh, the, the next couple of days look really interesting. So I think we're going to take advantage of what's out there today. We'll get the official call in a sec, but it's looking fun. Definitely fun. Definitely. Uh, early starts throughout the week, Laura, and uh, Saturday night last. Didn't expect to see you here this early this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> got to do what we got to do, right? <laughs> yeah, we're trying to get through it. But, uh, I mean, you've seen uh, North Narrabeen in all kinds of conditions. It doesn't take a, a lot out there, swell-wise, to, to serve up some, some decent scoring rides. Yeah, <clears throat> so absolutely. <laughs> I swear I went to bed early last night. Um, yeah, coming into the car park this morning, it looked a lot smaller than it has the last few days. But the thing about Narrabeen is when it shifts over, like you said, back into the alley, it's a lot more powerful than you, you, you would expect when you get out there. And I've been seeing crew do three, four turns on a wave on those alley rights. And as that tide fills in this morning, it's going to you know, make those lefts a lot more open. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of opportunity out there. So we're on, I reckon. Bring it on. Let's find out what's coming our way today. It's a beautiful Sunday. Good morning, Stace. Good morning, Ron. Good morning, Law. Morning, Rich. And good morning, Will. You've earned your crust this morning, mate. What are we up to? Hey Stace, uh, yeah, the surf's dropped a little bit from yesterday, but we're seeing some fun alley rights and lefts, so we're going to be on. We're going to finish the men's round of 16, and we're going to start the women's quarterfinals. And from there on, we're just going to make a call each round. If the surf hangs in like this all day, there's, it could potentially be finals day, but we don't want to call it just yet because there's potential for some really strong wind later. So just got to monitor that and see how we go through the day. And what's tomorrow looking like? Someone said Armageddon, it wasn't me, but no, tomorrow there's going to be a really big south swell. It's like four metres at 12, 13 seconds, so it, it, we don't know how that's going to look out here. Probably not very good, probably too big and wild, so that's why we're having a real good look at finals day today, but we'll just take it round by round. Yeah, there, Laura Enova style uh, wave readings there. <laughs> Back to you, uh, Rondog. Thank you, Stace. Stace has uh, just been lapping up his time here on the northern beaches, staying at the uh, NRMA Parks and Resorts over the road with his family, his young fam. They are up to uh, Palm Beach last night to hit a Barrenjoey house. 
really lording it up. Very, very nice meal up there. Absolutely wining and dining. But yeah, uh, yeah take your pick. So much to see and do on the northern beaches. Plenty of good spots to uh, get a good feed. But no better spot to be than right here for the completion of the round of 16. Heat 5 getting underway this morning. And we saw the warm-up from Justin Bacret, the Frenchman. He is going to be so fired up. He's already had an eight and he, he wasn't even in the water. <laughs> here he goes to kick things off here, looking for a place in the quarterfinals. These two surfers. Oh, oh. And wow, got a little tangled up on the landing, but he's hung on for the finish here. Wow, that was uh, that was an insane landing there. And I'm, I'm very glad he did those warm-ups warm on the oh, beach yeah. because uh, his ligaments were ready for that. That warm-up was almost a carbon copy yeah. of what he just did on this Air Rev, so uh, pumps down the line, looking for the alley right section and uh, takes to the air. What a bad ride to kick the day's action off. Yeah, speaking to uh, Alain Rieu, he's working with the, the French team. And you might remember him from huge mm. barrels in Tahiti. He's uh, one of the best to represent France and he's out here traveling with these surfers. He said just, just done is uh, in an incredible form at the moment. Also rated Marco's chances. It's a shame for him. He's got two French surfers in this first heat. But uh, it's a guarantee that he's going to have someone in the quarterfinals. As we see, oh. Marco just launching. So going to the same turn as Tristan, but maybe a bigger version on that first section. And he finished it off with a little turn down the line as yeah. well. Ali Wright has finally come into play here. Oh, in the alley we trust, uh, <laughs> North Narrabeen. These Look how far into that corner they are. You can see that that uh, rip just running out and they're making these alley rides so fun. But here we go, Marco just lining this one up, going to the air. You see his feet just positioning to just land that with ease and he gets the end turn here in the alley. The stair going, didn't he? At the end of this thing, so streaking down the line. Look, he had eyes for the lip. He knew he was going to take flight. Watch that front foot slide right up to the nose of the board. Got really inverted. The fins just uh, showing down the line. When they get those fins facing the beach, it's uh, pretty special. Both, both are cool. Yeah. <laughs> that warm up this morning. <laughs> wow. I, mean, I don't, it's I don't, know, I don't know what that move is, but I can't wait to see it. <laughs> Here we go. Here's Marco on his second ride, still waiting on numbers from the opening exchange. Both going to the rotation, but different kind of turns. Yep. Uh, Marco exploding out of the lip. Just done. He uh, powered down the line and, and really exploded out of that final section, kind of landed on the flat. It was a, a little tricky, the landing but it should still score pretty well. It'll be uh, a close exchange. You'd think that first one, as we see the replay of Marco's second ride here. For sure, yeah, nice back up and just down here. Again, going to the air. Oh, oh wow. I think he needs a bit more wax on that, that front foot because it keeps wanting to slide off the board. A full tip of the cap to uh, the bodyboarding community came out drop me <laughs> <laughs> yeah his back foot just uh slipping off the tail pad but he he kind of rode out of it but with one foot on the board <laughs> looking a little right here oh, just God. gets a quick snap and then starts to put it on the accelerator and he uh takes flight here good rotation almost complete about 300 degrees but uh just watch the back foot it slips off as he lands Geez, that's, that's a dangerous turn there. That's begging for a knee injury. Yeah, that's going to sting that he didn't uh, ride out of that one. It, it's almost like he didn't go into full recovery just to maybe sell it. Sell to the judges that he had control and was just in a uh, yeah. sort of like a, a recovery position. But uh, I don't think they'll buy it. As we see now, Marco up again. Wow. All the, the competitors have seen it all this week. We had big conditions and a lot of wind. North Narrabeen early early on in the contest and then the move down to car park right so there was even a left rip bowl that we saw competitors scoring on yesterday and now they're right in that northern corner here on alley right and really focused on landing some big airs to, to kick off the day in this first heat. Yeah these guys were surfing this bank right before the contest started before yet yeah, like you said we moved down to the alley uh, sorry car park rights 
So everyone's had a bit of experience out here uh, the first few days when everyone arrived from Snapper to get acquainted with this bank in the alley. So I'd be interested to know if there was any board changes going into this morning, just really getting into some more, you know, air boards, progressive boards, things uh, that they want to be able to throw around because these guys are throwing their tails quite yeah, sky easy this high, morning. Aren't they? Yeah, yeah, I saw, um, uh, I was watching the morning warm up and, and Morgan Siblick came in, went and got a, a different board. It was actually a quad, went back oh, out, looked like oh, yeah. it was an epoxy. So uh, really having a, an equipment change, uh, testing some new things. It, it's a different sort of style of wave that we're seeing today. Sure. You know, it's it's not that, you know, down the line, really cupped out barrel style of wave. Uh, you know, it goes a little flatter. But these alley rides are so contestable and uh, as that tide keeps pushing in, they're just going to get a bit bigger. And yeah, so it's pretty fun out there. And I think whoever's got the right attitude going into this morning and, you know, isn't too disappointed with the drop in swell, yeah. will really take advantage. And I'm sure everyone's getting fired up after watching these two get started this morning. Well, just fly on the wall this morning up in the competitors area and there was numerous surfers going, hey, let's get this thing going. Like, oh, cool. come on, there's waves out there. So, and uh, here we go. Here goes Marco Mignon. A little slide tail to start off. Streaking down the line. Just a number of foam hits. Looking for that end section. And uh, he's had a couple of waves like that that have gone a little bit flat. He perhaps needs to just settle down. Start looking for something with a bit more face down the line. Yeah, Marco Mignon. One CT wildcard appearance in 2019. Had a 17th there, the 22-year-old. Spends a bit of time in, in France, but uh, a lot of time over in Salulita, Mexico as well. And I want to send a shout out to Calais Carranza, one of my uh, favorite surfers from Salulita. I'm sure he's tuned in uh, and watching this one. But we see it uh, a fair bit now. We've got surfers representing their heritage that don't necessarily live full time in, in the country that they're, they're representing. You can see Tatiana obviously representing Brazil, Luana Silva, Aaron Brooks representing Canada. It's, it's kind of cool and uh, it, it does speak to uh, the country that surfers want to represent if they can somehow crack the code and, and get themselves into the uh, Olympic qualifying position. So I don't mind it. It's cool. So Marco Mino, he's got a, a number on the way, but Justin Bacret, he's got a 5 and a 2.33 in second place at the moment. Was looking for a, a 5.01 to climb up in the first quarterfinal place on the line. We know the top half of the quarterfinal bracket for the men is already established, and they're great matchups. You've got a couple of former CT surfers in Jackson Baker and Frederico Marias battling in quarterfinal number one. But the heat that I think we're excited about is quarterfinal number two at the moment. Cole Hauschman just uh, really impressing us with his surfing throughout the contest. Big numbers coming for him going up against one of the other big units in the uh, the draw here in the Challenger Series. And Mark Luckerman, who's yeah. a, a veteran campaigner. That's a uh, heavyweight bout for sure. And... Uh Cole Hauschman has been one of the favourite surfers of the event. He's been so in form. And here we go, Marco again. Nice hit there. A lot of spark in his surfing. Doesn't get the finish on this one, though. Yeah, I think uh, on any given day, if, you know, you'd rock down to Narrabeen on a day like today, you wouldn't not take the board out of the car. I think you'd wax up. You'd get out there. There's fun little waves. For sure. And uh, forecast, as Will said, it's looking pretty interesting tomorrow looks big unpredictable whether it's actually going to be rideable good winds but the swell is going to be super strong so uh, it could be a washout down here and then Tuesday sort of pretty similar to what we're looking at here so I think organizers making a good call to get things going 20 and a half minutes to go here the World Surf League would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the Gayamagal and the Gadigal people of their country on which we gather here today we pay our respects to their elders past present and emerging and extend this acknowledgement to all first nations peoples here today and joining us on the broadcast magic zone and uh yeah there's plenty of that indigenous 
history that is visible that you can check out. The Karingai National Park, just a, a short drive away from North Narrabeen here. But uh, yeah, beautiful coastal walks too that you can take here and you know really appreciate just how uh, incredible this area would have looked with uh, uninhabited. Just uh, would have been amazing. We've seen some of those great sunrises today and throughout the uh, event window. Beautiful images coming out on social media. Big double rainbow, as you pointed out, Rich. It's a yeah. special place. Oh, it is indeed. Um, really unique. Every headland's a little bit different. And uh, some great uh, vantage points, some viewing platforms on some of the headlands where you can really, you know, gaze out to the ocean and, and uh, check it all out. And some uh, when, the, when the waves are big and on, there's, there's a couple of great spots where you can watch all the bombies start to light up. Here goes Marco again, loading up, already has the lead, trying to better a 3.83, willing to take a chance on some of these alley rides, the smaller ones, just to build under priority here. Yes, yeah, smart. I mean, he's got the 6.17, so just wanting to edge away from just done. It's a, it's a stacked field when you, you look at the lineup in the quarters already on the women's side. Great matchups and a, a big chance for India Robinson just to extend her position and consolidate her at the top through the quarterfinals after winning stop number one. Sally Fitzgibbons, though, looks like the surfer to beat for me. She's just been powering through the rounds actually cruised through her, her round of 16 heat, looked really just composed and, and seems to have a lot more to give. So she'll be hard to stop. For sure. I mean, she's coming up against Alyssa Spencer, who's been in pretty amazing form on her back end. She's just got that deadly backside slash. So I'm excited for that heat. I think that'll be one of the heats of the round of the quarterfinals for the women coming up later. But yeah, this, I'm sure these two competitors have spent a lot of time competing against each other in, in the uh, European Regional Series Pro Juniors. They're around the same age. Justan's only 21, Marco 22. Incredible surfers coming out of Europe. Yeah, big push, but uh, especially coming from France. Yeah. Unbelievable. Uh, looking at the regional qualifiers, you know, 90% of them French and yeah, there, there's, there's something happening there. I, I think just the, the fact that France is hosting the, the next Olympics ha, yeah, has yeah. reinvigorated their, their competitive fire and they all want a piece of it. And uh, just sharpening yourself up in these Challenger Series events before maybe getting to the uh, ISA World Games and, and looking for qualification there is, is going to be crucial. Yeah, I, I think we need to um, mention Jeremy Flores in this conversation, for sure. For sure. Uh, you know, Jez is, um, well, he, he really spearheaded that whole push from France, originally from Reunion Island, but, you know, he parked himself at Hossigal there and, and just went, I'm going to make a career out of this surfing thing. He came to Australia and spent a lot of time here uh, on the northern beaches in particular, um, you know, sort of shacking up with, with uh, Tommy Carroll and... and getting a bit of an apprenticeship on being a professional surfer. And uh, I think Jeremy's inspired this whole new generation. You know, he's still such a, an incredible surfer. He had wins all around the world. Two Pipe Masters. Yeah, that's And a win crazy. in Tahiti. They're, you win the Pipe Masters once, you, you're never forgotten. You, you win it twice and you, you hit immortal status. Yeah. Mm. So amazing. 16 minutes to go here. We can't get enough of this bloke. Let's check in with Stace. Thanks, Ron Dog here with an Oakberry Surf Conditions update. It's another fresh morning down here at North Narrabeen, and as we have noted, the conditions have dropped a little bit, but fun waves coming in. As we see Marco up and riding now on the alley rights. Oh, well, I might throw it back to you guys to run this one out. It's on. Made a couple of uh, nice little hits there. That's under priority too. He's done really well to pick this one off, but Stace just picked his moments to attack beautifully. Yeah, that was, uh, that was actually a great set. Uh, just um, behind, but just a little bit caught behind. And I think, you know, the alley rights is going to save us today. The swell has dropped, as we mentioned. And with the tide coming in this morning, I think we're going to be in for a pretty high fire action. 
Hey, Stace, how's the lefts looking? Are there, are there any wider lefts that are going unridden at the moment? It, it's pretty fast. The one thing that I would say about the left is it probably offers a bit more vertical face to the wave. So I think if you could get your turns in, I, I think the judges would definitely be, you know, pretty keen to give you a big score. It's just running off so quick, though. I, I, I don't know how, you know, how often we're going to see crew going left today. Fair enough. We're going to see just done up at the moment. Just going to kick out of this one. Just under 15 minutes to go. Waited a long time for that wave and now has the, the motor running to get back to a position of priority here. Yeah, the thing about the alley rights, uh, as Stace maybe mentioned, Justan getting a bit stuck behind one, is that it, it, there's a lot of water moving out constantly. You can get pushed across. As we see Marco's wave throwing the tail there, absolutely love that wave. He kept so much speed throughout this. Finishes it off on the inside making that look so fun and movable, but that was the second turn, kicking the tail there. Just super fun waves here on offer. And Marco just making the most of this one. So this will be a really, really epic backup for him, I think. I'm not sure it'll be this 617, but I think it'll definitely get. And this one, just during the replay. And Marco just uh, finding a, a lot of speed out of this ride and just done got himself a, another wave two here rich yeah it's just done just a quick in and out there that one didn't really offer too much but you can see here marco just he's gone out there with a strategy of i'm going to just catch a bunch of waves and uh hope that one of them just turns into something and that last one yeah. did judges loved it yep. i think just the uh the flow on that four turns epic well it had that little pockety section one, two, three in a row that stood up for him. Got to get uh, pretty radical out of the lip. Showed the judges a lot of variety. Got the tail slide, a couple of clean snaps. He's got a real edge at the moment. He's pushed the, the requirement a little higher for Justan, who's after a 7.84 at the moment with just under 13 minutes to go. We're going to take a Bonsoy brew break. The GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy is brought to you by GWM, official automotive partner of the WSL Australia. By Destination New South Wales, official strategic sponsor of the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. By Harvey Norman, official lifestyle destination of the WSL Australia. And by Oakberry, fuel yourself with the official SAE of the WSL Australia. Welcome back to the show. This is the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy here on the Harvey Norman host set once again. Ronnie, Laura and Rich calling these first two heats of the morning for you. We've got a couple of Frenchmen battling it out for a place in the quarterfinals at the moment. And the man on screen has established quite a lead. Marco's been solid so far. He's been the busiest surfer in the lineup and found some space without priority to put big scores up against Tristan Bacret. And uh, Justin is after a 7.84. He's 
Maybe just uh, getting a, a little picky with that priority, that wave selection. I mean, you want to make it count. You don't want to open the door for your rival, but when they're building under your priority, it's a, it'll mess with your head, Rich. Yeah, it certainly will. Um, start to put a bit of pressure on, and that's a clean snap there from Marco. He's finding these little inside runners that are just standing up for him. Oh, Takes he, another uh, look at the judges. He knows it's good. Yeah, that would have felt really nice, especially after all that you know, time we thought he was going to go to the air, but then just that wave had a really nice pocket there for him to blast into. You saw Marco's uh, previous rides. He, he had that same thing. He's just really co concentrating on getting as much speed as possible at the opening stages, yep. uh, understanding that today it's about manufacturing your own speed and not just dropping to the bottom and, and trying to get a turn in straight up. And that's just allowing him to, to really dig in down the line. That one didn't go into his top two. It was a six, but it's still a, you know, a better score than what Justan has been able to put up so far in this heat. So a solid throwaway there. Yeah, and I love the way Marco looks like he's just like really reading the lineup. He's seeing these lumps come in, and that's what you need to do on the alley rights. There's some ones that push wide, and he's just hunting around, around the lineup. It was just starting to uh, take that six at this point in the heat. Just over eight and a half minutes to go. He needs to needs to drop a number here, otherwise uh, Marco's going to run away with this. Still not massive numbers on the board, so it's not out of reach. We know he can do it, but uh, I, I do like the energy that Marco's brought to this first heat. Staying busy, hunting around. We know it's the guinea pig heat, first one of the morning. Going to have a, a new champ on the men's side, which is uh, very exciting. Still a, a lot of the different qualifying series regions represented here in these last few heats of the round of 16 and in the quarterfinals. Plenty of internationals have broken through for victories here in the past. I mean, you just look at the, the last four years of uh, competition at this level on the northern beaches. Rio Ueda getting a, a win for Indonesia. Italy getting a victory through Leonardo. Jordi Lawler, the, the local boy here at North Narrabeen, had a victory back in 2019 for Australia. David Silva for Brazil, 2018. And Medina also claiming a, a victory for Brazil. Uh, so that's going to be fun. See what happens there. On the women's side, it's a little different. There's a, a couple of surfers chasing multiple victories here on the northern beaches. Sally Fitzgibbons, Teresa Bombolo, and she's looking to go back to back at the Sydney Surf Pro. Has been surfing very well, so we'll see how she fares. Those quarterfinal heats are coming up. Seven minutes to go here. And Justan is hoping for a special kind of wave, Rich. There hasn't really been a, a big difference in, in the size of the waves out there. All, all the scoring rides for these competitors have, have been in about the same height. So Justan's got to be careful that he doesn't wait too long for some unicorn wave that's going to pop up out of nowhere. Yeah, and this is a, a, an adjustment from tomorrow that needs, uh, from yesterday, excuse me, that needs to be made. You know, it's a, it's a fading swell before this new energy cut starts to fill in this afternoon. You've got to surf what's in front of you. And uh, well, Marco, again, they're finding room and looking really sharp. Uh, digs the fin of the rail, trying to right out of that little fin ditch. And now we see Justan. Is this the wave that's going to get him back in this heat? Forces the air reverse out of the, the pocket there. And he's going to lose priority now. Have a look at Marco. He just put on the, the outboard motor and is just hammering yeah. back to the peak because he knows that uh, you know this is a crucial time under six minutes to go he's got the lead he'll establish priority now he can really start putting some pressure on Justan who is desperate for a wave now this might work out in, in Justan's favour you know maybe under priority just trying to find one of those waves that really hits the bank that last wave of his it was a bigger one but it just you can tell sometimes the big ones aren't the best. You need that, you need that uh, energy to flow along the sand. Yeah, it's a good point. But I, I don't think, just because of the reps that Marco's been able to have, I don't think he'll be passing up yeah. those six-point kind of rides either. So well, I, don't think he'll, I don't think he'll be as picky. 
No, he won't, but priority does weird things to people. He might just drop anchor all of a sudden, go, oh, now I've got to wait for something bigger. But Cret does find some room to move on the inside, and there's a good start to this wave. Needs to just read these sections for what they are, not try and force that rotation out of the mix, and that is a better ride. Smart way, uh, move choices. Didn't overdo it. Most importantly, didn't fall. It, it felt better than his five. I think he's going to chip away at the requirement here. I don't think he's going to get the 7.84 to get to the yeah. lead, though. No, I don't think he'll get the 7.84, but I think he might get a mid-range five. Was a small wave, but uh, and, and that second turn was kind of just a, a you know, an in-between turn. But if he gets mid-five, then he's bringing that requirement down, and a, and a low seven or high six is, is attainable out here. Is, uh, he goes a, a replay of what Marco was able to do on the wave behind Tristan. And, uh, yeah, didn't really kind of line up for him. But this wave kind of held its height, Rich, from start to finish. Yeah, kept delivering these little pockets. Bang, slams that second turn. Comes all the way through to this final finishing manoeuvre here. And strong, three strong yeah, turns there. They were. Connecting them well. Yeah. Um, and, and connecting these turns today is going to be a a bit of a secret to unlock without looking too jittery and, and like you're really trying to pump for speed if you can do it in a smooth manner uh, the judges will appreciate that waiting on the numbers to come through yeah, it's an important number too he really needs to uh hopefully drop well, something around that high five six mark the numbers in for him it was only a 4.27 wow okay i saw it going a point higher than that but maybe uh just they wanted to see more in that first turn that's all i can think it seemed really comparable to the earlier ride from marco to me mm. but uh yeah i think marco's just release in the tail has seen his oh, numbers go a little higher and he's found a gem of a wave here already a nice carve mm. and he combos it up beautifully sometimes less is more that way but it was a little taller and it, it allowed him to mix up his turns yeah you could see that the, the bend that uh marco's had in his waves and i think what let justin's wave down was it was a, a, a bit of a fizzling wave and it didn't mm. really have that those big sections so he did the amazing surfing on it but the wave just wasn't there marco's wave then that's an edge him ahead i would say that was uh, two really nice turns with uh, a lot of pocket in those in in that wave. So that was wave number 12 for Marco, and uh, well, we see the replay here. It's a taller wave. He gets this first grinding slash, and then this second closeout re-entry just drifts the tail beautifully. I, I love this ride. I, I think this is by far the best wave of the heat, even though it's just the two turns. Just a, a much bigger section here, and he just timed it beautifully. That was a big fin release. Hung half his board out the top of the wave there. Great control. Okay. Absolutely. So he's actually ridden 13 waves now, so almost a wave every two minutes when you do the calculation. And look at that last score of Marco. Yeah, it's a, a beauty. 7.33. And, uh, you know, if you're just watching on and you, you're not really looking at the finer details of what these two surfers are doing you know it's easy to think that the the numbers could be a little closer but i think they're spot on with what they're seeing in marco's approach at the moment just a, a bit more release in the tail pushing his board a little bit higher in the face of these waves that last wave definitely the most high quality ride we've seen come in and he used it rich he made good use of both the sections on offer yeah he's just in a great rhythm with the ocean at the moment he seems to be you know on all the good ones even the smaller ones he's picking have got a nice little edge to them uh, and he was just in the box seat for that that was the best wave of the heat that came through for sure and you know he converted he looked like he was just you know ready to strike and he surfed with intent and, and uh, you know as a result he's got that beautiful score and a healthy lead final minute did uh, Justan maybe put too much into his preheat workout? <laughs> Potentially. Oh, gassed himself. I haven't seen anything like it. Well, the signs were good on his first ride when he took to the air yeah. and did that did that rotation. And, you know, we kind of went, wow, this guy's, this guy's really just in this heat. He's warmed up and ready to go, but uh, has just sort of fallen off. Marco's just a full spotlight thief out there at the moment too. Yeah. Uh, 
on the first exchange. Just done. He took off. He let go of the, the reverse on the way behind him. Marco took off, did a better version of the same turn, exploding out of the pocket. And he's just been building through this heat. His busy approach has paid off in a big way. We're going to see a, a shot at it here for Justan, but it is a big requirement. He needs a nine, and he's not going to find it here. So Marco is going to get the jump. He's going to be moving through to the quarterfinals here. An impressive performance, Rich. And... A whole lot of ways ridden. Yeah. As we dive into the Harvey Norman Heat recap. Yeah, busy. And that uh, was the key to this one. He just kept building. I loved how he stayed nice and light, nice and agile, kept drifting the tail, keeping the variety in there. And he stayed in the pocket. You know, that's what you need to do in the alley rides. It's easier to run off and, and uh, go hit a section down the line. But he just really made the most of what was right in front of him and kept in the power source, the wave, making his, uh, his turns. Big. Yeah, well, he's on his way to his uh, best result on the Challenger Series already. How far can we take it? We're going to see. But uh, it's an impressive heat score total to kick off the morning for the Frenchman. And he gets the win over Justin Bacret, who uh, you know, might just count this uh, as a result if he can get some bigger results through the next four events. For the boys, it looks like they're going to hug it out here. We've got a, another big clash just around the corner. And it is going to be between the two Americans, Eitan Osborne and Cade Matson. Stay with us. That feeling going up and down the New South Wales coast with my family and my friends, all of the memories. There's no place like home and this place really does have a special feeling in my heart. You come to Sydney and no one's sleeping in here. Everyone's out and about doing amazing things, coastal walks, coffee. Everyone loves to be outdoors and just taking in the beautiful energy around us. We started the morning off with a surf at Narrabeen, then up to my favourite coffee stop at Zuby Narrabeen. Went and checked out a couple of the coastal walks. Some really cool places you can just see, hold a line up and break. And then over to throw some clay around, which is something I wanted to do for a long time at Throw Clay Studios. Northern Beaches coastline is just beautiful. You've got amazing waves all up and down the coast, cafes, restaurants, surf clubs, each that make these beaches so different and unique. Loving our time here on the Northern Beaches and in Sydney, New South Wales, delivering in a big way. Destination New South Wales, an official strategic sponsor of the GWM Sydney Surf Pro, presented by Bonsoy. Heat six, it's a beauty. Eitan Osborne from Ventura up against Cade Matson from St. Clemente. And it's going to be Cade getting started here. Has looked really sharp on his road through to this point in the competition. And really starting to build towards some big results on the Challenger Series as he works this wave over. So much body talk. And punching the pocket of this one a number of times, Laura. 
Yeah, wow, nice way to start for Cade. And he is a big kid. I was wondering how he would go, but he looks so light-footed out there today, throwing so much speed. He's got a lot of power to his surfing, so that was a really, really nice way to start. He just generated speed from the get-go here. Bashes into the lip, waits for this to line up. Nice turn in the pocket here. Staying super close to the power of this wave. Sort of fizzles out here, but he gets another couple of slashes here to just squeeze the juice out of that lemon. <laughs> he did. He squeezed it right out. He's been squeezing the juice out of this uh, Australian leg. He's had a, a lot of big moments. None bigger than May 16th. He's uh, his 21st birthday. He'd love to celebrate that milestone with a, a huge finish, potentially uh, on a finals day here. But Cade has started this, this heat off in, in fine form. He's got a, a tough opponent, a surfer that's really capable of anything. I, I think, for me, Aitan Osborne does bigger airs than just about anyone on the planet at the moment. He just gets so much height. And uh, he's proving to us that he can really uh, put together a heat as well. He had a tough one in his last round, Rich, but he managed to save himself. Yeah, it's uh, he's got this sort of raw element to his approach, which is uh, really unique, and I like it. It's kind of spicy. Bit of unpredictability. You never really know kind of what he's going to do. He could, you know, throw the, the full uh, Hail Mary at the end of a ride. And, uh, yeah, but you, you're right, though. He has toned that down and settled into a, more of a competitive mindset. Uh, obviously, um, you know, wanting to, to really dig into this Challenger series and make his mark. Yeah, that's what makes this heat so exciting. I think you have that unpredictable side of Aitan and then Cade, he seems like he just knows how to connect the dots and really surf smart heats. He's been, you know, surfing heats since he was a grom, you know, coming from that San Clemente region. They uh, they really know how to put it, put together a good, smart surfed heat. So it's hard to see where they both go here. Aitan's loving his time in Oz. He's actually recovering from a, a nasty injury. Um, but he's uh, been putting the, the time out of the water to good use. He's been working, working hard back home. He's uh, a part of that Chapter 11 crew with uh, Dane Reynolds. He's been working in the store, he, he told me. And he's been enjoying it. He said he uh, loves the, the feeling, the satisfaction of putting in a hard day's work. But uh, now that he's here and he's surfing, he's getting through heat, so I... I think he seems a little bit more happy in this zone. But he's, he's actually going to extend his trip here to Oz. Uh, he's going to stay. He's heading down the, the coast with Harry Bryant to hang out and get some waves after the good, contest. Good move. Planning a, a, an Indo trip, and then uh, he'll head over to Bolito. But, um, you know, I always like that when, when someone just throws themselves into... You know, everything a, a country has to offer doesn't just step off the plane, surf the heats and bail. Yeah, well, Kelly's a pretty good example of that. He was never one to really just dip out straight away. He always hung around and, and surfed the spot and really immersed himself in the culture. But, I mean, in terms of staying on the east coast of Australia at this time of year, smart move. You know, this is primo yeah. time when we get these amazing swirls and, and beautiful winds. Yeah, the water's still relatively warm. These big south swells are going to have a lot of, uh, you know, the one coming tomorrow is going to be pumping somewhere. You uh, got got the canisters in your <laughs> inflatable vest, Law. You checked them out. You're ready yes, to go. They're all ready to go. <laughs> I was going to give it to you, mate. The vest? Yeah, for today. Oh, yeah. Keep my head above water in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, over 21 and a half minutes to go. And, uh, yeah, just... You know, touching on Aitan again, there's some competitors, Rich, who, who like just to get into bed early at night. Aitan's sort of been uh, out and about. Had the, the swell-in show the other the other night. It was a, a face melter for Harry Bryan. He had a great time. <laughs> Wayne Rabbit Bartholomew. He was there. Aitan was just laughing his head off. He just couldn't believe it. Just that uh, that raucous larrikin is alive and well in the Aussie surf culture. Well, he, he turned up to the beach relatively early yesterday, so he mustn't have gone too hard. He'll be here again. Tucked Who? Himself Who are we in? talking about? Harry? Harry yeah, he oh, tucked Harry, himself Harry in. went as hard as you could possibly go. Yeah, he turned up with no shoes on and uh, it was freezing cold. Yeah, well, he's not, <laughs> he's not here uh, surfing heats and maybe, well, maybe just he came igniting the, the, he was. the ultimate, you know, squad man in, his, in himself. 
Eitan would probably be looking forward to the comp wrapping up today so he could go chase this swell down the coast or up the coast or wherever this week. So let's see if he can uh, get moving here with 20 minutes to go. Yeah, a bit of a slow start for Eitan, but he does want to make use of this priority. It was a, a strong opening ride stays for Cade Matson at 5.83 but you've tracked down the winner of the last heat how's he feeling I have Ron he's feeling pretty good well done dissecting uh, the first heat of the day on a new bank Marco no, I mean uh, it was a little ride I, I love those little rides so uh, yeah I'm really stoked uh, I was surfing against Justin I have such a massive respect for him he works so hard and puts in a lot of hard work so yeah a lot of respect for Justin and uh, I'm really stoked to move on though and uh, yeah Another day, another blessing. <laughs> Both of you guys had some pretty impressive warm-ups. Yeah, I mean, uh, we were like back and forward in the beginning. He got a sick air, and then I backed it up with a sick air. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's still really fun out there. So, yeah, I'm stoked. Through to the quarterfinals, how do you prepare for that match? You could be in tricky conditions this afternoon or, or really big and onshore. Oh, sorry, big and perfect tomorrow. How, how do you prepare? I mean... We can't really control the external world, so I'm just trying to focus on the moment and whatever happens, we're ready. Well done. We'll see you later on. Thank you. Wow. Words of wisdom. <laughs> wow. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. That's, some, that's some the fans attitude. As he, uh, he gets more and more screen time too. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. But uh, he's got some pretty interesting clips on social media as well worth checking out. But I, I liked his theory. It just... You've got to surf what's in front of you. Don't sure. get too far ahead of yourself with the expectations. Don't try and sort of preconceive what's going to happen or what you're going to be surfing. Wake up, look at it half an hour before your heat. Just uh, really give yourself over to what's going on out there sure. and, and make the most of it. Once that, you know, once that event is, t is called on, then there's no point worrying about what, what the rest of the week nah. is doing. It's a movement here. Eitan Osborne tucking in. Can he punch his way through this curtain? He can't. Just gets locked in to a cavern on the inside there. That was a promising sign, though. With a, a bit of morning vision. Still serving it up here at North Narrabeen. A little tube time on the alley rights. Very promising signs. Ideal conditions. Wind just a light offshore. Aton just uh, pumps down the line, sets his rail, but unfortunately that thing just uh, clamped on him. A nice little uh, run in there, but just extended and, and pinched on the face of the wave, unfortunately. And uh, that's not going to do much for him. That was a, a long wait for that first ride and unable to convert. 5.83 for Cade Matson's going to have him in a, a pretty solid position here yeah i think Aton might just need to try get busy now under priority maybe go to the air do uh some of those things that he's known for i love that you know he could be just one of the world's best free surfers but he he really wants it you know after he you know bowed out last year of the hell eva event he was right there ready to you know if he had a couple more heats make that championship tour but unfortunately, bowed out at 16th on the Challenger Series last year. Here goes Cade. Yeah, already a fantastic start. Nice flow happening here. You know, moving with speed, oh, wow. but doesn't look like he's rushing it. Hammering this pocket a number of times. And, uh, you know, it's, it's the combination of celebrating good surfing, but I, I think celebrating the fact that you, you've converted when you know there's limited opportunities out there at the moment. That would sting for Aton, you know, getting that wave that ran off, but Cade made the most of it. This wave was an absolute beauty. Just staying so tight in the pocket here, just waiting for this wave and the sections to show up and going to absolute town here in the alley rights. Oh, this was such a great wave. It stood up all the way through. Such a great pace on this wave for, for Cade and the way he surfed it as well. Just uh, didn't try and force anything down the line. Connects with that lip beautifully. Recomposes. Nice and low off the bottom. Really carves that turn there. Puts a little extra uh, rail into that final part of the turn. Clicks onto this one. Drifts the fins all the way through to this inside section and gets a little bit more vertical again. Just 
bit of uh, upper body flair and talk. A bit of body language there just to frame the turns. Look That's at that That's going to be a huge score. <laughs> yeah, excellent surfing. 8.5 as we see. Eitan just now pushing it, knowing that he's way behind. He's got to surf his way back into it, and he's got to surf hard and, and throw some risk at these sections. Big number. Unanimous across the board. 8.5. Great judging. Yeah, consistent, and uh, it was a, a really, it was a no-brainer. Excellent wave, excellent surfing, high risk, good variety. Best wave we've seen this morning. And uh, uh, like that first heat where Marco was in rhythm. Looks like Cade's just found something special here. Yeah, almost reminiscent to a small little, little lowers bank over sand. You know, these guys would surf lowers at every every single size and uh, just we always say some, sometimes narrow bean can be just like yeah a little a-frame that can run off and if you can really find the right pace not rush too far down the line you can get some epic surfing in yeah, there'd be a uh, little chill in that water that's coming out from the lake as well tends to be a couple of degrees cooler so uh just amazing just reflecting on, on what we've had waves wise this week it's just been uh showing us a bit of everything and the competitors we said it at the start they're going to have to adapt they're, they're the the ones that adapt best they're going to be there having a, a go at the title here the gwm sydney surf pro presented by bonsoy kate matson is looking sharp as and really at the moment marking himself as a, a threat but aton's been in this position already in this contest in the last round and Needed decent numbers to dig himself out of trouble, and he found them. So don't write him off just yet. Just under 14 minutes to go. I know. We won't write him off. He's uh, he's definitely got what it takes to, to make a good fight back here. This next wave, really important. He needs yep. to make this one count. Well, Kay just uh, handed over priority as well. Yep. Just served it up. Like a ham and cheese croissant, Rich. How was that this morning? It was beautiful, mate. I started with a little <laughs> birch and muesli, and then uh, I couldn't resist. <laughs> Annihilated that thing. Yeah, you did. Had to watch it. It was quite the spectacle. Just uh, over 13 minutes to go here. Been uh, a lot of fun sitting here, chatting with you two about surfing this week. Laura, uh, big swells. I mean, it's a great time of year for them here on the East Coast. We, we've been treated recently. Uh, Northern Beach has had a, a monster not long ago, and we're lucky that the sand held in here at, at North Narrabeen. Yeah, well, that huge south swell, uh, I think it was maybe two weeks ago when Snapper was on it, it actually pushed a lot of sand up into this corner. So it kind of did wonders for this bank here. It didn't, uh, you know, sometimes we can see it just really... Uh, you know, push that sand away and, and uh, make it really straight here. But we've had, uh, you know, some epic waves on offer. Yeah, it's been solid and uh, looks like we're going to have some more tomorrow, but hard to tell what it'll do to the, yeah. the lineup here. It could make it really challenging. So at the moment, we're just moving through these last heats of the round of 16 to set up our quarters. And we'll be keeping a very close eye on things and making decisions throughout the day. But here's Aitan now, just begging for a ramp. This guy's got yeah. such big airs. And even in smaller conditions, you know, he's really capable of finding more height than anyone, I feel. And unfortunately for him, that wave just completely backed off. We've got just under 12 minutes to go here. And the surfer from Ventura is in need of two waves and chasing a total of 14.33. Kate Matson, excellent numbers for him. And we'll see if he can hold on for the victory right after this Bonsoi brew break.
GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy is brought to you by BioGland, official vitamin partner of the WSL Australia. By NRMA Parks and Resorts, official accommodation partner of the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. By Bonsoy, official milk of the WSL Australia. And by Yeti, built for the wild. Round of 16 action continues here on a beautiful Sunday morning. And we have Aton Osborne, one of the most exciting surfers on the Challenger Series, out there needing big numbers. Looking for a, a two-wave title of 14.33 because San Clemente's Cade Matson, who celebrated his 21st birthday on the 16th, is in party mode out here at the moment. Big numbers for him to kick this heat off. Could still improve on his 5.83, which is going to make life really hard for this man. Who's going to uh, try the little shove it there. Varial on the inside, doesn't quite stick it. Oh, you can look at the body language here. He just looks a little deflated at the moment. And uh, even through that that ride, halfway through, he looked disinterested. And he thought, ah, oh, I was going to try something. But he needs to stay in this. Yeah, he does. There's, uh, anything can happen here. Just under nine minutes to go. Yeah. And this is uh, during the break. So uh, his second attempt. He's so progressive. Got those, those moves on lock that he can go to. I mean, it's amazing to watch. Oh. Hard to know how the judges will score it, though. Uh, you don't see too much of it. I, I like Aitan for, for more of just a, a huge, lofty, straight air. There's a difference between functional and, and just trickery and, and doing a move that's super technical, but there's sort of not much function to it in terms of completing a ride and, and actually utilising what the wave has to offer. So, you know, I feel like that style of move, while magic to watch and incredible, the judges might not pay it off. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Well, let's see what he can do with this one. He's really forcing it now. He kind of has to because under priority, he's not getting quality waves. Super frustrated at the moment. I know what you're saying. The, the best way I could explain it to people is when you see someone release the tail through a carve and it's not executed with power, you're almost taking your fins off. There's an element of progression with it, but really it's sort of a cheater turn as opposed to just a hard full rail gouge, yep. um, which would more often than not score better. Uh, so I just think he knows that he can't get the height that he wants, so he's just really looking to mix things up. He's up again here, a little chop hop there, and he's really showing his frustration. <laughs> he, he wants to break combination, but these waves aren't just a, they're just not giving him that scoring potential at the moment. Yeah, well, Kate's not even looking at these waves. He, he knows that they don't have any power. They're running into that rip and, and just there's nothing really there. So Aton obviously taking them and, and trying to make something happen, but they just don't have that bend and, and uh, you know, really anything for him. Aton's a, a surfer who can give you something completely unpredictable on a wave this big. Um, but I really would have liked his chances in more swell against Cade sure. because you do know what you're going to get with Cade. It's pinpoint timing, it's powerful, and it, it, it scores well. But with Aton, you, you might see something that you've never seen before, and in bigger conditions, it's going to look even more mind-blowing. And his For raw sure. approach is, you know, works in his favour too, even with his rail turns. You know, he, he just digs in so hard, he throws everything at it. And that rawness... You know, it's it's really celebrated sometimes. And, yeah, I think his chances in this heat probably did go down a, a little bit with the conditions. So uh, we'll see what happens in the final six minutes. Yeah, hopefully we see a flurry. it would be great to see just a number of sets come through and both these guys get a, another crack at building some score line, in particular eight on. We want him to... Uh, Get back into this. It's not out of the question. We've seen stranger things happen. You can turn a heat in a couple of minutes. Oh, Aton's energy just a little low at the moment, but one person's energy that never dips throughout an event window is Kaipo. He's out and about. What are you up to, Kaipo? I'm here at the GWM activation. See this? This just looks like sand, but this sand can be made into a piece of art it took five days for two sand artists to make this sand replica of a Tank 300 HEV. It's where art meets engineering. Wow. And by the way, this 
sculpture is made out of 100% North Narrabeen sand. What? Is that what's happened to the bank? <laughs> All Should the sands in this incredible <laughs> replica? Is that what's going on here? Outrage! We should just plop that straight back in the left. <laughs> oh, that is unbelievable. That's it's amazing. So cool. And the cool thing is they told, told Kaipo he could drive it home. So uh, he's going to get that vehicle. But, uh, yeah, that's a, that's amazing. Five I saw, days. I saw it coming together yesterday. It's, it's pretty remarkable, yeah. super impressive. I just got stuck there for, like, ten minutes just in awe of, of them just making that and it's uh you know the intricate details of of what they were doing there they must have been freaking out this morning and when i got out of my car there was a little sprinkle a little spatter of rain coming down and i was thinking about that incredible sculpture and uh luckily it's held strong but yeah the tank an incredible model for gwm definitely worth checking out out there in the lineup at the moment four minutes to go and cave matson still hanging on to this lead he's uh he's had three waves only one throw away. His patience has been rewarded, but this this lead has all been constructed off the back of a strong opening ride. As we have a look at the Harvey Norman Heat recap. Yeah, it was a, it was an Ice Man like performance from Cade Matson, and as you said, Laura, not too dissimilar to those little running rights at lowers. And Cade looking right at home. Just uh, great timing, picking his moments to execute these very clean turns found this gem here and oh. just connects with it multiple times showing the variety putting a carve in there now he gets more vertical yes. gets the slide all the way through to the inside section with a fin drift right got new, that new haircut too by the looks of things yeah i think all yes. those all the boys are uh, in their san clemente crew the two percent crew they all got fresh Did haircuts they? yesterday and i think a lot of the northy grums are right. running it too yeah Ever, everyone walking the... past their house uh, just down there and in Narrabeen, um, just kind of came in and they were giving free haircuts away. I think brother had the clippers out and was just yeah. attacking anything, any oh, head yeah. that was uh, I think they've actually picked up around. about an extra 10 kids from Narrabeen and joined them into the crew. Look at them. <laughs> oh, hard, uh, hard not to, you know, get connected with that, that buzz, that energy coming out of the San Clemente posse at the moment. Kay Matson. it's a... a a fast haircut and uh, it's, it's helped him out there in the lineup it looks like just surfing with incredible speed just pinpoint timing too and really left no points on both his opening rides on the outside though Aton he's just looking to, to put a wave together here and this one <laughs> not working out <laughs> Uh, I think he did that on purpose I think there's a white flag just uh, going up the pole at the moment Two this. minutes. Yeah, yeah it's, but, but. it just. Richard, did you ever have heats like this? Oh, look, in the space of your career, you're bound to have a couple of heats that don't go your way, but here we go. And uh, just again showing us this unique bag of tricks that he's got. Oh, man, he's, he's not really even getting the opportunity to show us much at the moment. And this is. You know, but if it wasn't for, for Cade Matson dropping an excellent score on a 5.83, it'd probably uh, have the WSL Office of, of Tours and Competitions probably considering what their next move was going to be. But Cade has put it together, and Aitani, I feel like he's he maybe panicked a little early with his rides. There was maybe opportunities without the the bigger progressive turns to to surf his way to potentially a, a score that would have him not looking as at as big a requirement here. Yeah, well, we've just seen a number of sets roll in, and, and Kate obviously, is just letting them go. He's holding fort out there with priority. No need to take those waves. So you never know. The rhythm of the ocean can can just change. It can layer up. A number of sets can come through. You know, if he'd got himself a five or something, maybe he'd only, you know, still need a seven now and could have got one of these later sets that came through. Yeah, we really have seen just the contrasting approaches. Atom with 11 waves and uh, Cade with just three, really. Yeah, he, he's not even really looking for waves at the moment. He's just looking for a ride in to get a hot shower yeah. and, and wash this uh, heat, heat performance off. But, you know, it's a, a really tough one because he's on the cusp of a keeper result on the Challenger Series. And we know how crucial that is as we see Cade now just going to make his way in here. 
a really solid performance and a place in the quarterfinals. Just never pushed in this exchange. And he is on his way. And he's going to have a lot of support as he makes his way through the draw. But uh, Aitan Osborne, despite the fact it didn't work out for him in this heat, he had some great moments in the earlier rounds. And definitely, uh, I, I think he's a surfer who's got a lot of fans. Uh, people want to see him get big results on the challenges. He's the guy that you'd, you'd like to get, see get some opportunities in CT events. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, both these guys, great surfers, sets up a really nice quarterfinal with Marco and Cade. Well, a hero's welcome for Cade Matson here on the beach as he makes his way through to the quarters. We got another big heat just around the corner. Do not go anywhere because Jacob Wilcox is taking on Taj Limblad. That's up next here at the GWM Sydney Surf Row, presented by Bonsoy. I'm going to bring in Stace and Luke Kennedy for the call. Back to the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. Some great visions here of North Narrabeen this morning. Our competitors taking good use of the car park. Uh, uh, alley rights, been car park rights all weeks. Stace Galbraith on the Harvey Norman host set with Luke Kennedy. Luke, how's your morning been, mate? Oh, it's been fantastic. It's uh, incredible light over the lineup this morning, Stace, as we came in, as we see straight into it. One of the bigger waves in the morning, Taj Limblad. Yeah, I've got to correct myself there. I've been absolutely in awe of the alley, uh, car park rights all week, Luke, and we've moved over to the alley this morning. We saw uh, the first two heats competed over here, and I think this is where we'll be for the for the remainder of this round, at least as the tide starts coming in. This is a, a cracker matchup on paper. Jacob Wilcox, he got a fifth up at Snapper. Great start to his year. Yeah, the big one for Jacob is he's the only surfer left in the event who can bank two bracket results. Mm. So that'd be huge coming out of Australia. It would be massive as he looks to get his uh, contest underway this morning here, Luke. Yeah, just that distinctive whiplash approach to Jacob's style. It's, uh, it's a little bit different than some of the other servers on the backhand. Draws out a deep bottom hand turn. And uh, as you well know, Stacey, he's put a lot of time into honing his backhand attack. Nice and vertical with that finishing maneuver. And a great way to open his account Obviously grew up surfing a lot of hollow left-handers mm. on the West Coast and made a conscious effort to work on his backhand, moved to the Gold Coast, knew that that was something that was perhaps a, a weakness and you would have seen him surfing a lot up there yourself. Yeah, definitely. And I think this, this wave there in particular is a great example of, of what he's been working on, just slowing it down a little bit. 
and uh, really just connecting the dots on that ride. But the score, a 7-3-3, that is an amazing way to start the heat. And uh, Jacob will be pretty impressed with that as he looks to exercise his priority here on another scoring ride. If he can get two completed rides here this early in the heat, which he does, he'd be pretty happy with that as uh, he looks to put some pressure on the young Californian Taj. Yeah, I mean, that's a, a score to build on. It's, it's a backup. He'll be looking to better it, but uh, at least he's giving him something, uh, you know, a point from which he can swing from. Yeah, absolutely. As we mentioned, uh, Jacob, a, a fantastic result up on the Gold Coast. And, uh, this right here, Luke. Yeah, a much smaller way, but you can see the, the plan for Jacob. Love the finishing turn. Really swings it like a baseball bat was to get uh, two waves back to back really quickly, which is, was talked about yesterday. It's very much a, a mature CT approach. And you look at what a lot of the really good surfers do. I mean, the name Gabriel Medina comes to mind. Often they're winning heats with two or three minutes of really inspired surfing. Absolutely, yeah, it's a good call. And the earlier you can do that in the heat, the better. In the meantime, someone who executed that strategy pretty well was uh, Kate Mitz Matson. He's with Jess Grimwood. Thank you, Stacey. Yeah, Kate, that was a great strategy, obviously posting an excellent score. It must have felt nice to be kicking off what could potentially be a huge day of competition for you here with an 8-5. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I feel like in the first couple of heats, I didn't really get uh, opportunities to really open up. and. That was definitely fun to get a really good wave and just kind of be able to showcase my surfing that I know I can do. So, yeah, hoping get more of those throughout the day. And you've been to Australia a fair bunch of times, but you were just saying before, this is your first time in Narrabeen. How's the reception been for you? Yeah, it's been insane. We have the little 2% house over there. So, yeah, it's kind of like home, just all traveling together, having a bunch of fun, bunch of laughs. So, yeah, it's been sick. And of course, like we were saying, there's the possibility that you have uh, quite a number of heats today. What's the recovery for you look like in between the heats? Do you have time to process that performance or are you just charging on through? I'm kind of just taking it heat by heat, not really worrying about too much. You know, I got stopped in this round last year, so I'm definitely ready to go more. And uh, yeah, just go home, kind of lock in again and uh, go, go again. Beautiful. Congratulations. Big day for you and um, great surfing. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Jess. Well done, Cade. A pretty dominant performance there. He really had the uh, the rotation of priority on his side. He opened up quick. Aitan Osborne, unfortunately, couldn't really string together any scores in that heat. And sometimes heats just go that way. As we see a split peak that we'll catch you up on in that interview. And then Jacob Wilcox here. This will be his fourth ride. There's a 3-8-3 on his ride before. A 7-3-3 before that looking to uh, extend his lead there. But Taj Limblad's well and truly in this heat now with, it, with a nice ride in that interview. Yeah, he definitely answered back well. We'll wait to see the replay. I don't know if Jacob's score is going to go that much higher than the 383. But uh, we've certainly got a heat on our hands now. The 2% is a 2 from 2 into the quarters. Here's Jacob's ride again. Way face is a little bit flatter. Has a really good rhythm throughout it. Uh, doesn't have the opportunity to offer that much variety, but it's just really good solid surfing, and he may inch ahead of that backup score. And we'll catch up on this ride that was in the interview, Luke. Yeah, Taj Jungblad blasts out of the first turn, wraps back into the pocket, eyeing off this section down the line. Nice carve, a little bit of tail release, and finish could have been a little bit stronger, but it's a solid response. And it looks like just an in and out here for Jacob Wilcox. Yeah, whips it off the top and pearls. So that's the f maybe the first left-hander I think we've seen in the morning. Yeah, it is. And I think we'll see a couple more, particularly from Jacob. Uh, you know, I think you're going to need to be fast and pretty inspired on those lefts. And uh, Jacob definitely has all those attributes about his surfing, Luke. Yeah, definitely. And uh, nice to see the guys splitting the peak. Taj Limblad here. Great-looking wave. Good first turn up in the lip. Beautiful second carb. Young man there showing his power. Another nice turn in the lip there as this wave just keeps on giving him opportunities down the line and a nice finish. Oh, as we see, we catch up with Jacob there out the back. But uh, yeah, a fantastic ride there from Taj. Great wave selection. That wave, uh, absolute no-brainer to, to, to have a good crack at that thing. One of the better rides, uh, better waves we've seen this morning. We'll see how the judges break that ride down, Luke. Yeah, here it is from a different angle. Deep bottom turn, swings it off, gets a little hung up, but it's solid. Wraps back into the pocket. This wave just keeps giving down the line. Right up in the top shelf of the wave there again. 
and gets the completion. So really the first section was the money turn. And it looks like an incomplete air here from, uh, from Jacob Luke. Yeah, looking to take part in the Ali Wright's air show. We've seen a little bit of that this morning. Unfortunately, Aitan Osborne didn't quite deliver what we might have expected. Yeah, I think that uh, he was probably hoping for a few more quality opportunities. He, he looked to ride a couple of waves, I think, just keeping the feet in the wax and, and hoping that maybe he could surf himself into a bit of rhythm in that last heat. It didn't quite happen. But certainly, whatever waves didn't come through in that last heat have come through in this one. Every, all the guys in this one getting great chances to uh, showcase their repertoire. And we're expecting a uh, decent score to come in here for the surfer in blue. He's chasing a 5.34 to go into second. And uh, my early instincts are this will be one of the strongest waves of the heat. Yeah, it's a, it's a great answer back. And it's going to be, well, I mean, Jacob opened up with that 7.33, put himself in a really solid position. But... Uh, Taj is right in it. It's so, yeah, going to be an interesting score for the judges to dissect. Uh, Jacob surfing on his way, perhaps a little sharper, but uh, Taj had the uh, a lot more power out on the open face, and it was a lot bigger of a ride, able to kind of really showcase some strong open face maneuvers. So probably the best actual wave of the heat too. Yeah, definitely. So it's. Uh, Definitely a lot of deliberation at the moment. We haven't seen any indication of those scores as Jacob looks to keep building in his heat. I, I would say he needs a score to get the lead back on, on the live. So we have a couple of nice turns there from Jacob. And the finish. Certainly looking uh, locked in and, and ready to roll this morning. Yeah, he's just lacking a, a second wave with real quality. Uh, if he is going to take on the left, I think he's got to get the work done really quickly. As we see this... Opening section, nice whip out of the top, drifts the fingers through the bottom turn, but it's, then it's straight into cutback country. And unfortunately, uh, that won't score. It's a solid finish, but it's not going to go north of his back up necessarily. And you called it, Stace. There it is. 7.7 .7 for Taj Limblad. The young man got the call up the last minute getting into this event uh, on the alternates list, and he's absolutely making a great showing of it here. A 7.7 .7 on his last ride. He takes the lead. Well, we're going to take a look at some of uh, some of his best waves from the event here, Luke. He's had an amazing run through this event so far. Walk us through it. Yeah, I love that low slung bottom turn. Really blasts out of the lip. He's got big turns. Obviously, can ride the barrel. You can hear the screams <laughs> from the crowd on the beach. They just add to this highlight reel. Backs this wave wow. up really well. That's as good as it gets barrel two-turn combo and there's an indication throws the tail high rides out clean i mean as you said came his original alternate and he's really grabbed the bull by the horns and made the most of the opportunity yeah that highlight reel is insane it's uh yeah he's got a great variety in his surf from there i love that little uh little claim coming out of the tube just a little yes please thank you and uh he's certainly off to a great start here this morning Jacob left uh, chasing a 6.21, and I believe all scores are locked in at the moment. It was a 5.5 for Jacob on that last left, and I, I'd have the feeling that Jacob might be feeling a little, little caught off guard here this morning because he's done some nice surfing. I, I was just about to say, it looks a little bit shell-shocked out in the lineup there. He just <laughs> came out with the 7.33 and thought, oh, this is great. Yeah. I can cruise through with this. Yeah. And, and I, I do feel now for, for Jacob, this is going to be a great opportunity for him to, to practice what he's been working on. And, not do more than what he, he has to do. He's still surfing great. He, he's just picking some slightly smaller waves. And, and when he gets a, a bigger wave with a bit more opportunity, he, he doesn't need to go out of body to, to get a score, which I think's definitely been a downfall of his surfing over the last couple of years. Puts a lot of pressure on himself. He, he knows he's got the big tricks. He comes from a place in the world where they get fantastic waves. And I think more often than not, he's a surfer who thinks he has to do a lot more than what's required. We saw him on the 733. It was, uh, it was a series of nice turns on a decent wave. He's really just got to look to replicate that again. He doesn't have to go outside the box. Yeah, well, we see it so much. It's the surfers that have the ability to surf in that sort of, I guess, 90 percentile range of their, yep. of their ability yep. that tend to do very well. If they can replicate the 90 percentile yep. again and again, yep. then they march through the heats. 100%. And then they call upon the you know, 110 percent when they need it. Yep. But too many of the surfers have that like it's, it's at like 60 or 100. You have to get that middle to upper range yep. consistent. Absolutely. It's a, it's a really, really fine line. I think Jacob's done a great job at working on that over the last couple of months. So I'm looking forward to seeing how the back half of this heat plays out. But in the meantime, going to chuck it down to Kipes. Kipes, what are you up to? 
Hey guys, sometimes I'm frothing <laughs> solo, sometimes I'm frothing in a group, but right now I'm frothing on cuteness because this is Little Dog. This is Little Dog, and Little Dog is surfing legends Bruce Raymond's pup. Hi, Little Dog. And this, so Little Dog came down along with Bruce to check out the comp. We're checking out the comp. We're totally frothing in a cute way. And you can find out more about Little Dog at Little Dog Adventures, uh, Little Dog Dot Adventures. That's on Instagram. Follow Bruce and Little Dog's Adventures. And I'm frothing on the cuteness. <laughs> Absolutely. Little Dog there. He was hanging out in the uh, accreditations booth this morning uh, saying no to everyone that was looking to get a pass for today's action, keeping a tight rein on the Cooper's Bar up there for this afternoon should we go into finals action. But uh, Bruce Raymond, pretty famous name around this part of the world, Luke. Oh, definitely. He was a, uh, you know, a decorated competitive surfer who then went on to have a, a very uh, prestigious career in the surfing industry. He was international marketing manager at Quicksilver for a long time and really did a lot of uh, a lot of great things some major initiatives had uh, you know the performers Moody was sort of he was right behind that was kind of the first team movie concept mm. and uh, a lot of people will also remember Mad Wax yep, with Ross course. Clark Jones and Tom Carroll and Bruce was definitely part of the creative vision there also a couple of other sort of very classic advertising campaigns some that we won't mention <laughs> but uh well, yeah. I don't think we need to mention them. They're pretty, uh, they're pretty iconic. If you can think what we can't say on air, they probably come out of Bruce Raymond's brain. <laughs> As we have Jacob Wilcox having a look at this ride here. Again, he's, he's, surfing, a, he's surfing on the waves. He's, he's looking really sharp. It's just the waves that he's been on for, since the 733 haven't really offered him a whole lot of steep face to work with. This one gives him a nice finish here. As the Surfing Australia crew let go of a few whistles at the end of that ride, and rightly so. He's looking sharp on his board. I just wonder, Luke, if that's going to fall in that same ballpark as his prior rides. Well, I feel like what's happening with Jacob at the moment is he's rolling the dice and thinking it's not immediately apparent as to whether or not the score is there or not on the wave, mm. but he's got to go because maybe he will get a really good section and then it will be like a point better, which is all he needs. Taj Lindblad here on a good-looking ride. A little bit more lateral in the opening there. He'll be looking for something big down the end. There it is. Wow. There's so much going on on that ride. Uh, after the first turn, I really believed he should have kicked out of that wave to retain priority. <laughs> However, with the execution of that last manoeuvre, what an amazing uh, job he's done there to try and add to his total, Luke, as we check the replay. Yeah, so as you suggested, first turn, just a check turn. Second turn, car back to the pocket. Realises he needs something solid off the end. A lot of speed, tail high. Wow. Good amount of rotation. See the front foot slip forward. And you can see the distinctive difference between the two waves. Totally. I mean, Jacob probably has the sharper start. Taj definitely with the better finish. And uh, again, great surfing. No downtime in between his turns. It's. Uh... See, I wish he'd had that, that end section. It's interestingly enough, the end section here at Alley Wrights is, is the best section sometimes. Yep. And yep. the judges want the best section to be right up at the beginning of the wave. Absolutely. Lots of scores to come in there. We're going to take a Bronsoy brew break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more action coming up this morning from North Narrabeen.
GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy is brought to you by Bailey Ladders, official ladder partner of the World Surf League Australia. By Boost Mobile, official telecommunication partner of the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. By Bond University, not for profit and not to conform. Bond University exists for you. By Cooper's Brewery, the official beer of the World Surf League Australia and by Northern Beaches Council, major partner of the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. Welcome back to the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. Stace alongside Luke Kennedy in the booth and we've had a, a cracking start of the morning here, Luke. This is the third heat of the day and it's, uh, it's been the best matchup yet. Yeah, this one's been completely toe to toe, distinctively different approaches. Goofy footer, natural footer, we've seen a little bit more progression from Taj Lindblad. So, and we've got just under 10 to go. Still plenty of time left. Yeah, absolutely. Plenty of time left and with the amount of waves we've seen so far in this heat. I mean, if you look at uh, both of the gentlemen's scores there, they're, they're throwing away numbers that a surfer like Aitan Osborne would have just loved to have a crack at. So there's been, you know, this heat has certainly been on. Uh, the last heat we watched was a little slow. We watched was a little slow, a bit more of a one-side affair. It was Cade Matson having a really strong performance over Aitan. And um, I got a call from uh, mm -hmm. the coach at the Manly Seagulls as well. Said if uh, Cade can't make it into the finals, he can get a start in the centres for Manly. Oh right, he's yes, big, he's a big lad. Uh, and you know what? Uh, where do you put Cole Hausman in that in that team? He's another big unit. Straight into the second row. I think. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yep, yep. It's uh, it's uh, definitely an awesome sort of feat of athleticism when you see someone like Cole Hausman or Cade Matson doing a, you know, four to six foot air above the lip. We saw that yesterday afternoon with yeah. Cole. It's in, in, incredible, you know, technique and just, just goes to show you. Know, surfing, I don't know that there is a perfect body type. You could, you, if, you know, if your technique's there, you can do it all. Well, Cole Hausman, he's 90 plus kilos mm. and flying high. He's Geordie big. His boards are 32 and a half litres. Absolute stand up paddle boards. Uh, these two guys in this heat, though, they're definitely fighting in a similar weight class, a bit lower than those two other lads. As we see Jacob Wilcox here making a concerted effort to get across to this wave with first priority. It's going to be a great challenge for Jacob to see if he can execute on this wave. He's going to go up and riding now, needing a 7-8-4. Beautiful first turn. Comes off the bottom and another. There it is, a great sequence of events. And again, wowee. <laughs> you don't often see a lot of emotion out of Jacob, and uh, I know for certain uh, that is something that he has been working on a lot. We mentioned it earlier, uh, sitting in that realm of, you know, highest possible risk surfing with the highest possible reward. And, yep. and I think you're spot on, Luke. It sort of sits around that 80, 90% zone. You don't need to do a backflip, but surfing like this certainly helps. Yeah, the first turn is a little bit more of a setup. Now he really gets moving really rotating hard out of the top section of the wave. And once again, the final turn is a strong finish <laughs> into the slow-mo. He's throwing a lot of spray with these maneuvers. The judges won't necessarily score the spray, but they do like to see it. It suggests that you are using power. Nice and verdict with the final snap. This wave was just a little bit bigger. It offered a little bit more. And it was the one that he was really looking for and probably the closest thing you'll ever see to a claim from Jacob Wilcox. And it was, an, it was a fantastic exchange with Taj Limblad behind Luke. Yeah, wraps back into the pocket, straight up into the lip, throws the tail, little 180. You can see how far that front foot slips forward. You Not see sure. there from Taj, he's plenty of power in those legs, doesn't he, Luke? Yeah, he's loading up through those bottom turns, really wants to throw it hard at the lip. Was talking to some of his 2% friends and he said, yeah, Taj has got some big turns. As we eagerly await some scores there for the two competitors, I mean, it was a fantastic exchange. Uh, I don't know if Taj Limblad will better his situation, seeing as he's already got a 15.17 heat total. It wow. was fantastic surfing nonetheless. Wow. Early indications here from Jacob Wilcox's last ride. A couple of nines already in from the judges. It's definitely those combinations of the second and third turn together there that they would have really enjoyed. We're going to need to wait for another three scores to round this one out. Yeah, absolutely no downtime between manoeuvres. There it is, Stace. 8.83, and again, some emotion there from Jacob, which is not something that you see a lot of. He's uh, 
He's pretty fired up, and rightly so. But I tell you what, this heat is so on. He needs to he needs to keep composed here. He needs to make a really good decision with first priority on this next exchange because the young Tal uh, Californian Taj Lindblad, from the highlight reel we saw earlier, he has all the tricks in the book, and. Uh, certainly has got this you know well within his range to, to, to reel this uh, heat back in so it's going to be an awesome next five minutes as we see the nrma five minute warning pop up on our screen there yeah i think you're right stacy taj finds one of those slightly bigger waves with multiple maneuver opportunities has the chance to introduce a little bit of that progression he can definitely get the score yeah and, and you know his, his heat to this point is something that he should be pretty pumped up on at every exchange that he's had the opportunity to do his best surfing he's done it well you it's know? been a game of one-upmanship and this is what yeah. we want to see this is the best sort of professional surfing this is what we want to see with the, where the lead changes yep. multiple times i mean we saw jacob wilcox get that 733 early and we thought oh is it gonna be one of those heats where mm. someone just holds that down yep. for 30 minutes definitely not uh, we see um, a little little lump of ocean coming in here both competitors just having a little look at it going to let that one go. So the question is going to be for Jacob, how much faith does he put in Taj's ability to convert a small wave to nothing? Well, obviously quite a lot because this is, he's taken off on this one. So he's got to surf this one overs, in my opinion. Doesn't look like a very fantastic ride with a lot of water on the face. He's looking a better a 7-3-3. I tell you what, he's certainly gone on his best effort to try and do that there. It's, uh, it's a pretty fortunate position that Jacob's in at the moment, seeing that his lowest score is uh, something that he could look to better a lot, a bit easier than Taj, because Taj has got the two middle scores in this heat. I don't mind the decision, even though it was a smaller wave, it was a good wave. Whether or not Jacob Wilcox improves or not, I feel like Taj Lindblad may have had a shot at a good score on it. Yeah, I, I probably would have to sit on the other side of the fence there, Luke. I do not see eight and a half points in this wave any day of the week. So uh, if Jacob doesn't improve, I would say it just gives Taj a little look in in these last few minutes. Fair call, fair call. Which is what we want. It's exciting. And yeah. I think, you know, the young Californian, he, he hasn't fallen. Yeah. You know, even on his last wave, it was a 6.4. Uh, he still did great surfing on that wave. If, if he gets another opportunity, uh, it's going to be awesome to see what he can put together as we're going to take a look now at the Harvey Norman heat recap. And again, it has been easily the best heat of the morning, Luke. Oh, just totally toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Jacob Wilcox, there it is, that distinctive backhand snap. Taj Limbo, but it's slightly different approach. Lots of power, introducing some progression. Eyes off this section down the line, wait for it. Here it comes, winding up, tail high, gets good rotation, clean completion. There's the fist pump, he likes it. Jacob Wilcox again, this one's just a little setup turn. Now he gets going, cracks the lip, and again, turns are similar, but they're totally on point. The timing is perfect. Lots of speed through the maneuver, and he's ticking many of those boxes on the criteria. Absolutely. Out of the, the event thus far, Luke, this has been the highest combined total across two surfers that we've seen. So uh, on paper, it certainly lived up to the hype we were expecting. And, and two contrasting styles. I uh, love calling heats like this because you really get to see a, a great variety uh, on how these guys dissect the waves and then ultimately perform. Yeah, it's a real challenge for the judges. They're comparing mm. different styles. So you're comparing kind of apples and bananas and trying to come up with something that sort of puts it in the same scale. Definitely. So we've got 90 seconds on the clock here. A, a, a bit of uh, action on the horizon. What a response from Jacob Wilcox there, though. You know, I've really felt like he's been on the canvas twice in this heat. Yeah, he's come back. Totally. It's uh, and we, we just saw him at the halfway mark in that heat, kind of looking around as if to sort of say, I'm in second. Yeah. You know, Taj has really, really kept him honest in this heat. And as I said earlier, I think Taj, regardless of uh, the way this heat falls, should hold his head high. He, he really hasn't put a foot wrong. It's just been the rotation of the waves and when the surfers had priority uh, that... Um, you know, has sort of been in Jacob's favour. And, and to Jacob's credit, he's executed uh, equally as well. Yeah, Taj Limbad obviously came in as the alternate. Didn't qualify officially through the North American region, but he's proven in this event that he more than deserves a slot on the Challenger Series. Absolutely. And coming from a 
Great surfing family. His sister Sawyer placing second up on the Gold Coast for the first uh, event of the uh, of the year up there last week. So he'll be a little bit disappointed if he doesn't get to at least equal her performance. <laughs> he, did, he did tell me he was a, he was a bit fired up after that, and that he was definitely looking to match her, if not go one better. So he's going to get an opportunity here. 15 seconds on the clock. Taj Limblad up and riding. This will be the last throw of the dice. Oh, I had to go had for to it. Had to go for it, and unfortunately unable to put the landing gear down on that one. So unless there's some sort of miracle double up behind that wave, it will be Jacob Wilcox advancing through to the quarterfinals. And you make a great point there, Luke. The only surfer across two events to uh, get himself at this point in the event for the start of the season. That's right. Two bracket finishes and uh, made the quarters on the Gold Coast. Into the quarters now, but he wants to go far beyond that for sure. Yeah, definitely. Once you get to this point, and particularly after a heat like that, he'd have one thing on his mind now. We're going to take a short break here at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro. Don't go anywhere. Another fantastic heat around the corner. It'll be Morgan Sibelik taking on Joe Andrew. For me, coming home, spending time with the family and getting away and seeing Australia, for me, that's what it's all about. Staying at NRMA Parks and Resorts, it's always fun. The facilities are second to none, from basic camping into the cabins or glamping might be a thing. There's just so much to do. If we can go for a surf, we can go for a bike ride, we can even go for a skate. Perfect opportunity to disconnect from those things that hold you at home. That's the stuff that memories are made of. Great vision there as we come over North Narrabeen, the NRMA Parks and Resorts, right here on the river. And There's I think I can Narrabeen see my, uh, my three and a half year old son running absolute rings around that joint at the moment. We've been down here all week with the family and it's uh, been an absolute great time. There's plenty of things within walking distance of the caravan park and the caravan park itself is uh, sensational. I, I think there's a, there's a stat, Luke, you might be able to help me out here. It's the, it's the only one on the beach here in, in Sydney. Yeah, I think that's right. And it's actually, funnily enough, a lot of people come to the North Narrabeen Caravan Park for their holidays. Mm. Even Laura Enever used to go there for a holiday. Yeah. She lived at Narrabeen. <laughs> Camping in the backyard, why wouldn't you? So yeah, it's a, uh, it's a fantastic place. And uh, you know, we've, we've actually stayed there both times the events have come to town. And, and when I stayed here in 2021 with the World Tour event, I was like, oh, next time we come back, I am 100% bringing the family. Bit of argy-bargy to start this heat here, Luke. And no ride. And we will see Morgan Sibelik awarded priority there. We had a similar situation yesterday afternoon with Frederico Marais and Maxime Husano. Uh, however, this one a little different with Morgan being awarded the priority. And uh, in John Deroux's case, I think not such a bad thing for him because we can see him getting his heat started here because we do know that he does, to, uh, does like to uh, sit and wait, Luke. Yeah, well, that'll force him to get busy, but I'm pretty sure that Morgan's happy to have the priority. He almost played for it there. The hand went straight up. Yeah. Joanne looked like he had that mindset, I want to get the first wave. You know, that was his yep. kind of idea. And, uh, well, he did get the first wave. Here it is. A little bit lateral with the first turn, just a slash. Second one, 
That's not the wave he's looking for, so it gets the account underway. That's right. It, it, it'll get this heat rolling, which is essentially what we want to see, particularly in conditions like this. And, and that's why the, the tour did bring that rule in. We don't want to see a heat full of blocking and I'm going, no, I'm not going. We want to see surfing, and that's what we're going to get to see here this morning with Morgan Sibilic on his first ride. Beautiful opening carve. And a second there coming through to the inside, hoping to get a bit more vertical face. And wow, he can throw a lot of spray with not a lot of speed. So um, advantage Sibilic there, but I have a feeling, Luke, that both of those two waves that we've just seen won't really factor in towards the end of this heat. Yeah, there were definitely some points in that finishing turn for Morgan. Unfortunately, the first two opening maneuvers, just the front side sort of carved the cutbacks, probably won't score as well. But uh, we're underway. So take a re look at the replay here, Luke. Yeah, Morgan just setting up, arcs back into the pocket. Very similar turn to follow up with. This section down the end's got a little bit more in it. Throws a lot of power, as you suggested. Knew that he had to do something a little bit extra on the final section because these first two opening maneuvers, whilst it's great surfing, really good form, really good technique, they're probably not going to be big scoring maneuvers. No, just, just sort of keeping his momentum down the line for this turn right here. And behind him, Luke, John Roo. Swings off the bottom, there's that trademark backhand hook arcs back into the pocket now he's just setting up for something down the line always looks like he has so much time with his surfing needs another section here those days yeah some interesting waves to judge there sean drew had the better start the bigger section but uh didn't quite get the finish whereas morgan's was a little flatter on the open face at the beginning but had the cracker finish so we'll see where the judges place those scores yeah they're like a reverse of each other mm. weren't they Yep, I, I know the judges do like as much risk in the wave uh, as early as possible. So Jean probably gets the nod there. But in, in a situation like Morgan's, it was probably a bit more of a complete ride. So I think that uh, I'd expect Morgan to get the nod. But uh, similar what, scores, I'd say. Mm, I wouldn't expect a huge split between those two. As we see Jean Deroux here looking to, looking to stay busy. This will be his third ride. And he's uh, doing well to keep his momentum down the line. It's a pretty flat wave here. He's hoping this wave will get a bit steeper. He tries to sort of delay that bottom turn to make it happen. But I think that the work rate on this wave for uh, return in score will probably not be in his favour as Morgan behind. A nice turn in the lip there, but just gets a little hung up with uh, placing the finish. Never a nice feeling when you have to kind of abandon the ride like that. So he'll get back out the back and reset wait for those replays. I couldn't believe it when I looked at the stats. Jalan's been around championship events since 2006 when he first surfed on the championship tour. Holy Incredible. smokes, that's a, that's a long time. He has, he's definitely uh, veteran status and he spent uh, a lot of good years on the world tour, but this is a replay of Morgan's right here, Luke. Yeah, the play had more speed, gets the first turn in. Unfortunately, the wave doesn't open up. Here's Jalan, waves a little bit slower. Good crisp first turn, more lateral on the second little lateral again on the third and now you, as you make the point he kind of uses the stall you don't always use the stall for the barrel he'll stall to kind of wait for that wave to stand up a little bit more he wants a steeper section and uh you know it was a pretty grindy wave towards the end stays but did what needed to be done as we see early indications of scores there morgan Sibilic's first ride the wave with the nice finish it was a 6.17, and as we kind of expected, a, a decent score for Jean Deroux behind, but coming in under at a 5.33. And then Morgan's second ride there, just with the one turn, the 2.33. And now we're waiting for this longer wave of Jean Deroux to come in, which, I, I, again, for the amount of turns and the amount of effort on the wave, I don't think that'll be his best ride. But it'll be a second score in his tally. He only needs a 3.18 for the lead, and I, I think he'll get that. But, uh, again, I think that uh, from the waves we saw in the last heat... I'd like to hope we'd see a few more of them coming through for the next sort of 21 or so minutes in this heat. Jean Deroux, a bit closer to the channel, a bit wider on the peak on this wave. Goes for the reverse, unable to ride out of that wave. And Morgan behind. This wave's got a nice shape to it. Beautiful carve out of the top there. Comes around the corner, just sort of setting that one up. A bit of foam on the face. Again, there's, there's no lack of effort through this ride. He's, Keeping his speed down the line. Yeah, a little hung up there on the finish, but he got the finish. And uh, if Jean Deroux takes the lead, which we think he will, I think Morgan will take it straight back after that ride. 
Yeah, I think so. It was a great one for fans of front side cutbacks. Let's have a look at it. Once again, delays the takeoff so he's deeper. Nice open face carve. Backs it up with a similar turn. Gets a little bit hung up, a little bit of a glitch there. Back into the pocket, but once again, gets a really strong finish. So maybe a little bit hung up on the final turn as well, but interesting to see where they go, whether it's akin to his first high scoring wave. Yeah, we'll wait with our bated breath, but both of these surfers are coming from parts of the world that get such a variety of waves like we have here. Obviously, Morgan spending a, a lot of time in uh, the Merriweather Newcastle region, and obviously Jean Derue honing his skills on the southwest beach breaks of France, and looking at this little right rip bowl here, these guys would have surfed waves of this style, you know, a million times in their lives. So I don't think it would have been any any real big transition for them this morning looking at this. They would have had the quivers, uh, excuse me, the board in their quivers and, uh, and and the idea of how they were going to surf pretty well just as, uh, as DNA in their blood. But while we wait for Morgan's last ride to come in, going to throw down to Jess, who's got the winner of the last heat, Jacob Wilcox. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. We do. Jacob, there was a point of that heat where Taj had already posted 15 plus rides that you came back absolutely swinging with that 883. What was going through your mind out there? Um, I don't know, actually, not too much, which is always a nice thing. There's not too much going through your mind when you're in that situation, but um, I just kind of had faith in the ocean that there was going to be a couple of good waves. I've seen that Taj had some nice waves, and I feel like even the wave I got my eight on maybe wasn't the best way, but it just had like a nice run to it, which allowed me to do some turns. But that was a fun heat, man. Like, far out, Taj was. I was just ripping and I was on the ropes and I was like, felt like it was a good heat whether I won or lost at that point. Um, but yeah, it's always good when you get the opportunity and just to get to ice it as well. It's always pretty fun. Yeah, it was a beautiful performance and you're one of those surfers now that's bracketed both times. You were in the quarterfinals up at Snapper, uh, went down to Imaikalani, but you found yourself again in this position. That kind of start for you in the Australian leg must feel good and, and like you said, take the pressure off and kind of allow you not to think out there yeah it's actually, it's actually really nice like last year i lost first heat in both of these aussie comps which was a real bummer um but this year i just wanted to come out strong and i got a couple of events during the back back end of the tour that i kind of like and i pencil myself in for a good result there as well so i don't know i'm just so happy to be making some heats and to be able to just be able to produce a good score when i'm under pressure like that something i probably struggled a little bit in the past but um, and the waves are actually a little bit better than they look. I thought it was going to be kind of rubbish when I went out there, but there's plenty of waves for us to have a good heat. Well, it's always great to watch you surf, and congratulations. That was a stellar performance. Thanks so much. Cheers. Yeah, well done, Jacob. Great heat there. And this heat is well and truly underway. John DeRue here, up into the lip early on that ride, comes around the corner, nice snap in the lip. He's right in the pocket of this ride, keeping his speed going down the line. I just wonder, Luke, if he just didn't quite have his feet exactly where he wanted them for that ride. I, I uh, he is one of those expect a bit more from John. He is wave. one of those servers who tends to plant the feet. Yeah. And if they're not planted just right, then he can run into problems. I mean, it was, it was a nicely put together wave. I mean, maybe with the offshore wind, it, it, it is a bit more hard to surf than it looks on the screen. There's a little bit of a rib running up the face from the, from the rip. Uh, however, oh, I do... I do know how well John surfs, and I think that maybe there was a bit, little bit of meat left on that bone there. It was, a, it was a nice looking wave as we have another look at the replay here. Yeah, gets the deep bottom turn. Great first turn. Critical again for the second. Three consecutive turns, very similar but solid surfing. And it's just through the inside here where he hits a bobble and doesn't quite get the finish that he might have liked. And then Morgan behind. Yeah, winding up. Arcing turn to open, kicks the tail a little bit. Looking for something more down the line. Gets a good little tap. And then a stronger finish. I don't know whether it's that tide coming in or just the waves that have presented themselves in this heat, but th these gents are having to work a lot harder for their scores compared to the last heat, Luke. Yeah, you're right. It feels like there's not as much natural speed in the wave. Uh, and particularly over the, an adjustment, because after over the last few days, there has been so much power in the swell, so much push. The wave's been doing all the work. So you don't have to think about generating speed. Now they're in a situation where you do. So not only are you thinking about connecting to your next maneuver, it's about having the speed to get there as well. Yeah, absolutely. What's playing in their favor is that the good thing about North Narrabeen is that it's probably got, you know, 
10 to 20 percent if not more push mm. than your average east coast beach break yeah for sure De definitely picks up every bit of swell coming past although the direction today not exactly the one we're looking for here at north narrabeen still some really fun waves on offer here as jacob wilcox mentioned even more fun on, in the water than it looks on the screen as we see a situation change here john derue's last ride a five point four seven he narrowly gets the requirement go to the lead which uh, in this heat so far, like we mentioned, we probably were expecting a bit more, but at this point in the heat, the halfway mark, I think he'd be pretty stoked to have the lead. Well, I think so. I mean, it's similar to the last heat we're seeing, you know, the lead alternating, not quite with the same scale though. Morgan needs a 4.63 to turn it back on that last wave. And the early indications are that he will do that. So as you mentioned, Luke, this one is just return serve for return serve it's a very similar theme to the last one albeit the scores a little less there it is a 5.1 for morgan sibilic he now takes the lead and he is sitting on the single highest score of the heat so he's in a, he's in a pretty decent position here yeah it's only marginally better than joanne's top score so these next couple of waves are going to be Ooh. really crucial. And that decision there, crucial as well, Jean, with priority, just aborting the takeoff there. <clears throat> Probably the right call. Didn't look like that wave was going to hold off for him. Looked like it was going to run off. However, he has handed priority uh, back to Morgan, who, as we mentioned, sits in the lead with the uh, single highest score. So he could, uh, you know, this next decision for Morgan could, uh, could be a crucial one to keep pushing a bit of pressure back on Jean. Yeah, I still feel like there's a, you know, at least a point or two out there in that mm. lineup. Morgan with a 6.17. We saw the scores much higher in the last exchange, which was, as you pointed out, the highest combined heat total of the event so far. It was just one of those heats where it kind of turned on and both surfers were on. Yeah. But none of them, none of them fell. They executed on all their rides. It was, a, it was a fantastic heat to watch. And. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, Taj Limblad can hold his uh, head held very high after that performance in this event. As we see, the beach is looking pretty beautiful there in the background. Richie Lovett is out and about. Rich, what are you up to? Yeah, thanks, Dace. Uh, down here with the Bonsai Locals Report, and I've found uh, heir to the throne down here at North Narrabeen, Dylan Moffat. Dill, how are you this morning? Yeah, doing good, Rich. Thanks, Eves. Waves, waves are looking fun, frothing, frothing to get some little alley rights. Yeah, so we've shifted the energy from car park rides back down to alley rides. This is the true Narrabeen bank, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's sick. It's been actually unreal having um, that bank down the beach with all this big south swell because usually it'd be pretty, pretty straight in the south. So glad the guys have found some pretty epic opportunity down in the car park banks the last couple of days. And now that it's dropped off a little bit, we can see some fun, rippable alley rides. Uh, let's have a quick chat about your performance on the Challenger Series so far. I mean, we're looking at you as one of the, the real Aussie hopes to, to be the next to crack into the to the World Tour. How are you feeling? It hasn't quite gone to plan yet, but what is the what what is the plan for the rest of the year? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the rest of the year. You know, like, didn't start as good this year as it did last year, but I feel like my surfing's there, and it's just been a couple misjudgments in the heat, so not not um, blaming my surfing, just a couple couple bad calls. So looking forward to, to giving it another crack, and you know when you lose a heat, the first thing you want to do is surf another one, so just looking forward to the next event. Absolutely, and uh, everyone behind Morgan Siblick at the moment. Yeah, it was unreal. That last heat with Taj and Jacob was like an unreal one to watch. It was so back and forth. So watching these guys um, surfing these waves, it's sick to have all the Aussies together cheering on Morgs and Jacob and, and Jacko, the rest of the Aussies left. Just give us a real quick one. How is the vibe down here with all the Aussie crew? Great to see everyone getting behind each other. Yeah, it's unreal. It's, it's tense at the moment because no one's really had too many scores yet. But as soon as um, I'm sure as these boys start teeing off, um, the, the screams will be coming out. Awesome, great stuff. Best of luck for the rest of the year. Back to you guys. Thanks, Richie. Thanks, Dylan Moffat and Jean Derue here. Gets this wave under priority. He's off to a great start. Probably his best opening manoeuvre of the heat. And he gets the finish here. He'll be pretty happy that he managed to snag that one without priority. And Morgan behind doesn't get the finish. So unless he'd done something extraordinary out the back, I don't know that Morgan will replace uh, any of his scores. Yeah, we'll wait to see the replay. It looked like Joanne really connected with that first manoeuvre. He starts well, he finishes well. Take us through the replay here of Morgan's uh, ride, Luke. Yeah, arcing back into the pocket, eyeing off a section down the line. That marbled face deters him and he kicks out. So Joanne Daru swings hard off the bottom, really connects with the first section. More of a lateral arcing turn to finish. 
And here it is, the final turn. Throws the board nice and high. Strong start, strong finish. Chasing a 5.81. It's going to be right around it, I reckon, Stace. I think it's going to be right there. He certainly had some of his better surfing that he performed so far in this heat on that wave. As we wait for these scores to come in, we're going to take a short break here at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. We'll take a quick Bonsoy brew break. Coming up next, women's quarterfinals. throughout your entire competitive career and even just as a surfer in general. What's the first thing that, the, that goes through your mind when you put on a rash guard and you see one of those people paddling out with you? Yeah, it's definitely pretty crazy to, you know, see that I've made it to a level where I get to surf against the girls that I've looked up to since I was little. I just really enjoy like the challenge of coming up against those girls on tour because that's where I want to be. And, you know, if I want to be at that level, you got to be able to surf against those girls. You can't get a little bit starstruck like surfing against those girls, but you kind of have to just put that past you and like just go for it and it's what competition's about. I really look forward to surfing against those girls that are pushing the level and yeah, it's an amazing to have like those opportunities to be out in the water with them. Awesome catch up there with Mitch Salazar and Alyssa Spencer on the lineup. It's a uh, great, great insights there from, from Alyssa. She uh, recently shared a photo of uh, her and Malia Manuel at a QS event where Alyssa was all of about three foot tall and uh, <laughs> Malia would have been about 18 or 19. And it's pretty classic to see you know, Alyssa now coming onto the world stage and uh, surfing against all of her heroes. No doubt Sally Fitzgibbons was one of those people. However, I think the best piece of advice you could give an aspiring young surfer is to uh, rip those posters down off the wall, Luke, and uh, get to battle in the heat. Yeah, I think that's great advice. Uh, I was actually did an interview with Ace Buckin recently and he said he had Tom Carroll on the wall and a bunch of other surfers and... Uh, Yep, and Kelly Slade had to rip the poster down, <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. Yeah. There's no romance once you make the tour. It's game on, and this is Morgan Sibilic here getting to work. We uh, we heard a few whistles over our shoulder here, Luke, for this wave. Yeah, Morgan went back into second place, needs to score. Looking for a 6-1-4 here. So opens with a cutback. Gets good projection in the second turn. Wave goes a little flatter. Another good arcing turn with a little bit of a point of difference with the tail tweak. Powers through the inside and whips the final turn. So good combination of maneuvers, good variety. Wave was a little bit smaller. It's going to be really tight, Stace. Yeah, interesting to note, Jean Deroux's last wave came in at a 6.83 as we expected. That was the new best wave of the heat. Morgan looking to answer back now. Scores are going to be really tight. Indications are pretty good, but we will wait for the last two scores to drop in. There it is, a 6.3 for the surfer in red representing Australia. His uh, friends and fans and coaches and everyone on the beach will be pretty happy with that. However, this heat is 
super tight. 12.47 to 12.43 on the two wave totals. And uh, although the score's a little lower than the last heat loop, the battle has been exactly the same. Back yeah. and forth. Yeah, any of the surfers watching who are in, uh, in you know, upcoming heats will realise that there's a good chance that the lead is going to swing around a couple of times throughout the course of their heat. Uh, whatever score you open with, as we saw with Jacob Wilcox, you won't be able to feel safe. No, not at all. And, I, you know, at any size, whether it's 10 feet or 2 feet, these surfers just want opportunity. And, and certainly today we, we are getting that. In the morning with the contest directors checking out the uh, conditions in the dark, it was a little hard to tell uh, if the alley right was, was working. So they chucked it on hold for another half an hour just to make sure, which was definitely the right call. And we've seen, you know, non-stop waves e ever since. Check yeah. the tides there this morning, uh, coming off the high at uh, 9.23 which is uh, right at the moment as this uh, tide runs out all day. Uh, what, what can we expect out of the alley right, Luke? Yeah, well, it's such a, a narrow bend staple. You know, I think it's only going to get better, hopefully, throughout the course of the day. It's uh, We've seen final surf here before. We saw Kelly Slater and Shane Herring surf a famous final here back in 92. Interestingly enough, John Deroux passing this wave up. Morgan Siblick a bit deeper on the peak. There's a nice open face gaff. And he gets the finish to improve his total. His lowest score is a 6-1-7. The judges all have uh, a good time dissecting that wave. Probably the fastest any of these two have gone in the heat, Luke. Yeah, on that's the, a good point. And I think, on the wave. I think uh, you said that Joan Drew passed it up, and I think he's looking back thinking that might have been a mistake because can't help but feel that Morgan's going to improve his situation. It's a really hard one, and I feel like from Jean's position, he probably made the right call. But at the same time here, he probably paddled 10 feet the wrong way at the start. The, the, the takeoff spot was probably a little deeper, and he could have been turning around here. Whereas where he was going to take off, he probably would have missed this section. Again, on the backside, it would have been a hard wave to surf, but front side, Morgan gets a done loop. I feel like Morgan was almost eyeing off the left, mm. and then just swings at the last second. Having another little look on the inside here. But uh, great surfing and exactly what you want to do when you've just taken the lead. You want to go and go one step further again. Make the equation harder for the opposition. And he's done that. A 6.93 on that last ride. So if we, if we just look at the, the top two scores there, there's nothing between them. A 6.93 to a 6.83. It's the backup that's making the difference at the moment. It's the 6.3 over the uh, 5.47. So a... Uh, a, a task that John's more than uh, capable of pulling in here. He needs a 6-4-1 as this wave rifles off down the line. Air reverse out to the flatter part of the wave. However, I don't know how high the judges will go with that particular manoeuvre. Yeah, I think Joanne realises quite early on that uh, he might only get one section to deal with and he needed to bring something a little bit more special. Let's have a look at the execution generating a lot of speed down the line, eyes off the lip, goes the air, perhaps not quite the height or the inversion that he wants. And it's probably a little flat, I think. In this modern era, Luke, we are spoiled with some excellent aerial maneuvers. And, and although that was uh, well executed for the section, we, we do have a, a pretty uh, critical eye these days with some of the, the tricks that these youngsters are doing. It's a high bar, and uh, you know the judges want to see you doing massive aerials in critical sections. It's not as easy just to uh, nail the score with a, a mid-range air these days. Totally. A 5.2 is the score there for the surfer in blue representing France. He does not get the score needed to change the heat. One thing Jean Deroux's done really well this week is he's actually generated some pretty good scores under priority, and he's going to need to do the same thing here with two minutes on the clock. I think the key for Joanne here is getting a wave that's just a little bit bigger, a set wave. He is a bigger guy. He does have some big turns, and if he gets the opportunity to wind up, then he's certainly got a shot at it. There we go. Both the lads is having a look at that wave there. Both electing not to go. Morgan passed it up. John had a little bit more of a look. And all he's trying to do at the moment is just trying, trying to get Morgan to uh, make a decision on a wave. Morgan knows how to play this game well. He's a wily competitor. He's been around for quite a while now, and he's done it at CT level. He's going to take this wave, exercising his priority here, streaking down the line. This wave's got a good bowl to it. Beautiful first carve there for Morgan. Gets it up into the lip again. He'll be looking to finish this wave strong and then really add to the total. Bit of a check turn there, and he makes up for uh, 
a pretty soft turn into a huge hammer for the fourth turn to finish. Yeah, it's just great classic power serving from Morgan Siblick. There's really no flaws in it. Every maneuver is executed with perfect timing. Totally on point. There's no little kinks or bumps. Here we go, Joanne Daru looking to answer back, looking for the air. Elects not to go. Arcs back into the pocket. Will it stand up through the inside? Great whipping turn out of the top. Little switch <laughs> foot. The body language says it all. Oh, wow. I, uh, I actually really love that fade to set up that turn after he realised the air wasn't on, but it's, uh, it's just probably not what the judges are looking for if they're going to give you an excellent score, which is probably what he would have needed after Morgan's last ride. We'll wait for some scores there to make it official, but it looks like the surfer out of Australia will get the nod here in the last heat of the round of 16. He's uh, 10 seconds on the clock, and we think this will be a bit of a victory lap here for Morgs. Yeah, he's serving it like he might even need a score actually but uh i think he knows after that last ride there goes the hooter still waiting for those scores to drop officially but uh all indicators point to a progression into the quarterfinals for morgan siblick there was another fantastic heat we've been spoiled luke those last two heats were insane battles and uh that one that one started off slow but it warmed up towards the end luke here's the harvey norman heat recap yeah, I think that you identified the key element in this wave, which is the speed in the execution of the manoeuvres, Stace. Strong start, strong finish. Morgan, I think this may be the one that went better again. Big arcing turn to open. A 9-0-3, Luke. Another score in the excellent range of Morgan Siblick. Seen eyeing off the end section. Powerful finish. Had a nine-point plus right earlier in the event, and he's gone excellent again. Wow, that heat certainly heated up at the end there. A massive total in the end there for Morgan Sibilic. Don't go anywhere. We're going to take a short break and we're going to get into quarterfinal actions here at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro. Ronnie Blakey and Laura Enema are going to take you through it. Welcome back to the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. Again, I'm at the Bailey Ladder Leaderboard and let's take a look at what the brackets hold. We're down to the quarterfinals for the women. Sally Fitzgibbons up against Alyssa Spencer. That's gonna be a great challenge. Teenager, the youngster, Bella Kenworthy up against Macy Callan. That's quarterfinal number two. Isabella Nichols against defending champ, Teresa Bonvola. And we're gonna end with ratings leader, India Robinson up against the teenage sensation, Aaron Brooks. That is a quarterfinals to look forward to. Let's get it going. And thanks again to my always sturdy Bailey Ladder. I love the P120. <laughs> the P120, great model. Works a treat. Had Kaipo uh, up there checking out that leaderboard right through the Australian leg as we get set for quarterfinal heats here at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bon Soy here on the Harvey Norman host set. Ronnie Blakey sitting alongside Laura Anava. This is going to be fun, Laura. 
Uh, Sally Fitzgibbon, she's been on a mad run through this contest. Big numbers, solid performances when she's had her back against the wall. And uh, Alyssa too, strong. Absolutely. These two have been standouts for me in the women's side of the uh, event. And, you know, Sally obviously getting that huge uh, barrel the other day and, and Alyssa with her backside attack. So this is evenly matched here. I would say that these conditions this morning are Sally's bread and butter. She absolutely lights up in these small waves and uh, just generating so much speed, as you can see on this first wave. Drawing first blood and uh, doing it very nicely. Nice big slash in the pocket here. She can yeah. get so compressed and uh, just really keep that power and speed in that pocket there. Feels to me, though, with the, the decrease in the swell, this heat's evened up a little bit. Sally, I'd give her the edge still, but she'd be really aware of the fact that on the Gold Coast, she lost out to a goofy footer in small right-handers. Yeah. And I think that backhand approach that Alyssa has too, that, that nice vert, critical vertical turn in the pocket, it's going to really test Sally out. Sally's going to need to find some vertical approach of her own. She won't carve her way to victory in this one. As we see uh, Alyssa up looking to reply. It was a strong ride oh. for Fitzgibbons to kick things off. Strong finish from <laughs> Alyssa Spencer there on cue. 6.67 for Sally. And we'll see where Alyssa's number goes. Yeah, we've got a match after that one. And uh, Alyssa would be uh, drawing so much inspiration from Jacob Wilcox uh, dropping absolute bombs in, in that heat against Taj Limblad and, uh, you know, just, she's so good at staying tight in the pocket and uh, just getting that board right up in, in the most cupped out part of the wave. So excited to see that replay from Melissa here. Love the way she paddled in on that angle there and just waited to try to get that turn off in the pocket there. This wave fattens out and she just waits for this moment on the inside where it sucks up and she jams it in the pocket for that end section. Really nicely done there for Alyssa. So sort of expecting that to come in yeah, pretty good. Really good. Uh, yeah. Sally Fitzgibbons tries to force a reverse out of that section. So Sal, well situated on the rankings on the Challenger Series at the moment. But so is uh, Alyssa Spencer. She had a good run through the contest up there on the Gold Coast. So these two are, are well poised to make a, a, a climb, solidify a, a position at the top end. Leaving Australia, Sally Fitzgibbon's got a, a semi-final up there at stop one. And Alyssa Spencer, a ninth. We know that ninth, uh, as good a result as it is, it's, it's not really a keeper. So Alyssa's oh. looking for more here at the moment. She's got a good look at Wall standing up. Ali Wrights is coming on at the moment. Really comparable scores on the opening exchange between these two. Alyssa Spencer never broken into the CT ranks. Has had some opportunities as a wild card. Sally Fitzgibbons, one of the most winning surfers we've ever seen on the championship tour. So uh, knows how to close down an event and looking for a Challenger Series win. Yeah, Alyssa was uh, in that that group of ladies last year at Halle Eva. You know, there were so many of them that were right there and it was whoever got the furthest in that event that was going to qualify. It was Sophie McCulloch that uh, came from a really wild situation to, to get that last spot on tour. Alyssa finishing in seventh and uh, right behind Teresa Bonvalot. Like this, this wave here, it felt like she had a really nice wave but didn't really find the connection I think that mm. she'd want. Yeah, I mean, she did some decent turns, but yeah. as you saw her finishing off that last move, the, the wave was still kind of serving up sections down the line. Yeah, it just, I, just felt like she got a bit behind it towards the end. Yeah, I feel like she might have uh, wiped a bit too much speed off at the start there and, and just didn't have that, uh, you know, that, that power and that speed from the paddle that you can generate in these small conditions. Scores from the open exchange are in super close. There's going to be a great quarterfinal clash. All the matchups looking super impressive when we have a, a look at what's coming your way here in the quarters. Yeah, the next heat's an absolute cracker. Bella Kenworthy versus Maisie Callahan. Macy looking to climb her way back onto the World Tour and Bella just her first year campaigning on the Challenger Series full time. She is going to light things up and show that bit of progression. Throw that tail around out here in the alley right this morning and Macy I think will just be sticking to those big solid hacks and calves that she's got. 
So the scores are in for the second ride now of Alyssa Spencer. Well rewarded for a series of backhand hits. It was a 6.43. So uh, a decent number there. You know, uh, you've got to reflect on it, though. We were kind of touching on the point. The wave kind of kept serving up sections down the line. And, it, you know, even though she's moved into the lead and, and left Sally chasing a, another six, there was probably an opportunity to push that a, a point higher. Yeah, that was such a nice wave. I feel like she'll watch that back and and really see where she could have capitalised and turned that into an excellent score. Right now, though, she's going to bank it and yep, say, hey, sure. I'm, I'm out in front. What have you got, Sally? And, uh, yeah, with just over 21 minutes to go, we're going to see. These, uh, these quarters are going to be interesting. Sally Fitzgibbons and Teresa Bombalon. They're like you, Laura. They've already got a win here on the Northern Beaches. You had a victory back in 2015. Sal before you, though, 2012. So she's looking to stitch up multiple wins here in Sydney, as is Teresa. She's looking to go back-to-back, uh, -back, and uh, she's coming up in quarterfinal number three. Yeah, that'd be cool, and she'll be watching this closely to see how her fellow goofy footer in the mix goes. Another goofy footer coming up later in the round is Erin Brooks versus India Robinson. I cannot wait to see that unfold. Sally Fitz up and riding now. Nice carve to start things off. Really smooth and into the pocket again, ripping through that turn. We'll want to get a hit on the end section here. She has to show some variation. It's been a lot of the same thing here. A bit more flair on the, the final move. But Alyssa Spencer, you watch the approach from her. Carved to get started, trying to set up for a vertical hit, but the wave not really serving it up to her, and she's going to opt for priority instead. She gets out of there, and probably a smart move. Yeah, smart move to hold on to priority there. It looked like that wave was almost going to hit the bank and run on the inside, but she must have just felt that energy just dissipate and, and want to just get back out, get priority and wait for something better. Kind of did that first turn, and, and sometimes you can feel like, yep, yeah, this is going to be better, that 6.4 that Alyssa had. But this is Sally here, and I feel like she turned this wave into a, a, a gem doing these calves in the pocket, slicing and pushing that tail out, showing something different. And again, but yeah, same type of turn she's done here. Like just working that one through. She put a lot into it. There was the mix up, as you may, drew that first carve back to the bowl. And, and then on this one, pushed on the rail a little differently. Kind of found that release in the tail. Yeah, she's so good at that. So good at just waiting in that pocket and just waiting for it to do its thing to make the most of those sections but love the way sally kicks her tail out she always comes back to the tour or any event just constantly evolving working on her craft finding ways to finesse and push and progress her surfing it's uh you know she's she's been doing this for oh over 20 years now yeah amazing 32 sally is and you're right you know really showed so much promise and talent at a really young age always very athletic has more to give to and that's why we're seeing her just coming in from these big uh, heat wins with crazy amounts of energy a big smile on her face relishing the challenge of this series and trying to get herself back to the ct she's had a, a couple of tough runs through the opening events of the championship tour these past couple of years but giving us excellent surfing here once again this morning and eight on that last ride and now a, a huge number needed for Alyssa Spencer. Let's check in with, we'll just yeah, see this okay. ride first. Hang on a second, Sally, looking at another ride here. She's not gonna get into it. Let's check in with Jess Grimwood and the winner of the last heat. Thank you very much, Ronnie. Yeah, Morgan, I mean, another nine point ride, sorry, for this event. You've already collected one so far. Where did you see that number going before you heard it come across the beach announcement? Um, I just had no idea, <laughs> really. That was the first time uh, I got a wave like that during the heat, and uh, I don't know, just kind of got a good first turn and an OK last turn, and um, I don't know, it's a bigger wave and got some, a, bit, a few bigger turns, so uh, I guess that's why it went up there, but, yeah, I don't know, I was just expecting it to be my best number. So, um, yeah, I was stoked. Hopefully you can do it at the start next time. <laughs> And there was a real turning point for us watching in that heat. It was when um, Joanne had priority and he let you go that 6.93. And then from then on, it seemed like everything was coming out Morgan. Was it feeling like that in the water? 
Um, I don't know. I, I was kind of a bit, being a little bit frantic out there. I think I was sitting a little deep and just, we, well, we both were and we were just a little bit off the mark for those good ones. But um, I, I think towards the end of the heat, it kind of, that tide might have just changed and um, the waves are coming through a little better and a bit better shape. So um, I know I, that little one kind of was a little steeper and allowed me to connect the dots a, a little more nicely than my other one. So um, no, that always helps. And I mean, we appreciate so much. You're so open always in your post-heat interviews. And I know it must be tricky sometimes wearing your heart on your sleeve and, and being so open with everybody, but beautiful performance from you. And thank you once again. I'm sure there's plenty of Morgan fans online tuning in too. Uh, yeah, I hope so. Uh, excited for my next heat against uh, Jacob. Uh, he's my good mate. So that'll be a hell one. And it's going to be epic that one, one of us is going to get through the semis. So I'm stoked. <laughs> beautiful. Thank you, Morgan. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, Jess. Yeah, was your good mate, Morgs. He was your good mate. Now he is your rival. <laughs> a spot on the semi-finals will be up for grabs between those two. Uh, incredible quarterfinal matchups on the men's side. Jackson Baker, Frederico Marias, quarterfinal number one. Cole Hausman, the Grom, the big Grom, on the rise up against the journeyman campaigner on the qualifying series and challenger series. Mark Luckerman in quarter two. And then we're going to see... Marco Mino up against Cave Matson in quarter three and Jacob Wilcox, Morgan Siblick in quarter final number four. Wow, hey, that is it's gonna be fun. Heavy, heavy stacked heats. Just over 15 minutes to go here. And Alyssa Spencer, a goofy footer, looking for a big score at the moment, chasing an excellent number, 8.24 to get ahead of Sally Fitzgibbons as we take up on Soy Brew Break. Amazing to have the support of the Northern Beaches Council, a major partner of the GWM Sydney Surf Pro, presented by Bonsoy. Just under 13 minutes to go here in quarterfinal heat number one. And we are waiting for scores. And that tells you that some action happened during the break. Sally Fitzgibbons was in control. She had a 6.67 on her opening ride. She had a, an eight on her third wave to give herself a, a strong lead here. And she's left uh, Alyssa Spencer chasing an 8.24, and it was Sal under priority getting this one during the break, Laura. Yeah, had a nice look to it this wave. A nice big slash there, throwing the tail, and then finishing off here, just floating over. That wave had a nice energy to it. It feels like Sally's other waves, you know, she's been generating the energy and, and really turning, you know, a wave that didn't look that awesome into something really excellent. Uh, but that wave 
it had that that push and that that nice line on it the big end turn Alyssa had a, a decision to make there she's with the priority on the outside and we're waiting on this number to drop for Sally Fitzgibbons who's been so in tune through each of the the heat performances she's had so far just riffing about she's adapted well to the different conditions too when it was big and thick and, and ch chunky oh, uh, down no. there at car park rights she was uh, there under the hook pulling into the barrel when she came up against Ellen McCaffrey she changed the game plan went to multiple maneuvers to just stitch up a couple of mid-range sixes and earn her place here in the quarterfinals where she has put on an excellent display and dropped another big score here yeah she has this uh He's going to put Alyssa Spencer into a bit of a troublesome situation. Another 8.5 dropped by Sally, Sally Fitzgibbons. So an 8.5 and an 8, one of the highest heat totals of the event, 16.5. Yeah, yeah that, that number was a surprise to me. I, I thought she surfed it really well, but you know, I still think there's better surfing that both these, these competitors can do. And we might see it with yeah. maybe the biggest set of the morning rolling through here at the moment. Priority is with Alyssa Spencer. She's got to just keep her cool here. She's up against one of the best and she needs excellent scores. Big section oh. to stand up in front of her here. Nice hook off the top. The wave standing up. She clouts it. And uh, we'll see what kind of credit she gets for those turns on a bigger wave. It felt like she really needed to dig in on the first turn yeah. a little bit more, but she could get well rewarded here. This is definitely going to be her best score of the heat. Uh, I feel like, you know, yesterday when we we're down at the car park, right, she was going a bit deeper off the bottom and up into the lip, but this nice turn, she connected well and then straight up to get that done there. Solid combo. It was solid and that was, that was definitely one of the bigger waves we've seen this morning. So I feel like it still could go close to excellent. Yeah, well, I think it has to. Yeah. Sal, Sal got an 8.5 on a medium-sized set. It, you know, to her credit, she surfed it really well. She hit all the sections with good timing. But she can do much bigger turns. For sure. I just, I just wonder if the judges look at the placement of that first turn for Alyssa and, and say, did she make the most of that section? Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm feeling as well. Thinking back to yesterday, well, I guess today is a very different day to yesterday, but she was just drawing so deep off the bottom and really cracking right in the critical section of the wave. So let's, yeah, let's see the replay. This was an 8.5. Yeah, and I love that second turn that Sally did there where she just threw the tail and came out with it with so much more speed than she even came into it. And, yeah, this has to mean that this will go excellent. That was kind of a check turn, but she got nice and tight on that second turn. Felt yeah, that, like the first turn was a bit more down the line than we're used to seeing from Alyssa. Yeah, the, um, the big hit from Sally, I think you're right, she moved a, a lot of water. But, uh, you know, it, it's being considered excellent surfing yeah. for for today's conditions, I think. But if you, you put those same turns on a, a ride yesterday, it's just good surfing. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's it's a different lineup, a new scale. Judges are really thinking about this score for Alyssa Spencer. I I would say that it has to go excellent. Yeah. It was such a beautiful wave. But, yeah, the only thing that will hold it back is them knowing what she is capable of as well. Waiting on this number to come through. It's such a crucial number too because Alyssa Spencer, with just over eight minutes to go prior to that ride, was comboed. The numbers are looking good. It's going to get her back in the heat and break that combination. And the, the judges were forced to go their biggest wave of the, the heat, maybe the biggest wave of the morning, and Alyssa put together some decent turns, 8.23. I, uh, I really do feel like she could have taken another point off yeah. the requirement if she really dug in. But I think what she wanted to do was make sure she got a combination in. Mm -hmm. So uh, still a great score and a good turnaround under pressure. I mean, less than 15 minutes to go and she's comboed chasing a couple of eight point rides. So she needs an 8.28. So basically that same thing, just a little better. Yeah, that's right. Well, uh, a great opportunity for you here by scanning that QR code and joining Club Rip Curl. You can be in the running to win a year's supply of wetsuits. That's four wetsuits. And we know that Rip Curl does have an incredible range. 
Seen uh, Morgan wearing that flash bomb fusion. It's a, a really warm suit here on Sydney's northern beaches this time of year. I go for the E7 flash bomb. Dries quickly, really comfortable, uh, but they also have fantastic short arm options. The the E bomb, two mil long sleeve spring suit is a, a good option too for those chillier days. But you know when when the wind's cool and the, the water's warm, that's a, a good option. But it's a, a fantastic offer. So yeah, doesn't cost anything. Get along, follow that QR code to join Club Rip Curl and get yourself in the running to win a year's supply of suits. A year's supply, that's, that's pretty epic. Huge. Just over six minutes to go. And uh, Alyssa Spencer fighting her way out of combination here. And you saw it on that last wave, the backhand blast. You know, it's a great point of difference to, to Sally's nice carving turns. And it feels like Alyssa hasn't even given us one of her, her more vertical hits just yet. So I think she's right in this heat. The, the scale set pretty high on this one. And I don't think it's out of the question that both these surfers could break into the nines on their next rides. For sure. You, you know, they've got, they know what they can do now and they know that they're getting rewarded for the surfing that they're generating. So they know that, yeah, if they just go to that next, next sort of level, they could be up in the very high excellent range. Alyssa starting to, you know, rack up some massive results. Got a big win on the Challenger Series last year over there in Brazil. But she, she knows better than anyone that, you know, one big result on the Women's Challenger Series doesn't get you a, a place in that top five. You've got to be super consistent. As we see Fitzgibbons loading oh. up for the air reverse. <laughs> I mean, she stuck it, but kind of got hung up on the roof. Didn't have a lot of momentum to ride out of that turn, but it's a move that she works on a lot. As we get to the NRMA, Parks and Resorts, five-minute warning here. And uh, Alyssa out the back with priority is, is likely going to get a shot at this 8.28. Yeah, well, Sal's opened the door for Alyssa now, but I love seeing that from her. She's been... Uh... Going to the air a lot lately. She, was, she pulled out a couple of awesome airs in El Salvador last year. A bit hard with that offshore breeze today, but she uh, almost had that one. So showing something different. Mm. Yeah, we're, uh, talking about uh, Alyssa's big breakthrough results. I mean, at the, the qualifying series level, Sal's one of the most winning surfers that we've ever seen. One of the youngest to ever qualify and did it in such a short amount of time, didn't she? Uh, you would have been campaigning on the QS at the same time. Yeah, she absolutely went to town and was uh, pretty unbeatable on the QS series just there. She uh, had everything right, just maybe mistimed it a tiny bit, went a bit too too late. Yeah, 2010, she, uh, she won the qualifying series and uh, also was runner up to the world title that same year and had runner-ups to the world title in 2011, 2012 uh, as well. So an amazing run as a championship tour competitor. As we dive into the Harvey Norman heat recap, let's have a look at it. Alyssa Spencer started the heat with a, a couple of decent six-point rides, but it was never going to be enough to stay ahead of Sally Fitzgibbons. Fitzgibbons fighting her way into the lead with a couple of eights. For sure, and you know, they're just surfing so fast. So on rail and just kicking that tail out, showing that progression and uh, just why she is one of the world's best and has been for so long. So Sally just getting the work done. She's so great and so strong in these conditions. Slicing around here. This was the 8-5 uh, for Sally. Just judges loving that speed coming out of that turn and finishing off strong. But Alyssa, this was her fight back wave. One of the big waves of the morning. Jams it up into the pocket twice. Safe surfing, I feel like, in her book, but uh, mm. just solid. Yeah, just really didn't want to throw it away. That was her chance to break combination. Oh. She's got an opportunity here. Good size wave standing up. Sally Fitzgibbons got the priority back. So Alyssa looked at a wave during oh. the heat recap. And Sal has an opportunity here to extend and maybe push Alyssa into combination again, but it's not going to happen on that ride. And the American gets her shot, drives up into the lip, doesn't oh. really get the uh, the turns off that she needed. The surfer from Encinitas, though, is going to get back to the takeoff zone here before Sally Fitzgibbons. 
Yeah, however, Alyssa lost priority then that uh, Sally made her pay. You know, she wouldn't have, she didn't capitalise on that, but she really stopped Alyssa. When I look at that wave Sally got, I feel like Alyssa could have got an 8-5 on that easy, just doing two big smacks. Sally, uh, you know, went down that second turn. Looked like she kind of stumbled a bit on the takeoff. Her feet were in a bit of a weird spot on the board, but uh, she was very lucky that she was in the priority yeah. seat for that. Yeah, it, it's... Whatever mistake has happened with a minute and 30 seconds to go, Alyssa still has a chance here, but yeah. you're right. It must be so difficult to let Sally Fitzgibbons go. And so Alyssa did jump into this one, and uh, as you yeah. can see, needed to push it. The wave was starting to flatten out. And look at this one. Sally just goes up into the lip here and then just tries to do something a bit more progressive and this next wave for Alyssa. She just didn't really get anything in. No, and that was the wave she needed to really just square up yeah. straight from the, the takeoff. But Sally Fitzgibbons, you know, like you can see the, the mindset and experience shining through, even on that wave that she fell on. She's really aware that she's got two excellent scores. And if she wants to replace it with something better, she's going to have to ramp things up. So she pushed yeah. it, busted that tail out, didn't stick it. Lucky for her. Alyssa Spencer's wave kind of flattened out. And on the outside now, with 35 seconds remaining, Alyssa has priority and is sizing one up. This is going to be a shot at it. Going after an 8.28. Needs to throw down some big turns. Drives up into the section. Huge hit there. And remember, the scale quite high, so I feel like she might be on her way to the number here. She can finish this wave off with a high-quality turn. It lays down a little bit. But it's... Uh, with the judges now, Matty Myers, who's been working with Alyssa for a long time now, had a, almost an expression of concern on his face there. It seemed like he wasn't convinced, yep. wasn't cheering, wasn't slapping his hands together. Yep, he, uh, I think he knew that, that that end section just didn't really serve up what he was hoping. I think Alyssa knows as well. Yeah, she took off here, she kind of raised past this first section, but then she squared up and got oh. that turning that we know that she's so capable of doing. This was where we were just hoping that this wave would uh, really give her that sucky end section, but it just, she did not really connect with it, and it just didn't really throw anything back at her. Yeah, you know, she, she didn't sell it because she felt like she was well short. The first turn was unbelievable. Yeah. The numbers starting to roll through, and... It's not going to be enough. It's in the, the mid six point range, but again, an amazing performance. A, a quarterfinal finish. She goes one better than she did at stop one on the Challenger Series. And it could be a, a keeper result for Alyssa, but she's going to have to get some bigger finishes at some point if she wants to crack the, the top five. But Sally Fitzgibbon, strong, consistent once again, and a couple of excellent numbers for her as she moves on to the semis for the second time in as many events. Yeah, I mean, looking at the draw, it's only Sally and is, uh, India, sorry, that uh, are left uh, left in this quarterfinal draw, the same as Snapper Rocks. Sally just stoked to be backing this up. She is miss consistent. I feel like she's going to be in these quarterfinal series a lot this year in the Challenger Series. Well, she's buzzing. And the other great thing for Sally is she can surf a lot better than she did in that yeah. quarterfinal heat. She still went excellent. So uh, moving through to the semi-finals, she'll be coming up against the competitors that are hitting the lineup next, Bella Kenworthy or Macy Callahan. That matchup is just around the corner here.
I'm Kelly Slater. I committed my life to this, you know, all of this. There is so much pressure now. It's really do or die. He's not coming here to participate. He's coming here to win. Her career is at stake. You want to perform in the big stage? This is the biggest stage you can have. Oh, my goodness. This is sport history. Welcome back to the show. Sunday crowds filling in here at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro as we stack up our semi-final bracket. Another big quarter-final clash right here for you with the San Clemente Ripper, Bella Kenworthy, taking on the experienced head of Macy Callahan, who's been strong on the Challenger Series in the past. And she had this one during the break and lit up that first section. Yeah, Macy would have just been watching that last heat closely and uh, realising that if you can get a good wave and generate speed and power, the judges are rewarding. And Bella on a nice wave. This one had a really good line to it. Getting a slash in here and just speeding down the line. Another turn here. I feel like she's just waiting to get to this end section. Four turns for Bella Kenworthy, but I feel like she might have just been projecting too far down the line and uh, didn't really get that board direction change. Yeah, it feels like it's going to be a really close exchange here. Oh. We've got a couple of super groms in the quarterfinals at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro this year. Erin Brooks is coming up. And, uh, of course, we're watching 16-year-old Bella Kenworthy here take on Macy Callahan. She maintained pace with the former CT competitor looking to get back there. 6.83 for Macy. Bella gets herself a 6.6. .6. So Absolutely. close there. Yeah, three turns for Macy. I think there was maybe four or five for Bella. Some of them the same turn, but she just kept her speed throughout, and uh, that board she's on is absolutely flying. Macy, I feel like a bit more power. She's, uh, you know, we're going to see those calves come out of Macy and that board direction change. But we're going to see a lot of tail coming out from Bella. So contrasting surfers here, but uh, this is going to make for a really exciting matchup in, in these little alley rights this morning. It sure is. Let's have a look at the replays. Macy really did make the most of this first turn. Nice hook off the top. Kept that down the line flow. Found the finish on the inside here, Laura. Yeah, love that from Macy. And then Bella here just taking off, speeding down the line here. Loved his first turn. Just bashed off the foam, keeping her speed. Nice big uh, slash there. Another snap. So the same turns, but just look how far she's going. Keeping so much speed, throwing that uh, that board to finish there. So, yeah, a couple couple more moves for Bella Kenworthy, which probably helped just bring the the ride up in smaller increments. Felt like to me that the two biggest turns came from Macy. Yeah. Uh, but you know she did get that that benefit. She got the little jump in the exchange. So uh, setting up to be a, another great clash here in the quarterfinals. Macy just was on another level on the challenges last year. Three finals. She had a couple of runner-up finishes over there in Belito, South Africa. She was runner-up. US Open. Again, a second there. This is your, your best four results, right? Counting from last year. And she had a victory at Irisira. I mean, she was always going to qualify. Yeah, she basically almost done the job before Hallie Eva last year. She was uh, so convincing, so far ahead. I think she went out early at uh, Hallie Eva and I think Betty Lou ended up passing her on the rankings, but uh, she was pretty much in front most of the year. Yeah, so strong. And it, it was, you know, gave, it gave her a good opportunity to s sort of size up where she wants to take her career because she's sort of been standing at the fork in the road for a long time, thinking about free surfing, uh, massive following on Instagram, 90,000 people track Macy's uh, progress and, and life. She gets a lot of opportunities doing modelling uh, as well, but I really like the, the fact that this former world junior champion set her sights on getting results on the CT. She was heartbroken when she didn't 
survived the cut and uh, here she is giving it a, a good nudge at the second stop here on the Challenger Series. Yeah, I think she was uh, pretty upset as well with that early bow out up at Snapper Rock. So uh, just wanting to get some work done here and she is so strong on these Challenger Series and in these QS events. She's no stranger to being up in, like you said, quarterfinals, semifinals. Feels like once she actually cracks that quarterfinal, she's really hard to stop. She comes to light on, uh, on finals day. And just off the back of that successful run on the Challenger Series last year, it felt like performance-wise, she she did find a, another gear. She started yeah. to look a little bit more comfortable in the CT jersey, but we just know how hard it is to crack that top ten after five events. As we see Bella now with a good-looking wall standing up, hits the first section, drives up into the lip again. And the 16-year-old sticks that move. That's going to be a great score. Macy out the back shaking her head. And she knows she's going to have work to do now. Yeah, Macy would have seen that wave and been like, that, that was clearly one of the better waves that's come through. It just had that beautiful draw to it. The water drew off off the bank and it uh, just was an absolute gem. And Bella read it to a T. Ta love how she's taking off behind this section, getting so much speed to go up here and just absolutely crack that throw the fins a bit and then up oh. into that lip line. That was uh, so well timed. She's surfing beyond her years, the 16 year old. Yeah, just up into the lip here, kind of a down the line slash, but throwing buckets. And then just to get to this section, she took so much speed into that lip line. And pushes through the foam there. Punchy then... landing too. And she, uh, she held on brilliantly and have a look at the score. 8.83. Macy Callahan already after a big number, an excellent score now, 8.61. Bella just uh, her third Challenger Series event. She had a ninth place finish in the US Open last year. Didn't start the year off too well on the Gold Coast. Uh, a 33rd there, but eyeing off a semi final place after that ride. You'd feel, it'd be easy to feel uh, intimidated by that score, but I feel like if these ladies took a lot from that first heat, it was that the scale, if you can find one of those waves that's got the nice draw out on it, two turns, you're getting into the high, excellent range. So I feel like Macy, hopefully she can keep her chill here and, and know that, you know what, if she gets a wave like that, she just needs to place her turns in the right place and uh, it's right there for her to take. Yeah. That I mean, I don't want to talk down what these surfers are doing in these conditions, but the, the scale's been higher the, these past couple of heats. That's an 8.83, two turns. Uh, you know, great turns. Bella kept the, the down the line flow happening through that first move, but you can commit more to those sections. Uh, the last turn was strong. You know, I think she honestly deserves a, a great number, but 8.83 is, is high in my opinion. 19 yeah. minutes to go. Let's hear from the winner of the last heat. Our first semi-finalist, Sally Fitzgibbons, is with Jess Grimwood. Thank you very much, Ronnie. Sally, first of all, it feels like next level unlock for you performance-wise. It's going like beyond things that I've seen before from your energy in the last few years. Oh, that was so cool. That was so fun. Um, Spence and I, Alyssa, um, she's, yeah, we're going to have many more battles, but um, we met up at the, the Gold Coast one there in round 16 and this clutch one in the quarters here. So, um, yeah, you're just so on your game. And I, I, I guess in those moments, I sort of draw off matching up against the best on the tour. You know, when you have those clutch ones where you know it's like that informed surfer, whether it's just there for Tyler, Carissa, any of the top ones, you have to really kind of ground yourself. And uh, in those moments, that was the whole goal of coming back onto the Challenger is to try and unlock my best surfing under that pressure. So. Felt super cool. Well, yeah, I think level unlocked at the moment. And I mean, talking about Challenger Series formats, I can't think of a better surfer that's more suited to this style of competition. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it plays really well into your wheelhouse with your work ethic and, and your just overall absorption of energy around the comp sites. Oh, it's eternal grom froth, I think. Uh, and just, you know, thinking back to surfing in the World Juniors here all those years ago. That's where it all started, our grassroots program, and that's courtesy of, you know, Surfing New South Wales, Surfing Australia, like, just embracing us, giving us those opportunities, and this is what it felt like. You're down the beach, you know, back-to-back -back days, and you couldn't wait for your next heat, and, um, yeah, it's just been a blessing to come back into this format. Um, yeah, such a joy to be here on uh, finals day and try and give it a good nudge in this semi. 
Well, you're a beloved icon, of course, of surfing. You're one of the biggest stars in Australian sports. And you can see, like, the grommets are around. And even some adults here told me you taught them how to surf for the first time and they've fallen in love with the sport. So for all the Sally fans out there, little bit of word for them. Oh, just the, just the support coming down all these years, you know, 10, 15 years, and now they're bringing their kids down. That's what it's all about. I try and just plant that seed for them to pick up a board, and um, it's such a healthy habit for life. So just to see some smiles on their faces and, and come down here, that's what it's all about. So um, thanks so much. And, yeah, I don't know, just they're, they're such uh, cluey, you know, surf fans as well. They know good surfing, and they know these big matchups. So they're kind of there going, oh, that's the one, that's the one, and, you know, getting eights and, and um, you know, like high scoring rides, they kind of really encouraging me. And um, yeah, I guess that surfing takes time to come out under pressure, and you're seeing it in the Groms now. So, some great heats coming up. Stay tuned. Pleasure to be on the glass with you again. Thank you, Sal. Hey, guys, everyone at Jaroa. <laughs> Thanks, Jess. Yeah, they're always good to have a, a long chat with Sal, and we could afford to then because there wasn't a whole lot of waves rolling our way out the back there. But uh, yeah, Sally's been competing here at North Narrabeen forever. I remember watching her in the World Junior Championships back in the day, Laura. I think you even had some heats with Sal back then. Oh, countless heats with Sal. I feel like, like ever since we were 11 years old, just uh, going at it in every single Grom Comp, Junior Comp, QS, and then uh, she managed to, <laughs> to get a lot less distracted than me on the CD. <laughs> <laughs> and she's here on the Challenger Series, looking really focused, but also having a good time. Out there in the lineup at the moment, Bella Kenworthy, the 16-year-old, so impressive on a road through this event. I, I love how just aggressive she is with her turns. And she's got a, a healthy lead here over Macy Callahan at the moment, who's got priority and is after an 8.61. We're going to take a, a Bonsoy brew break. We'll see if Macy can bounce back right after this. The GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy is brought to you by GWM, official automotive partner of the WSL Australia. By Destination New South Wales, official strategic sponsor of the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. By Harvey Norman, official lifestyle destination of the WSL Australia. And by Oakberry, fuel yourself with the official SAE of the WSL Australia. Quarterfinal two is unfolding at the moment. There's 13 minutes to go. And 16-year-old Bella Kenworthy has the edge over Macy Callahan, who was on the championship tour through those first five events this season. And Macy's got work to do. We've had a bit of chatter here uh, about the scale. It's, it just feels a little high at the moment with both these surfers capable of so much more. And that's fine, having a, a high scale, but it can disrupt or, or upset a, a competitor's mindset and psychology going into the uh, back half of a, heat, of a heat when you're chasing 8.61. Laura, I think Macy knew Bella was about to turn in a, a big score. She would have seen the spray coming off from those, those two big turns. But from the front, I think if she had seen those turns 
she'd feel like she's a chance of turning this situation around a little easier. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think Macy would have seen that wave come through and knew when Bella took off that that was an excellent wave out there today. So when you when you have to just when you can just finish off an excellent wave, you're going to get an excellent score. I feel like if Macy, like you said, saw what Bella did from the front, hopefully in her mind she can just, uh, you know, I guess be calm, really. Yeah, both these surfers on at the moment. So let's uh, let's hope we get a couple more exchanges. I'm just so impressed with the composure of this next generation. We've been talking about a generational shift on the women's tour. We're starting to see them on the CT even. The younger competitors wrestle away heat wins from those multiple world champions and those campaigners that are used to winning multiple events in a season. It's just not happening like that anymore. And at this Challenger Series level, they're wrestling big results away from seasoned campaigners. Bella's put herself in a really good place here to have a shot at a semi-final. Yeah, for sure. And Bella in that uh, new generation of absolute shredders just pushing the progression of women's surfing. You know, she grew up, uh, I feel like some of the first big clips I saw of Bella doing airs were in the wave pool. They did that stab ladybird event and uh, with Erin Brooks, Sierra Kerr, Molly Picklam, uh, and, and a whole bunch of other other little uh, absolute super groms going to the air. And since then, they've been able to convert that into airs out in the lineup. And then also big turns and, and these ladies are you no, know, Bella's growing up quickly. I feel like last time I saw her, she was just a little grom, and now she's a little woman. She's 16 now. Yeah, she's also had the, the benefit of, of her dad being a, a photographer and, and used to standing on the beach capturing surfing. And yeah. uh, now he's filming every single one of her sessions. It's, you know, it, most surf coaches will say that's a, a great way to uh, identify where you can improve, uh, work on different technique. But it's just always a buzz to finish a session and go back and look at the footage. Yeah, uh, Bella's got an instant crowd of a family. She's uh, one of five kids, along with Loyal, Waylon, Peter and Indy, and uh, Mum, Jason, Mum, Sarah and Dad Jason. So, uh, yeah, they have the full minivan and absolutely love spending their days down the beach. Well, Bella having a look at that one. Doesn't get into it. Just trying to force Macy to make a decision there with her priority. But uh, Callahan identifying pretty uh, quickly that there wasn't an 8.61 in that ride. At this point in time, you know, you can really turn around a, a requirement like this with two rides. But, you know, the more time that, that goes by, the, the more likely it is that Macy's going to have to do it with one ride. But she, uh, she'll still feel threatened if uh, she doesn't get two because Bella Kenworthy is a real chance at, at dumping the 6.6 .6 at some stage as we see Macy moving into position here at the moment. It's a good looking wall. She's pretty deep, which might set her up well for a big turn. This one's stretching away from her. She waited a long time for that and isn't able to turn in a, a good score to help her situation here. So as well as having two great rides, Bella Kenworth is now going to have priority and is going to be in a real position of power. Yeah, she is. She's going to be able to really close down the final eight and a half minutes of this heat. Put the pressure on Macy. That wave, it just, it looked like it was going to be such a, such a good one. It just shut down, unfortunately, for Macy. This, this for me is where competitively sometimes Macy is, you know, a, a, li a little fragile. Sometimes she falls apart in these situations. The, the killer instinct to, to go chasing opportunities under priority. Sometimes she can lose that and uh, just sort of act a, a little defeated. So we'll see if she can rally here on the right on the precipice of a, a big result. You know, quarterfinals not bad for the, the Women's Challenger Series, but for someone like Macy, who's, who's cracked so many finals at this level, she'd probably see it as a, a shortcoming. Yeah, for sure. I mean, she's already got that throwaway, the 17th snapper, so... She'd want to be just pushing and edging ahead here on these beach breaks here at Narrabeen. I mean, when you look at the rest of the tour this year, she had that big result at Bolito. She'd be so excited to head over there. US Open, she loves those lefts into the pier, and she's got a lot of 
incredibly strong surfing that she can do in, in all types of conditions. I'd love seeing her come to life really this year, surfing at Bells and, and Margaret River. Yeah. Can throw down some big hacks, great backhand as well, which makes uh, such a threat on the Challenger series. But here's what it looks like. We're going to take the top five women at the top end of the rankings after the Challenger series, counting their best four results from the six events and uh, hoping that it can keep them up there at the top. But you've got a mix of surfers coming from those regional qualifying series uh, events. Those who, who didn't survive the cut on the championship tour. Macy's one of those competitors. Strong performance from last year's Challenger Series and uh, our two world junior champions getting the call up as well. But uh, a lot of different regions represented in the finals here at the Sydney Surf Pro. And uh, we're going to have a couple of very deserving champions at the end of it all, surviving all kinds of conditions here at North Narrabeen. We're on alley rights today, and it looks like we've got a, a nice looking wall standing up here for Bella Kenworthy. A little deep to start this one off. And she's not really going to find a whole lot on this ride as it stretches out away from us. So Macy Callahan, you know that the door is open for her now. She's going to get priority. Will she get an opportunity at a, a quality wave? I'd still say that there's time for her to do it in two rides, but she'll want to bank an excellent score to give herself a shot. If, if she can get the 8.61, that'd be a, a monster advantage because obviously the, she'd have the lead and then she'd still have a chance to improve on it. So this happened just before Macy finding a small one, slicing and just that wave running out of power, but Bella just holding her off in that one. Macy really was in the spot. That wave sort of trickled out. It didn't have that same power to it that we've seen some of these alley rights have. Macy is just going to be wishing and hoping for a nice tapered set to come. Anything with that nice bend in it, bend in it to allow two big turns or three sort of medium-sized turns. When we think back to, you know, Sally's 8.5 in the last heat, it was a small wave, but she just pushed that extra bit and uh, did some excellent turns on it. Just Ma generated that, yeah, mate, that Macy, power. She, she wants that steeper section at, at the start of the wave. She doesn't want it so steep that, that she's got to transition through a, a snap. She wants to really lean into that, that yeah, trademark she... hack. And uh, if she can, she... You know, with a big finish, she might just get that 8.61. But with four and a half minutes to go, she's got pressure building up now. And the likelihood of getting two rides here to get a strong position and a chance at a semi-final spot is diminishing. It's, it's feeling like she's going to have to turn this one with a single ride. The World Surf League, immensely proud of instituting uh, equal prize money across all owned and operated events back in 2019, and it is the, the first US-based global sports league to do, to do so. 2022 was the inaugural season that the WSL's fully redesigned three-tier competition framework, which established the key venues and dates for the world's best surfers moving forward as having combined men's and women's schedules, which has been fantastic, especially when you get a finals day and you're running the women's final and then the men's final and crowning your champions together on stage. And uh, yeah, 2023, it's marking the fifth year of equal prize money. Macy Callahan had her opportunity there and she got caught up in that offshore breeze. Not gonna be the 8.61 that she was after as we dive into the Harvey Norman Heat recap. Both surfers starting with mid-range sixes here. Yeah, this was Maisie's first turn right in the you know, dying, I mean, sorry, opening moments of the heat. And, you know, she didn't have to do a lot, but she got three nice slashes in there to get a 6.6. This was Bella's first run at it. Just nice surfing here down through the alley rights. Just tagging this wave all the way to the inside. Sorry, this was her 6-6, Macy's was a 6 eight, three. But then Bella just found this absolute gem. This wave just stood up and she bashed it once and then floated and finished off that epic little lip line section. Now those clean combos are always going to score high as we see Bella up again. Just going through the Harvey Norman Heat recap. I will say, I feel like Bella's equipment at the moment, just looking a little faster under her feet. Yeah. 
And Macy hasn't had huge numbers on a, her road through to this point in the competition. So she's, you know, really looking to come to life now. It doesn't feel like that way for Bella's going to make a much of a difference to the, the situation here. Yeah, maybe a mistake for Bella to pull the trigger on that way, but just... Two minutes to go. Macy looks over her shoulder and maybe sees something a little bigger on the outside. You can tell that wave wasn't really doing a whole lot. So she wants to get back to that position of priority. Didn't see an 8.61 on that wave and uh, decided to beat Bella back to the takeoff zone to get control and uh, another shot at it here. Yeah, it looks like there might be some lines at the back. Let's see if they come on in and eventuate on this alley right bank here. Looks like there's actually something standing up, so we could see a exciting finish in these last, last minute and a half. So uh, Macy was, I think, wise to look over her shoulder once she got to her feet then. Uh, you know, it does always kind of make the judges question whether you're committed to a good wave or, yeah. or not. So I think it was good that she kicked out of it. She's going to take this one. It looks like it's going to close out. Yeah, it has a long line on it. To get caught behind here and that might be her last shot at it a minute to go and macy callahan you've got to say poor wave selection yeah just never looked like it, it was going to hold up that one yeah that, that one always looked like it had a really long line on it it's easy to get stuck too deep on these alley rights time ticking by and bella kenworthy has really just controlled this heat since dropping the 8.83. Macy, great backhand, but this wave doesn't have enough energy in it to turn the heat. And she's over it, coming in. And uh, that's going to be it for, for Macy. She's going to leave Oz with a, a quarterfinal finish, which will see her make a jump up the, the ratings. But I, I'm sure she's going to leave just, you know, really wanting more. Bella Kenworthy, though, the 16-year-old. You know, on paper, that was a, a really tough draw coming up against Macy, a server with so much power. And those two big weapons, the, the big forehand hacks and, and the big backhand verts. But Bella took it to her. She dropped an excellent yeah. score and held that lead. These super groms, they are not intimidated by these uh, top uh, CT surfers. We've seen it all throughout the year on the World Tour. And now Bella just finding that inspiration to take it and this has to be her biggest result of her career so far oh it's a monster and uh yeah she she deserves it this place in the semi-final she's going to be uh, taking on sally fitzgibbons uh, another big hurdle and if she can survive that one she would have overcome two of the, the toughest competitors on, on the challenger series but what an effort here for the 16 year old amazing <laughs> Did you hear that? The Grom on the beach. Can I have your leg rope? She's still got heats to surf here, Grom. Give yeah. her a chance. Like Cole said yesterday, he's like, this. we've got to keep the, the, uh, the good magic all together. We can't be given away yet. Yeah, that, no. That leg is staying on until she's finishing this event. <laughs> and then it's going to Grom's. Congratulations, Bella. Moving through to the semis. And we're going to see more big clashes as we move into the bottom half of the Bailey Ladders bracket here at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro. Stick around, we're going to bring in Kaipo, Luke Kennedy and Jess Grimwood for the call.
Semi-final number one, all set up here at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro, presented by Bonsoir. Let's get into setting up semi-final number two, starting with the quarterfinal. Quarterfinal number three, out in the water. Ah, potential finals day today. We'll take a look at our Bailey's Ladders, brackets, it's going to be a tale of the veteran and Sally Fitzgibbons up against the teenager, the upstart, Bella Kenworthy. That's going to be semifinal number one. And we'll see Isabella Nichols, Teresa Bonvalot, Aaron Brooks, and India Robinson battle for spots in semifinal number two. And it's been a wonderful day so far. Some high scores, some big numbers getting thrown down by our men's and women's competitors. I'm Kaipo, along with Jess Grimwood. Good morning. And Luke Kennedy. Good morning. Your thoughts first on the day, how the day has transpired so far, Luke? Oh, it's exceeded expectations. Almost uh, every heat we've seen this morning has had alternating leads, solid scores, great exchanges, and exciting surfing. Obviously, it's a, a radically different uh, contest feel to the one we looked at earlier in the week. where it's sort of concentrated on the alley rides, but the Narrabeen staple is really provided. And Jess, your thoughts on, on this matchup. Isabella Nichols up against Teresa Bonvalot, who's the, the defending champ at this particular event. I think this is such a well-matched quarter. I think they both got tons of experience in their wheelhouse, and, and they're really well suited to this level of pressure. So I think it's going to elevate the performance in these conditions here this morning from both these women. They've got a lot to give, and they're going to push each other to find those best parts of each other's contest surfing. Yeah, of course, Teresa Bonvala on the camera here. 23 years old, out of Cascais, Portugal. She won this event last year at the Sydney Surf Pro. The site was manly for that competition. She had some great finishes as well. Semi-final finish in Sacarema at Itaúna and made the final third place at Haliva. But the heartbreak for Teresa Bonvala was she finished the year number six on the leaderboard, Luke, and we only take the top five for the women onto the championship tour. Yeah, Teresa was a bead of wax away from qualifying, and I think uh, Sophie McCulloch almost conceded and almost mm. said, you've got the slot, and then it was a dramatic turnaround in that final at Holly Eva. so Teresa's very determined to make it onto the championship tour. She's actually been in and around championship tour events for a decade, had her first shot back in 2013 when she was really young. So, actually got the opportunity to surf three championship tour events this year as an alternate so she's familiar in that space but she wants an official spot yeah beautiful views here from the feel new sydney flight cam and the translucent water here at north narrabeen we've switched sites today well the waves made us switch sites today just to uh, north narrabeen and the alley alley writes most of the competition waves getting scored there yeah, it was kind of tricky on first light this morning. Like, we were down here, toes in the sand, and you could have almost been mistaken for, for thinking there was the choice really back to even the left rip bowl off the car park rights. But if you did have your ear to the locals, you could hear them talking about alley rights as soon as that sun popped up over the horizon. You'd just see the potential of that inside section. And um, I know you, Luke, and I were talking about how fun the end of that wave is and how scorable um, some of those sections are. They've been incredible to watch all morning. Isabella Nichols is going to get the first wave here. Isabella oh, catches rail, goes down. 25 years old, Isabella Nichols. Three seasons on the championship tour. Did not survive that mid-season cut in 2023. Hence, Isabella's effort here, Luke, on the Challenger Series. Yeah, I was talking to Isabella yesterday uh, in a post hit interview and then also a little bit afterwards. And she was just of the opinion that she's been a, a, a little bit too much in her own head, perhaps trying a fraction too hard. Uh, to try and offset that, she's been working in this event with Matt Granger, whose personality is basically like a, a permanently fizzed can of <laughs> soft drink. Just his captain enthusiasm. And that's what she's needed to really broaden her scope a little bit and remind herself of why she got involved in this whole surfing game to begin with, is to have fun. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it is, you know, not putting undue pressure upon yourself, correct? Because there's enough pressure on the clock, on the scores. You put pressure upon yourself, Jess, and uh, you're not helping the situation. And you got to be able to forgive yourself as well. Isabel with a one-point right, she's got to get over that. Yeah, it's not the start that she wanted. I saw something similar in Kobe Enright's um, 
game plan yesterday in competition. She had that little bumble at the start and it, and it really cost her. But I know with um, Bella's mindset, like you were talking about as well, Luke, she has that experience and that capacity now. She's been um, working on things outside of, of the professional bubble that she's in for surfing. And it's only going to add value to what she can bring in this heat. Yeah, obviously Bella, you know, very determined, a very ambitious person, was studying engineering on the side when she first commenced competing at an elite level. And uh, I guess, you know, that's one of those pursuits, academia, where you, you know, kind of put your head down and you get the job done and you just apply yourself. Sometimes you adopt the same approach to surfing. It doesn't always work that mm. simply. All right, well, we'll see. We've got a series of waves coming through here. We'll see if anyone has a taking to these. Priority sits with Teresa Bomvala. And with those waves not hitting the bank, let's go to the winner of the last heat. Yeah. With, with, uh, no, I'm sorry. We already did the winner of the last heat. Now we're going to go to a, uh, a new call because we want to give you an update on today's action. Stace, what is it? Yeah, Cubs, I mean, he's not the winner of the last heat, but he's, he's a winner. He, he's, having a, he's having a good honest crack down here. Pretty tricky job today. Will, what, what are we going to get up to? Yeah, we've just caught on the men's quarterfinals. We've had a couple of really exciting women's quarterfinal matchups. We think there's enough opportunity out there. Um, the trip forecast for the next few days is there's no guarantees, there's no home runs there. So while there's waves in front of us, we feel like we need to run. Well said. Thanks, Kipes. All right, yeah, Will Hayden-Smith, always a winner in our eyes. And uh, he's making those tough calls. So we're going to go into the men's quarterfinals here, standing by if we're going to get into semis and finals and crown a champ. Right now, though, a lackluster start to quarterfinal number three. Waiting for a score for Teresa Bonvalot, Jess. Yeah, but game on. I, I love that call. I think it's such a gamble when you're having to throw that dice up against Mother Nature. And regardless of how many charts and reports and forecasts you look at, sometimes it just doesn't go your way or those rare days where it really all comes together. And we've got waves and we have excellent scores being thrown down. And as much as sometimes it can be a tricky call, I think it's a really good one for competition. It's a beautiful Sunday here in Sydney, and I want to see the world's best surfers and the top of those Challenger Series brackets be filled up on these alley rights today. 2.5 checks in for Teresa Bonvala. And uh, it's priority now, Luke, to Isabella Nichols. Some, say, some sets coming through here. Yeah, you can see one of the factors that, that may come into play throughout the day is that westerly offshore wind is forecast to go up a few knots, and it's already started to do that. So blowing hard offshore, it's going to be blowing against the surface faces as they paddle in. Teresa, wave races off there. And uh, another... Fractional score checks in here. Eight minutes, uh, 18 minutes, I'm sorry, and 30 seconds on the countdown. And without, with the uh, receding tide, it looks like the waves are breaking faster and faster down the line, Jess. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one, like you're saying, Kaipo. Um, uh, always is the case, as soon as they make the call, the wind comes up. <laughs> <laughs> I do not envy that position. I, I was saying yesterday, there is not a chance I would have slept a wink of sleep if I had to make that call for this whole um, contest and even just, you know, even the smaller contests throughout our seasons, just that pressure of you trying to, to decode nature is too much for somebody like me. And I guess that's why we're in here. But I always feel like it happens. They make the call and the wind starts howling. But I mean, there's waves. We just got to see it. Look, with the lower tide, do we think we'll see lefts come into play? I'd like to think so, Kaipo. I mean, the general consensus from the, the locals on the beach is the swell is a little bit smaller today, and a lot of them seem to think that the left-hand bank actually is going to like that, you know, that slight depreciation as well. It either wants it to be a lot bigger or that little bit smaller. Mm. So fingers crossed we'll see the split peak. And we've seen that nature as we see Teresa Bonvala find the left. Nice carve there for the Portuguese surfer. Zig and zagging to make the connection, and that should be the best score so far in the heat. Right behind, though, firing right up into the lip. Isabel Nichols finishes off her ride, so we'll be waiting for scores for each of our competitors and set the situation, Jess. Yeah, I feel like what plays really well into the hand for Bonvalot 
is the fact that she does get a chance to go on her forehand. She's really exciting on that. Obviously, she's got the weapon backhand, but this is going to play well into her uh, into her wheelhouse. I like the exchange too here. I think this is the very start of Bella. She gets up in a nice open face, wrap, and gets into gear and, and into mode in that last section. Here's a replay from Teresa's. Yeah, just opens with a wrapping turn. Wave face a little bit flatter. Really solid surfing. However, I feel like the wave has perhaps let her down. If anything, it's the steepness of the wave that has perhaps let her down. But in the context of the heat, there haven't been many waves ridden, and I can definitely understand why Teresa rolled the dice on that one. Score in. A three-point ride for Teresa, waiting for score for Isabella Nichols to set this heat. Yeah, so Bella's obviously going to get the better of that exchange when you look at the wave quality, the two turns, the criticalness. Um, it's looking good already dropping in, and it's just like that with a really nice choice with that priority now in her bank. It's a seven-point ride for her, and she needs to get rid of that one and not leave the door open for somebody as experienced and as assertive in heat situations as this one. Teresa on the backhand here. A couple of stabs up, went vertical for that second one, went down. She will not turn the heat there. It's been a good run so far in Arabian for a youngster out of San Clemente, California. Bella Kenworthy's in to the semifinals. Let's hear from Bella. Thanks, Kaipo. Bella, you are on fire this morning. Um, I was really excited to like get to surf these rights, and um, I was super nervous for my heat because Macy is so good, but I was happy to get that wave. Yeah, you got a couple of amazing uh, rides out there. Talk to us about the wind. Looked like it might have picked up a little bit halfway through that heat. Yeah, it got a little harder at the end of the heat, but um, there was still a couple, I think. It just got a little bit hard to like make the section. You're still obviously very young coming on this tour, but you look pretty comfortable in most of your heats. Does it feel that way? Um, I'm getting like more comfortable with each heat win, but I definitely at the start of this comp was not super comfortable and was definitely a bit nervous. It's a great time of the afternoon over there in California. Did you want to say uh, good afternoon to everyone? Yeah, I want to say hi to my dad and all my siblings. And I miss you guys. Thanks, Bella. Well done. Yeah, Bella Camworthy. Yeah, dad, Jason. Hey, Jason. Kid's doing good. Jason, a uh, old friend of, of mine, a great surfer, uh, iconic uh, surf photographer. And he's put up some of the more stunning images uh, throughout Surf Mags uh, for over a couple of decades. Here we go. Isabella Nichols with priority. Good looking right here for Nichols. Has to speed down the line to pick a section. Gets up there for a little lip line glide one more time. Onto that crumbly lip and finish that off. Stab on the backhand for Teresa Bonvalov, she's just going to lean on that one turn as we come to her. We'll see if she got more at the beginning of the wave on the replay. She's probably going to beat Isabella out for priority over halfway through this heat. Well, nice, nice backup wave for Isabella. I think the wave dictated that down the line thing, but this is the replay for Teresa's. Yeah, swings off the bottom. Great first turn, eyeing off the second section. A second turn would have been great. Isabella has to race this one, almost ducks into a little tube. Swings at the lip, rides out with a bit of a warble and then gets a solid finish. I think uh, Isabella having already posted the seven point score, that's gonna be a fantastic backup. Well, orchestrated heat so far, Isabella Nichols. Will she make it into the semifinals? She's on her way, we'll find out after we return from this Bonsoy brew break.
That's right, stop number six on the championship tour, the upcoming Surf Ranch Pro, presented by 805 Beer, is offering, check this out, a once in a lifetime opportunity for surf fans at the end of competition. Two lucky winners, one from general admission and one from VIP, will be selected randomly to get a wave at the ranch. Actually, not one wave, two waves. The winners will get one left and one right all to themselves. You must be on site Sunday, May 28th. Remember, the event runs May 27th and 28th. You can get your tickets at surfranchpro.com. VIP starting at $299. General admission, just $40. Check out the world's best and take a chance at getting a right and a left at a dream wave all to yourself there at the Surf Ranch. That is gonna be incredible. And those waves are so valuable, everybody wants one. Here we go, some replays. Teresa Bonvala, she got this right during the break, Jess. Yeah, this one wasn't typical running away like the start, so she gets a bit of open face work, but quite a fat face there. It's obviously going to help her situation. But I mean, it's it's, it's kind of capped. Uh, there wasn't a lot of steepness or criticalness about that surfing on the back end. And we know that's where Teresa kind of excels is that top to bottom, similar to Alyssa Spencer, um, top to bottom, top to bottom on the back end. It's beautiful to watch and, and she's gonna need that against Isabella. Yeah, 3.7 for the last for Teresa Bombala. Still trailing Isabella Nichols. Teresa needing a 7.63. Really solid scoreline in the context of what's been available in this heat, Luke. A seven point ride and a 4.33 for Isabel Nichols. Yeah, I feel like Therese is almost gonna maybe have to look at doing it with two scores. Not a lot of time left though, so it's getting down to that period where she's backed into a corner and she might really have to swing for the fences. She's got that really well measured, precise backhand attack. Uh, unfortunately, so far, she's had a couple of really solid opening turns, but has struggled to find the backup second turn. Yeah. Isabel, not just a great surfer, but also really bright. And you talked about a little bit earlier just at, with her studies. Uh, she's starting to be a mechanical engineer. Mm -hmm. And uh, her rookie season over, you know, on the, on the championship tour was able to visit the surf ranch and study. That was 2021. Was able to kind of study the mechanisms and got like, a behind-the-scenes tour of the secret machinery that creates that man-made uh, miracle in the surf world. <laughs> oh, well put. I didn't actually know that. That's an incredible um, opportunity. One of those benefits of being an, uh, a very talented athlete, but also, like you said, she is so intelligent and she's one of those women that came out of Australia too at that time that were juggling professional sports and surfing and then um, obviously university degrees. Here she goes, Nichols. Good looking right here. Nice slash to open. One more time. Make it three for Isabella Nichols, and this wave continues to give her all the way to a closeout maneuver. Five turns to the score. She probably is going to ditch that 4.33. Luke, what do you think? Yeah, really solid surfing. I love the speed. I love the flow. I love the power. Uh, I would have liked to have seen it get maybe just a fraction more vertical on one of those turns, but it's going to be a solid backup. If I can offer a little bit of insight, I think what's happened is she's reset from that last ride, knowing she got caught behind. She set the high line quick, which put her all the way out on the face for these turns. And I think that's where she's lost the criticalness. Obviously, um, I think Teresa's going to be uh, comboed after this. Uh, it was clean surfing, but like you said, it, it just needs something a little more. Teresa got one too, but it did not pan out for the Portuguese surfer, so she pulled out the back with just a fractional score. Want to make sure that she hangs on to that priority in the last third of this heat loop to give herself a chance. Yeah, both these surfers had ninths on the Gold Coast, so they're in the in the bracket stage now, so keep the results, but obviously they want to go much further so that it's a, a, you know, a really solid keeping result. Yeah, I mean, the semifinal finish. You make it to the semifinals, 6,000. 6,085 points is what you get. And that the differentiation, if you bow out in this heat, you get 4,745. So it, there is a big jump uh, when you look at your leaderboard rankings and your leaderboard points if you make it into the semifinals. And Luke, I'm going to go back to you. For the women, only taking the top five, it really is about semis and up. Yeah, it's a different equation to the men. They actually need higher results, more consistency, 
it's way more competitive to claim one of those top five slots. Teresa wants one of those slots right now and gets blown off on that opening turn, so maybe a little frustration at this point. Handed over priority, did not execute on the score, and heat control just is going to Isabella Nichols. Oh, and look at that number she just dropped too. I mean, I'm I'm the first to admit I was a, a fair bit off with the breaking down of her performance because an 803 for that it really is tightening those screws against Teresa, and you could see her just coming undone. I don't think I've even seen her fall throughout this event so far. So she's in combo. She could have converted that last one to an eight plus ride as well and at the moment she's got it back against the ropes yeah let's take a look at our harvey norman recap isabella nichols has been dominant in this quarter final luke yeah great down the line speed here powerful turn out at the top good solid finish and again look at the speed down the line nice open face carve and again similar turn Powering down the line, and this is where she's got the eight-point ride. Five turns all together into the alley rights, into a commanding position. And we come back to live where Isabel Nichols looks highly likely to move into the semifinals. Teresa Bonvala is under the priority of Isabella that we see on our screen. Teresa needs a two-wave combination of a 15.03 at four minutes, a nearly impossible task, Jess. Yeah, it's a huge task for her, and obviously Bella's going to play priority really well. I, I think what I can take from Bella's performance now, unpacking that 8 and 7, is her adjustment particularly, regardless of where it sits in today's scale. She's adjusted to what's been offered out there, and here goes answer back. Yeah, Teresa Bondola. A couple of taps on the backhand, on her way. Oh. <laughs> And was trying to sell that finish before actually riding out. Isabella Nichols. That may have been a gift for Isabella, to tell you the truth, because she's going to stay out there and regain priority and control the lineup in this final three minutes. And I don't know if she knew that Teresa fell. She probably did not know, so that's why she went into attack mode. But if she had known... It would have been wise just, just to stay out there and hold that priority. Yeah, for sure, Kaipo. I'm 100% on your side. She wouldn't have known that, so she's just pulled the, the trigger on thinking that she needs to regain it. But gosh, that was an opportunity left untaken for Teresa. I think that would have gone into the eights plus. And then with more, more than two minutes, she was being straight back into this heat. Look at this replay, particularly the last turn when she falls. That's critical. That's straight to the bottom again, hits the lip, and just... I don't know if she's chasing something a little more, like a little foam climb or, or something, but she, it's unfortunate. Here goes Isabella. Doesn't want to play defense. Wants to go all offense at the end of this heat. And she's got a nice looking double up in front of her right now. Snap to finish. Teresa. Nice vertical stab. So surfers just surfing it through. Yeah, I'm really curious to see where the judges go with Isabella's wave, because for me, that's the best ridden wave of the heat, particularly that opening turn. We'll see it on the replay in a second, but way more critical, a little more vertical. There's only a two-turn combo, but Jess, what do you think? Well, she does that little highline hop again, and yeah, real critical, gets a little fin release. This thing doubles up as well. I, I think if I'm going to be hypercritical, this end turn right here, it's really strong. She clicks well with the timing, but I think it could have been more aggressive. Here's the replay from Teresa. I love that backhand from her, like slide out of the lip, but that wave, it didn't really offer up anything yeah. else. No, Teresa Bonvala, her previous wave of 4.73, she has yet to break out of the combination. And at 90 seconds, it is a foregone conclusion. We're still waiting for scores to make things official. That's one score for Isabella Nickel, one score for Teresa Bonvalo. It's been such a beautiful morning of surfing. I mean, as if this doesn't make you want to go surfing, you should see the amount of groms that are up <laughs> on the beach and, and on the little boardwalk. They're, they're just biting at the bit to get one of these alley rides, and it looks so good. And obviously, watching the likes of Bella take it apart, there, there is a lot of Australian fans on the sand too, of course, being at North Narrabeen. The amount of groms and young women down there watching the likes of Sally, um, Isabella, I mean, India's coming up later on after this heat in 40 seconds. <laughs> Big morning for surfing. Yeah. 
and the judges you know they they've woken up on the right side of the bed today they've been pretty generous with their numbers so we'll see what else drops right now shake the judges tower because they got to get some numbers in we're going to see another excellent score for isabella nichols at 8.17 makes a 16.2 Two wave total and an excellent heat for the stats for Isabella Nichols. Teresa Bonvola up and riding. And this will be her ride to the beach. And she will be walking away from North Narrabeen with an equal fifth, a quarterfinal finish. So good surfing, great result for Teresa Bonvola. But it will be Isabella Nichols who is going to move on into the semifinals. Yeah, the double thumbs up from Bella too. Bit of relief and great heat total for her, 16.2. You can see Teresa Bombalo just shaking her head, wondering what went wrong in that heat. I think she had the score, you know, the scoring opportunity yeah. in a lot of ways. She was on the way, and we've seen so many heats seesaw. That one did it, maybe just because Teresa just didn't execute on those second turns. Someone who can take a lot out of that is Bella. Oh, it's just well played, great use of priority. Great adjustment in the scale and a nice win. Well, she wins the heat a couple of times, right? Yeah. Control ways. Here's our numbers. Isabella into the semifinals. There's one more spot in the semifinals. We're going to see ratings leader India Robinson versus Aaron Brooks. When we return, quarterfinal number four will be out in the water. Taking a look back at the Boost Mobile Gold Coast Pro presented by GWM where India Robinson took this snapper with some big turns and a success on her run over Sawyer Limblad in that final, taking the win, leading the rankings, getting the cheer. Yeah, the ring of fire there, Kaipo. And she was in form and she still is mentally, physically, spiritually, I don't know what else there is, but she's pretty informed. Emotionally. Emotionally, yeah. <laughs> True. Don't but that I, yeah, that, that's a good point, Jess. In a posted interview, I asked her, you know, do you feel like you're back to your best form? And she said, it's starting to feel that way well, completely. Her road to, to that win, she had to take out the queen of snapper rocks in the semifinals, Steph Gilmore. Here's a replay of the start. It's a 7.33 start for India Robinson. Jess. Yeah, you can just see it's it's beautiful surfing. It's well timed. It's well constructed. She's composed throughout the whole wave, and she just reacts to what the section's offering up. It's going to go well. At the end of this heat, I know she's going to want to throw it away, but look at this replay from Erin Brooks, the prodigy. So fast on the backhand, Luke. Yeah, this is the big wind up. So fast out of the lip. The approach is a little bit more lateral. Now she gets vertical on the finishing turn. What an exchange to open up this heat. We've been looking forward to this one, and mm. so far in the first couple of min minutes, it's already delivering. So 7-3-3 opener for India Robinson, still waiting for the scores for Aaron Brooks to see who is going to have the early advantage out here. Aaron Brooks, uh, although 
She's originally from Texas, li lives in Hawaii, represents Canada, is actually just already at 15 years old, a global citizen. She's yeah. everywhere, it seems like. <laughs> she is huge. And in the round, when I looked at all these matchups, I actually asterisked this as the matchup of the round for me. It's a great rivalry, rivalry between the success of India Robertson, even past and present, and then this this global phenomenon, like you said, Kaipo, that is Erin Brooks in women's surfing, and and obviously the progression that she pushes in our sport in performance is something that I hope we see at some point today. But at the moment, she's got to bring it to India in these conditions. Yeah. Well, India with the early advantage, 4.5 for Erin Brooks, a 7.33 Luke for India Robinson. Yeah, I just feel like there was a little bit of extra quality in the turns from India. I love the way she rotates the body and the hands through that forehand snap. Looked really on point. Erin's got that speed out of the manoeuvre, but was perhaps just a little more lateral in her approach. I think she needs one of those steepest sections that's going to really stand up. Maybe we'll see some of the progression. She'll be taking inspiration from the earlier victory of another young competitor, Bella Kenworthy, I think. Yeah, the two contemporaries, right, that have uh, been kind of neck and neck on their ascension uh, into an early professional surfing career. Remember, Bella Kenworthy, just 16 years old. Aaron Brooks, just 15 years old. Uh, just, and so they got decades in front of them. Yeah, I love the feeling that people get when you talk about them as well. Like, I can see it in your face, and I can feel it. And, and they just have... You can't help but love their performances because they come out and then you just realize again, oh my goodness, this monster of surfing performance is actually this 15 or 16 year old young woman and they're just navigating the world and then somehow coming out and blowing up in these situations in, in competition. So I love yeah, it. Yeah, there is this crazy mix between maturity and, mm. and sort of an infectious, youthful, grommet outlook. A uh, beautiful view from our field new Sydney flight camp flying by here in a quarterfinal number four. If you're just joining us, we're going to roll into the men's quarterfinals after the conclusion of this heat. So we're going to continue on this beautiful Sunday here at North Narrabeen. P potential finals day for the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonzoi India Robinson with priority and it takes this wave. Some downtime there, throws it, but a little late to that crumbly lip, so hands over that priority to Aaron Brooks. I like the strategy there of Brooks to force the point. I think she actually really did want that way. I think um, for her, she was looking at maybe just one big critical hook, uh, but India had to take it. I like it. Yeah, I think India realizes at this point she's only going to get one section and tries to throw the biggest turn she can. I love the approach. It was a great turn if she rides out of that one. I love the interpretation of the layback slash. Yeah, one point ride, she would have gone much higher if she completed it. Priority to Aaron Brooks. Aaron to turn this heat in her favor. She needs a 3.84, but when we look at that single high wave score of an India Robinson, that requirement is a false requirement really because Aaron Brooks really needs to match a wave in the yeah. seven point range, Jess. Yeah, 100%. And I like um, through the lens, you know, that we're always watching these surf heats, I feel like you zoom in and out depending on we're looking at the strategy and the decisions on that last exchange. And then as they go down to the next sets that are taken off, we'll zoom out and look at the actual surfing. And like you said, Kuiper, that's where Brooks is going to need to step up to the plate. She posts a seven or an eight, and it's got the four or five, and then India is going to feel the pressure. So I'd love, I'd love to see a big set roll through and we have that kind of situation we saw like with Sally earlier where it was just like eights for eights and sevens and there was just bang, bang, bang action. Yeah, we want to see a seesawing heat. Uh, I, I do wonder the fact that Erin has that progression in her repertoire doesn't make the other surfers just second guess themselves yeah. a little bit. You know, are they scared to let her go on a wave? How does that play on the mind? What is she capable of doing even with just, with just one maneuver? We talked about the playing field. It's 11.17 local time. We have a low tide at 2.46. We're going to lose a ton of water off of this bank. And we were anticipating maybe the lefts from what we hear from the locals, some of the lefts come into play. Erin Brooks gets a left. We've seen her numerous times. I mean, I've seen her just in free surf sessions. She's got that air game. 
she can, and that's a point of differentiation that with the numbers that the judges are already giving us this morning, Luke, I would expect Aaron Brooks pulls an air, it'll get an excellent number. Well, the judges haven't left themselves much room, really, have they? They've been throwing down, you know, eights. So if she does do something with progression and then backs it up with another turn, yeah, it's going way up into the excellent range for sure. So we'll see. Yeah, let's take a look at, um, because this is top two on the, on the Challenger Series. Let's take a look at our season schedule because it's a long road to qualification from here. We head over to South Africa for the Bolito Pro presented by O'Neill, and then the US Open of Surfing presented by Pacifico at the iconic Huntington Beach Pier. Right point break over there for the EDP Visla Pro in Aracera, and the end of the qualification road, Itona Beach in Sacarema, Brazil. That's gonna happen October 14th through the 21st. Remember, six events on the schedule. You take your top four finishes for your ranking numbers. When you look at that too, doesn't it just scream excitement when we talk about surfers like Erin Brooks, if, if you can imagine her over, even just back at the US Open. She goes to a, a venue like that. Like you said, the fear from the other competitors is real. It's super tangible on the beach because they have no idea where she's going in the air. Yeah, this is a really big moment for her here now. This is where, this is going to determine or prove whether she's ready to really step up to the next level. India Robinson is obviously a surfer with CT experience. Can Erin overcome the psychology and the challenge of surfing against someone of that caliber? Yeah, it's a, it's a learning process, isn't it, Luke? It's uh, especially for a youngster like this that already has the raw talent, but it's, it's the ability to put it together in 30 minutes with a jersey on. Here she goes. Quick to the lip there. Hooks a carve. Looking at the finish. Bango, 12 o'clock, but goes down. That would have been a valuable finish for Aaron Brooks to turn the heat. Gosh, she looks alive on that backhand too. It just looked like every time she asked a question of that board, even just that push and compression for speed, it answered back straight away under her feet. And you, you had that feeling that she felt really, really connected to her equipment there. Even though she fell at the end, I had that feeling, Luke. I just love the commitment to every turn. Straight up, vertical, fast, sharp, wraps back. I feel like she maybe, need, maybe needed to take the foot off the gas just a fraction. She's almost over -amped. Yeah, I see what you mean. It, it is a lot of energy, and that section doesn't really allow for it. Kind of doesn't match what she's bringing to the table there, does it? So what's key here is the is the weight transition onto the front foot. Then she's got to get the weight back onto the back foot before she takes the drop down. Just catches a rail, and that board she's riding. It, it, I, I'm not having looked at it, but it may have a low rail, but it's res really responsive, really quick. Yeah, riding uh, lost surfboards, mayhem shapes, Matt Biolis. Some of the tinier shapes that he makes, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looked in there already, so 373, and she knows that was going into the sixes. She had landed that last turn. I could just see that fives plus. Well, it's, it's a 373, really, for one turn. Mm. I mean, there was a kind of a cutback in the middle. Yeah, if she completes the second turn, which in my view is probably even an even stronger turn, even though it wasn't the first one, you'd think the number has to go certainly north of six. Now India Robinson with some heat control because she's got a big number. She opened up with a 7.33. She has priority now. She's got all the time in the world, really, in the context of a heat uh, to back that 7.33 up. She doesn't need to be rushed at all because there hasn't really been a challenge to her in this heat as of yet, Jess. Yeah, not, not particularly. And she gets the chance to kind of just run her own race here in the quarterfinals and, and feel it out. And she would have been doing the reps. You know, she works really closely with the Surfing Australia crew. Of course, she's got people like Sophie McCulloch. She's got Sally. And she's got all the rest of the Aussies that they often, I think, do the mock heats and the mock situations. So this is a really uh, dominant position for India to be sitting in with priority and more than half the heat left. She can really now, she obviously has to get the backup wave, but she can open up performance a bit more. Here comes Aaron under priority, way back on the right. Huge turn, but goes down. Yeah, great tactic. I mean, that would have also been a big score for her. 
one big kind of critical turn deep. It, maybe not a keeper by the end of the heat in terms of winning, but she's getting busy. She's not sitting there um, waiting, trying to jostle with India. She's just getting to work now. I felt like she was trying to force the hand of India as well. Mm. She's like, OK, you're going to go on this because if you're not, I am. Yeah, and, agreed. Uh, and India made, you know, a pretty bold choice not to go. India obviously has another one of the surfers working with Jay Thompson. He's got a series. He's been around for quite a while. He's had Morgan Siblick, Sophie McCulloch, Liam O'Brien. It's very interesting to watch the the way the whole coaching dynamic mm. plays out in and around the events. It's interesting to see the surfers too, and the athletes take a little bit of gold and a little, you know, trick from everybody's playbook. Here's India. Good looking wall. Nice carve to begin. Works her way down the line. This time she gets the finish. And she will increase her score line with that effort. There it is. The backup score for her. Erin's going to hear this across the beach comms. And she's, I think it's just going to fire her up. Here's the replay though. Just nice. Top of the face of the wave style carves. But this is where the points will come from for her. She throws a lot of spray. Really critically timed and, and quite a it was a smaller section but she surfed it up there I think in that situation Servers sometimes get accused of using their arms too much or too much body English but I actually like the way India uses her hands to accentuate the turn mm. Well you guys let's hear from the last uh, the winner of the last heat with Stace Thanks Kaipo, Isabella Nichols Talk to us about the conditions out there uh, thanks, Dace. Um, yeah, it's interesting out there. Like, I love alley rights, and uh, as I got out there, the wind just started picking up a little bit, so I had to alter the choice of manoeuvres and try not to get too high on the face, otherwise you just get blown off, off the wave. Um, so I had to make that little adjustment, and then I was a bit out of position, so I had my crew down there like, helping me out and putting me in the spot. But, um, yeah, Teresa was always going to be a really hard matchup. obviously winning last year, um, and her back end's amazing, so... Yeah, I just got a couple waves and I'm slowly finding my feet. Talks us about the transition off the tour back to the Challenger Series. It's been a long Aussie leg for you. It's been a long leg in general. Like, I mean, I've been away since December and um, I've really only had two, three weeks at home. If you don't include Gold Coast, I mean, that's still a contest. But um, it's been interesting. It's been a hard transition for sure. I mean, I have a newfound respect for all that crew that went through this last year because now I'm in the same boat and I know how it feels and it sucks but um in saying that like when you're at your lowest like that's when you find grit and determination and that's when uh, you know I've discovered so many things about myself that I thought I already knew but I didn't and um yeah now I know the headspace that I want to be in when I go out in the heat and I'm slowly finding that again and finding the love and not putting so much pressure on myself to perform like try not to put expectations on myself just have goals and if I don't achieve them then if I put in as much effort as I can, then that's all I can do. You're putting together a great performance here. We're on hold for this afternoon. Well done, Isabella. Yeah, I mean, stop number five on the championship tour at Margaret River is in, is an interesting start. Stop, and you get those those moments. Isabella Nichols in 2022 needed to win the event. She won the event. She survived that mid-season cup, and she stayed on tour. It was one of the best days of her life. Fast forward one year, 2023, same venue. Margaret River, Isabella Nichols fails to make that cut. And she goes down on record saying, that's one of the worst days of my life. All of that, all of that emotion that happens at stop number five on the championship tour, it is real and it's tangible. And when you're around it, you feel it too. Yeah, I just got goosebumps when you were saying that, Carbo. <laughs> it's a lifetime of commitment to the sport and to herself and um, regardless of other people's opinions on, on becoming a professional surfer, you know, the dream job for people. It is, like Bella said, a year or more every single year worth of traveling and, and sacrifice because you miss all the things at home and you miss your creature comforts. And although you do get to participate in one of the best sports in the best arenas in the world, uh, it's hard to cop sometimes when you when you bled into it and you've cried into the situations and you've literally let everything on the line you don't get the validation for all those sacrifices so I, i'm i'm hearing what she's putting down but i like that she's she feels like she's already bottomed out and 
she's ready to roll now. Yeah, she, well, she's definitely rolling through here. A, a win here, 10,000 points, would put her in a really good position to get back onto that 2024 championship tour. A win in this heat for India Robinson. She'll walk away from the Australian leg if she wins this heat. Regardless, with 16,085 points on the ranking. So that is going to be a monster number if she's able to do this. We'll find out because we're going to take a Bonzoi brew break. We'll be right back with the conclusion of quarterfinal number four. Welcome back to the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoi. I am in the Bonsoi Athlete area surrounded by two of Australia's finest athletes, Morgan Sibelik. Morgan, how are you, mate? Uh, not too bad. Fantastic. You guys are coming up in quarterfinal number four. I can see the rivalry is absolutely ferocious. These two guys hate each other. Yeah, you've um, nailed it there, Sas. <laughs> we hate each other. <laughs> What's it going to take to uh, get the knock over uh, Jacob here? He's been ripping. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Convincing. Jacob, back to you. I'm not sure. It'll be a fun heat, though. It's actually pretty funny. We drove down here together. We've been driving to the comp in the same car every day. And now we're on the bikes together. That's yeah. how good friends we are. <laughs> it's going to be a weird drive home. Thanks, boys. Best of luck to both of you. <laughs> <laughs> all time hey it's all funs and games until the jerseys get put on i guarantee you that that's a good call stace it is going to be a awkward drive home for one of them at least uh, nah, happy for your mate here we go with india robinson just taking a paddle because she's under the priority of aaron brooks aaron right now with eight minutes remaining needing an 8.16 to overcome India Robinson and make her way into the semifinals. So some, some decisions and some hopeful thoughts right now, Jess, for the young Aaron Brooks. Yeah, uh, well within the range. Like we said, looking at the scale this morning, an 816 for somebody of Brooks' caliber of surfing is, is like, I think you were saying it before, Luke, it's one big progressive maneuver and it's beyond the nines for her. Yeah, I think it's definitely out there. Uh, it's getting down to the situation, though, where she may just need one big maneuver to do it. Seven minute mark now. Probably enough time for a scramble for two waves, mm. but uh, be interested to see what Erin is thinking at this point in time, holding down priority. Is she looking for that just one wave? The longer that clock ticks down, the more and more that becomes her only strategy. Yeah, this is true. If it wasn't Aaron Brooks, I'd be a little more concerned perhaps about the wind when we talk about those progressive manoeuvres for the surfers. But I just have this feeling that, you know, those old days of worrying about the offshore blowing you off the back of, a, of an air or off for some of the surfers is not really even a consideration for Brooks. I think she would use it to her advantage to get that tower lift or that flatten out look where you can see the whole 
bottom of the board from the beach and, and project out into the flats and, and, you know, be able to manage that wind. I just see that from her. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, you know, once upon a time, it'd be sort of the attitude would be, oh, it's not cross offshore, don't try and air. Yeah. But now it doesn't seem to matter at all. Perhaps it's not ideal, really strong mm. westerlies, but it's not uh, a big enough barrier to prevent Aaron from going from. Let's break down some numbers right now and take a look at our Challenger Series rankings. India Robinson sitting on the top there after stop number one. You can see first place in any of these Challenger Series events, 10,000 points. And that is well on your way to qualification. Get a couple of those, mm. you're done, you're in there. So we'll see if India Robinson can make her qualification run really simple. Just show up in the Australian leg, win back-to-back -back events, and um, thus qualify. Yeah, I love that. I love that ladder breakdown too, Luke. I feel like if India gets through to the semis, she's going to at least go away with the number one ranking. Sally can maybe equal her, but India is going to be at least number one if she makes it through to the semis. Right. I think something from that uh, leading board as well to take away from is uh, when you look at the country flags next to all the athletes, it, it, it was kind of, you can get caught away looking at all the Australian flags, but I also believe that's a little bit of a false reading. Obviously, because we're at home here for a lot of these competitors for the first two stops, I think that's... Uh, home court advantage. Yeah, I think it's a result that, that gives a little false reading into the end of the season results sometimes. Maybe not necessarily in the top two or three, but when you look at... The cut line. Yeah, the cut line and the importance of those bottom results for the next season of the Challenger Series even. Here we go at India. Just up, out, searching. Maybe trying to get Aaron to flinch, which Aaron will is not flinching. So now at four minutes and 20 seconds, it's getting closer and closer to Aaron's only option is a one wave big number. Yep, and she'd be sort of in her brain now kind of ticking her over in her head. Okay, what is it gonna take? maybe even visualizing the maneuver that she wants to pull. Yeah, let's take a look at our Harvey Norman recap. Started off with this, Jess, the 7.33 for India Robinson. Yeah, solid game plan for her. First turn was really nice, extends a bit more through the second. And then you can see she just gets to work. She's such a workhorse of Australian female surfing. And she answers the call here to get the job done straight away. First exchange for her best way. There's that wittiness out of the top part of the way that we see from Aaron Brooks. Really wants a section that's going to stand up, arcing out of the top on that turn, right up into the top of the wave on the finish. And India found the backup right here, Jess. Yeah, it's a nice wave as well. She doesn't get as much opportunity, but she collects a majority of those five points on that last world time maneuver. Back to real time here, three minutes and 12 seconds. Counting down, Aaron Brooks sitting with priority, needing an excellent ride, needing an 8.16. Yeah, I feel like there was maybe a wave earlier on in the heat where Aaron didn't get the completion on the finishing turn, and that would have dramatically changed the scenario that we're looking at right now. Yeah, I mean, that 4.5 opener that she had, and, and, the, and the backup, that 3.73, I, I think that 3.73 was one that she was on her way to a six point plus ride and if she just been, and she came very close to that finish. So without that finish, she has backed herself into the corner. T clock ticking. Um, it's not over yet, though, with a talent like Aaron Brooks, Jess. Yeah, uh, you were speaking about it before too, Kaipo, and you've already spoken about it, Luke, but those heat pods, I call them sometimes, those point of differences, um, we saw it go Sally's way. I saw it go Morgan's way uh, against, I think it was Joanne, um, very early this morning. It was those tiny little moments where maybe you wouldn't have used those scores by the end of the heat because those, that momentum would have, would have been behind them or her. And it gives you that kind of confidence and, and gets you off the ropes and you're back in. You throw in a few jabs and then suddenly a big hook or a really, really good combo and you're in front. Yeah, I, I have a sneaky feeling that Erin also anticipated maybe there would have been a higher wave count in this heat. Mm. It feels like it's slowed down later. She is the sort of surfer that would like to catch a lot of waves. The more time she has a shot of it, 
the more likely yeah. years she has to kind of pull off something. She's incredible. an active surfer. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, if you watch her in any of the warm ups or anywhere free surfing, it seems like she's always on her feet surfing a wave. Well, here we go. This could be an opportunity right now. A couple lines. We're down to just 1 minute 15 seconds. So the options are dwindling for Aaron Brooks. Come on, Mother Nature. Give her the chance. Give her the chance with priority to perform here. She's been waiting to unleash what we love about her surfing and performance. I mean, Luke. there's so much weight of expectation upon her shoulders. I mean, it's, it's, it's tough, you know, for a 15-year-old to take that all on board. We all know she has the performance potential. She seems to take it all in her stride extremely well, I have to say. Mm. But uh, at some point, it's got to be tough. Here we go. This is going to have to be it. The next two waves are going to be her only option. Oh. Frederico Marias already in the lineup. He's going to be in quarterfinal. Number one for the men's, that's that other blue jersey that you see there. 20 seconds, so it's going to have to be this or nothing. Yeah, look at the swell, too. There's so much energy on the horizon. If we can just give her the shot, she can answer back and have a chance. 10 seconds. Kind of a little lump. Has a look. Erin's got a pretty good idea of what sort of wave she needs and doesn't come to fruition. Can't say we're not a little bit disappointed we didn't get to see a final exchange. Well, there's the numbers. India Robinson is enjoying a great Australian leg on the Challenger Series. She is into the semi-finals here. And let's take a look at our Bailey Ladders bracket. We got four remaining for the women. Semi-final number one, Sally Fitzgibbons up against Bella Kenworthy. Semi-final number two is all set with Isabella Nichols and India Robinson. Let's get the men's semi-finals all set up. We're going to do that because through the quarterfinals, starting with Jackson Baker, Federico Marias. They'll be in the water when we return. Welcome back to the show. Time to get the quarterfinals underway for the men here at the GWM. Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. Beautiful Sunday morning here on the Harvey Norman host set once again with my good mate, 
Richie Lovett, good hey, to see you, Rick. <laughs> good to see you too, buddy. <laughs> Mate, this so. is going to be a, a lot of fun. Uh, we've seen amazing surfing through those earlier rounds. We we finished off the round of 16 for the men, and we have great quarterfinal heat set. Let's have a look at the, the Bailey Ladders bracket and see what we're going to be looking at through these first couple of quarters. Yeah, let's do it. Jackson Baker versus Frederico Marias from uh, Portugal. A, an all-natural foot affair there. Then we'll go into Cole Houseman, the big fella against Mark Lacamere, the, the surprise uh, journeyman from France all the way through to the draw here. Then we've got Marco Mignon uh, against Cade Matson from uh, the USA. One of the uh, San Clemente crew has found his way into the quarters and then we'll finish it off with an all Aussie affair. Natural versus Goofy, Jacob versus Morgan Sibley. That is going to be an unbelievable heat. Pick it around for me. Mate, mate versus mate, state versus state. Quarterfinal number four, it's going to be a good one. But this uh, first one's an interesting one. You've got two surfers, that CT experience, both incredible timing, both really powerful. And some nice little running rights here at the alley. Jackson Baker goes up against Frederico Marias. 26 minutes to go here, no scores on the board just yet. Jackson Baker, he's just been so spot on. Fred, he's survived some heats where it hasn't all the momentum hasn't been going his way, so he's alive, but still feels like he, he's got some some more to give us. Yeah, for sure. Uh, in in my view, Frederico Marais is an ice man. He's consistent. You know he's always going to bring a couple of sevens or high sixes. Uh, he'll work on that, and then he'll start to open up a little bit. Jackson, I feel like, has got a little bit more repertoire now. He's been really working on developing these uh, maneuvers and, and really uh, bringing a point of difference. So this is going to be a great matchup. Both uh, can throw a ton of water, both very powerful. And uh, well, they're deep on the peak here. They're right down towards the left. So maybe a little switch up in strategy. Maybe these lefts have been starting to show their, their face a little. Yeah, Frederico Marias, really recent positive memories competing here at North Narrabeen on the championship tour event blew through town in 2021. Freddie got all the way to the semis. Just a, a real reliable workhorse. As you said, moves a, a lot of water, a, a consistent performer, and really always asks a, a lot uh, of those he comes up against. Just definitely feel some Solid energy coming from Jackson Baker at the moment. Last time, uh, or the last few times I've seen him compete here on the New South Wales coastline, he, uh, he's put together great heats. He had a, bi a big victory at Surfest last year. First Novocastrian on, on the men's side to break through for a victory, and he just blew him away in that contest. Great forehand. Yeah, when Jackson uh, taps right in, to that power and that energy, it's it's really hard to stop him. He's he's uh, unmatched almost. I feel like in the remaining field here, when it comes to power, uh, maybe Cole Hausman, uh, you know, the goofy footer from from the US, could could kind of go toe to toe with him in v versus the power. Uh, but he's got this precision-like accuracy to his turns too that he started to filter in uh, to his repertoire. And I love it. It's it's the pairing is working really well together. Sure is. Yeah, Jackson, uh, almost for me, like a little bit like Macy Callahan on the, the women's side this year through the first five events of the championship tour. I think we were seeing their best surfing. Um, but, but as it worked out, you know, sometimes you can do some of your better surfing in the jersey but still lose out in close heats. And that sort of was the story for Jackson, it felt like. But he did start to push his numbers up a little bit. And he's been putting up solid scores through the event here. At Narrabeen, there is going to be a new champ on the men's side here at the Sydney Surf Pro this year. No formal winners left in the mix. What's the likelihood of one of these guys going all the way? Well, pretty, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, we've got a little bit of CT experience here with Jackson, having uh, gone around the blocks a couple of times. But Frederico, he's had a bit more CT experience, so he knows what to do uh, in terms of dropping big numbers. He knows how to close out heats. And he would love to get a win here. 
the uh, the Sydney Surf Pro. But um, you know, this is going to be a great matchup once we see these guys start to tap into the waves here. And uh, North Arabian just going a little bit sleepy. We're a couple of hours past low tide now, and it has been a little bit inconsistent. We've got a new swell that will start to show its head through the afternoon, coming out of the direct south again, and big waves tomorrow. But uh, this is what we have in front of us. Ideal conditions still in terms of wind direction. The bank's set up quite well, but set up to handle these smaller conditions. A call already being made that there'll be no restarts today. So, you know, that's a big call. Kind of tells you where the, the powers that be, where their heads are at. I think they're thinking, you know, uh, let's not take a chance on tomorrow. We, we know it's going to be solid. Could be a, a nightmare out here and at the moment. As long as our surfers are banking good scores, there's a, probably a pretty good chance we could crown our champions this afternoon. Yeah, yeah, we've still got um, still got those semi-finals on hold just for the moment, but right now we're focused on the quarter-finals. There's, there's still plenty of waves out there. You can tell there. Have a look at those umbrellas at the bottom of the screen, just to, how strong that offshore is howling at this stage. It's going to uh, definitely take a, a bit of that energy off this lineup or off the approaching sets, I should say. It's that that kind of strong. Yeah, it's sort of holding the, the waves up a little bit and, and blowing this swell out to sea. The actual horizon line, if you look closely on it, it's got bumps all over it. It's still swell out there. And your uh, eyes are good. Tomorrow's going to be a tomorrow's going to be a different story. It's it's three to four meter swell tomorrow. Um, so it's it's unlikely. You know, it's a small percentage chance that uh, you know, we'll see quality waves. Um, so the percentage play is, is to focus on what we've got in front of us here. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. The tide is draining out. But these surfers have entered the water, so they've got to make something of it. 20 and a half minutes to go. Federico Marias trying to get back to that CT. Been uh, representing Portugal at the highest level so beautifully for a long time. Really kind of took over from Tiago Perez, who uh, had a, a long and strong career. But yeah, Federico has stepped up. He, he finaled at J-Bay. I, I think that's his biggest moment for me. He had a 10-point ride against John John Florence. He's absolutely shredding over there as we see Jackson Baker getting started here. Finding the inside. Nice hit to get started. Bit of foam on the face, but he cuts through it like a knife uh, and then gets way. a big finish here the bakehouse great way to start and just a single uh, wave in that set and yeah, jackson pretty happy has converted. with himself there yeah having a little look there's a big aussie contingent up on the sand dunes and they have camped out to watch uh, this heat and they'll be watching they've got three aussies left in the draw just pulled a, a tray of three beautiful pies out of the oven oh, here oh didn't he just so he had the inside track, an important manoeuvre here to get the first wave, gets around this section. Oh. Jacko just tags it off the first hit and the second one. Bit more of a carve. And then the third one to complete, but that first turn, nice and quick, bashes the lip, quickly gets regained uh, control of his surfboard. And then straight into that forehand gap off the top. And a beautiful way to frame that and finish that ride. Yeah, he's had a, a long and magic relationship with Channel Island Surfboards. And they have a, a factory on board just down at Daly Street in Mona Vale. So uh, I know that, you know, they put a, a lot of effort into getting quality craft under Jackson's feet. And it looks like they've put a, a gem under him here. That board just so clean through those rail turns. But you can, you can see how on Jackson is. I, I think... Through his first run at, on the championship tour, that, that rookie season, he survived the cut. Uh, but at different stages, you know, I thought he's only getting halfway through his turns. And these days you can see how committed in, in, in each move he is. You know, that was a really solid combination there. Three different moves, power in the carve. Uh, you know, uh, extra effort going into the, each of those pocket hits. Yeah, and... Um I'm, I'm wondering whether this extra development in performance or the recent development in performance has maybe a little bit to do with uh, our buddy Mitchell Ross, coach to Carissa Moore, Kanari Garashi. I know these guys have been working really closely together, um, you know, coach and surfer relationship. And obviously Mitch, 
ton of experience in terms of technique and, and a real powerhouse surfer as oh, well. Unbelievable, yeah, he uh, won qualifying series events and was one of Australia's best juniors. And I guess that's a, a pretty cool thing to have. Mitch still surfs at a really high level. If you've got a coach who can go out there and actually run heat drills with you and, and push you, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. So... Uh, uh, Jackson's, uh, he, he's found some form oh, here. Oh, look at this sure. number, 8.83. He likes it. <laughs> well, it just it. shows you how much this means to, to him. He, he is just gunning for a big result here. And he is pretty happy-go-lucky. There's always jokes getting thrown around. But really, you know, when it comes down to it, is the bread and butter stuff. Let's have another look at this replay here. So it's stretched out. I love the drift on this turn, Ron. That first one keeps it perfect control, though. That second hack, he just cuts it off at the right time in order to get to the third one. He's back up now and hammering the pocket once again. Baker just uh, a little sticky on the finish, but it was still impressive. So that's going to be a, a solid backup score here. Just over 16 minutes to go. I can't wait to see what kind of work you got done at the start of this ride. Uh, how often do we see this? Someone get, get out of the gates cleanly, fast, drop a good number, and then they back it up straight away and just put that extra bit of pressure on. Oh. So Jackson just goes, yep, I'll have this if you don't want it. Down the line, quick hit. And the second one, bit more uh, energy on the second turn, wraps it right around, and then gets to the finish there. So in... In Frederico's mind, he's thinking, oh, gosh, I've got to try and match that eight now. So mm. he's looking for something a bit bigger when, you know, perhaps he should have just got his heat started and got into a rhythm. So uh, potentially a mistake there for Freddie. You could say that Fred was looking down the line and he didn't see a lot of meat on the bone. But uh, Jackson wasn't looking for a, a full portion. He's just looking for a, a solid stay. He actually... <laughs> <laughs> took what was left on the bone and ate it and then broke the bone in half and sucked the marrow out of That's it. That's exactly what he did. Just <laughs> extracting everything out of that, that little ride. But um, just by doing that, he's going to put Federico right behind the eight ball here because he's going to need a two-wave a two -wave combination uh, with 14 minutes to go. So we're halfway through the heat. Yeah, he's on fire at the moment, expecting a good score to drop uh, here. But while we do wait for that to come through, let's hear from Stace. He is with India Robin Robinson and Stace, she's on fire. Absolutely is, Ron. Thanks for that. India, well done through the semifinals. Yeah, thank you. That was um, a tricky one. The conditions are changing and, yeah, I just knew I had to get the job done on that one. So stoked to get through. What adjustments do you make in the wind? Yeah, um, I think for me it's just utilising my strength on rail and not going too high on the wave where the wind affects it. So, yeah, just staying where I'm comfortable and, yeah, holding rail. <laughs> In the men's, we'd probably speak a little more confidently about your campaign back to the World Tour, but we know how com uh, competitive the women's tour is. Uh, does that make the job a little more simple? Um, I, I definitely don't think my job's done. Not at all. I want to keep being consistent, keep making finals day at each event and just show up and do my best surfing and then hopefully that will lead to me re-qualifying. But yeah, I've got so, so many more events to go, so just taking this one as it is. <laughs> Off to a great start. This, this Australian leg. Thanks, India. Thanks heaps, guys. <laughs> yeah, amazing. And uh, really the, the only surfer who's got a chance at chasing India down in this event is Sally Fitzgibbons. Just looking so sharp too uh, at the moment. 30 and a half minutes to go. During the interview, we saw another good ride for Jackson Baker. Had a six on his previous wave, so he's got another score on the way as Frederico Marais looks to get his campaign underway here in the quarterfinals. Nice hit to get started. A lot of speed here. Has some big rotations he can go to, but really difficult to stick in a howling offshore. And that's going to, you know, see him fall behind him. Not just points, but in priority as well. Jackson, he's going to chuck another six-point ride on the board. Doesn't go into his top two. But he's uh, he's building nicely at the moment. Yeah, Jackson's got full control of this heat at the moment. And yeah, he would be loving all of this stuff. Let's have a look at this replay. So again, another smaller inside ride. But I think with these little insiders, they can stand up. Offer you a couple of nice sections here. 
Jackson, a, a little layback oh. hack on the first and then throws the reverse to Fine. finish off. Just sort of a little quick layback hack. Keeps the momentum going down the line. Gets nice and low, gets the pop. The front foot slides up towards the nose. Widens the stance and then this was Federico's way. So you can see here, he's building up to something big. And that lip line just got away from him, so kind of had no choice. Yeah, I like the speed he's showing, though. Some real urgency. Frederico Marias just needs to, to find an opportunity. He would have loved one of uh, Jack's six-point rides just to keep himself on pace here. Time's winding down. 12 minutes to go here. Jackson's got priority. And Frederico Marias is after a two-wave total of 14.83 as we take a Bonsoi brew break. Quarterfinal heats unfolding here. Jackson Baker with a solid lead over Frederico Marias at the moment. Nine and a half minutes remaining here. A spot in the semi-finals up for grabs at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy here on the Harvey Norman host set. Ronnie joined by Rich and uh, Richie. Just so impressive from Jackson. You know, the, the conditions, they've, they've come down a, a little bit in size. But Jackson's turns still look big out there at the moment. Yeah, he's uh, he's worked out the formula, hasn't he? He's uh, picking off these waves that are, that are allowing him to do those two or three open face turns. He's really tapping into the power, staying nice and low. And for a power surfer, I guess the biggest challenge is trying to stay light and agile, keep that speed and momentum running down the line. He's doing it just so well. Both these guys actually uh, picking up a ton of speed. Boards are looking sensational. Uh, Frederico Marais, he's uh, on a JS model, the M10. A amazing representation from, you know, so many of the, the regions, the WSL regions in our quarterfinals. And uh, as a result, you know, I know people are tuned in, no doubt a lot of people tuned in from uh, Europe at the moment because we do have a Portuguese surfer out there at the moment. And then we're, of course, going to see Marco in the next heat representing France. Western Australia, well represented as well by Jacob Wilcox and uh, a lot of fans tuning in over there to, to watch online. James Caddo is watching on with his daughter Isla, aka The Worm. They're tuned in and loving every moment of the event so far. But a, a big welcome to what could be finals day. Those semis are on standby at the moment. As we see Frederico Marias loading up again. He's really been looking for uh, an opportunity to get himself back in the heat because he, he threw that opportunity away 
earlier in the heat. Yeah. He was over selective with his priority. You know, a really tough decision to make, but one that Jackson Baker was able to cap capitalise on. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and what, what Freddie normally does in a heat is picks waves that are just really tailor-made for his style of approach. There's a pace to them that lets him get that big open face swoop going. Fast snap. Obviously doing a ton of work with Richard Dodd Marsh over the years, and uh, he does spend a bit of time here. Travel companion Ryan Callanan. Yeah, they've been uh, a formidable team. Great partnership. Richard Dodd Marsh has worked with you know, each of his surfers for a long time, and there's been a, a few high level surfers that have tried to break into that camp as well. Uh, always uh, opportunities being sought there by the world's best to, to add themselves to that that energy, that camp. Six and a half minutes to go here. Rip Curl team rider Jackson Baker out there in the lineup at the moment. And don't forget, Rip Curl offering up a, a fantastic opportunity to win big, win a year's supply of wetsuits by joining Club Rip Curl. Use the QR code on screen. Pretty simple, really. And then you'll have the uh, opportunity to get yourself in the running to win a year supply of wetties, four wetsuits. That's a couple of years for me. Uh, Rip Curl suits, oh, obviously, they're, they're amazing. Uh, amazing. I'm rocking the E-bomb at the moment, but... Ditto. Yeah, it sort of uh, gets you through the this cooler period on the East Coast. But there is, uh, obviously, an extensive range that you can go to, some hotter ones. I've got a heat seeker. I, I took it over to J-Bay the other year. And even over there, I, I had a hot head. I had to <laughs> kind of let a bit of water in. That thing is toasty. That might have had something to do with uh, just huffing and puffing after those long waves oh, in no. the paddle out, mate. I don't that's, know. If that's suit funny. was doing its job fine. Yeah, it doesn't do a lot for your fitness sitting around watching other people surf. <laughs> Especially when the uh, the crew is just shoveling the good stuff in. Mm. And, um, yep, the oak berry, we've been... Oh, I just had one. ...maxing out on it. It's amazing. Yeah, really good. Just wanted to... Um, uh, highlight. Just talk about the equipment. You said the the boards looked incredible. Uh, Jackson's on that on the Channel Islands program. Obviously, he's on the the CI2 Pro model, which is an extension of the the CI1. For those I know, there's board enthusiasts out there, which is slightly more relaxed in the rocker and the uh, the Monster 10 model uh, from JS Industries, and that's what Freddie's on. And uh, while well, these guys have been working together for a number of years now, and uh, He's had these boards have just looked magic all week. Both these guys actually. The the equipment is just such a big part of a surfer's um, you know confidence when they're going into an event. If everything's feeling good under your feet, it allows you that space to really focus on heat strategy, conditions, and you don't really have to worry about your equipment because you know it's going to work. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that that Channel Islands factory. You go in there, it's like a a candy shop. Uh, a lolly shop for, for surfers. There is just so many different boards. I've walked out of there a bunch of times with Whoa, different equipment as we see Fred Rico lighting up, making his move at the perfect time. Four minutes to go. He's going to break combination here and give himself a fighting chance going into these final few minutes here. We saw that NRMA Parks and Resorts warning come up a, a while back, and I was starting to think, Whoa, it's going to be really hard for Fred to turn this around. There's not a whole lot of time left, but he's made his move at the perfect time. And, you know, he, he is definitely one of those guys that has that never-say-die attitude. Yeah, I like it. Keep the spirits high. Quick snap to start things off. That last turn, loved it. Big flare up. Yeah, big flare, gets a tail sliding along the face there. Watch this. Kicks the tail out, gets the drift. Pressure back on that front foot. Watch his weight as you watch the replay again. So watch his weight on this final turn. Once he kicks that tail up, he brings his... Oh, that was another way. His body weight over that front leg. So allows that, that tail to drift. Two waves in quick succession, but he needs more. He's going to need, still need a big number, uh, but he's going to get well rewarded, you'd think. The one thing that Fredro Frederico Marais has always had, and you'll see it, when we go through the Harvey Norman Heat recap is when he's in transition, he's still able to move a whole lot of water. But this was always going to be an exciting heat to surface with CT experience meeting here in quarterfinal number one. Yeah, Jackson sort of set the tone really with his first ride. 
Best wave of the heat, you can see why. Just so much power and speed. Connecting, three amazing turns, and then he backed it up really quickly. That forehand gap, gets another nice snap there for the second one, and then completes the third. So he found his ways pretty quick, and then it was uh, a bit of time before Frederico found this little number here. Uh, and that fi final finishing turn, the biggest finishing turn of the heat so far, and the judges did like it. Yeah, he's out of combination, 6.57 for Frederico, and he is now after an 8.27. We knew he was still going to need uh, a big number, but uh, an 8.27, he's capable of that. Got a, a bigger hook that he can go to as a first turn option if the wave allows it. And he'll just be begging in the, the last minute and 40 seconds here for that opportunity. He almost needs a, a two-wave set and, and hope, hopes that Jackson's not able to improve on his six. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly what's got to happen. And uh, we're into the final minute and a half here. Jackson Baker, he's in the box seat with priority. You would have to think he's going to... Uh, Really pay attention to whatever little bump comes through, but it's a pretty simple equation. An 8.27, it's it's a it's a certain style of a wave that that needs to pop up here for for Freddie, and he needs two of them. Well, the equipment looks sharp. He's he's surfing with amazing speed. Jackson just really did a great job of getting himself that that first ride when priority was neutral, and also just quickly backing it up. He. You know, he's really just hanging on to three great rides at the moment. Fred's, Fred's been a little more desperate, busier. He's taken a couple of falls, but he does have a chance with 40 seconds to go and a wave standing up on the outside well, here. Looks like we may have a two-wave set here, so anything's possible. But it shows you how important that uh, opening inside position was for Jackson. Jackson Baker driving up into the section. It's all he's going to get out of it. And on the outside with just over 20 seconds to go, Frederico Marias. Oh, the second one just slid under him. It just laid down, didn't it? And yeah. it doesn't look like there's much else coming his way at the moment. Ten seconds to go. And not a lot that Frederico can do here. Jackson Baker, he got himself in that glory position at the start. He knows the importance of it. And so does the Aussie cheer squad. Most of them competitors that fell out of the mix earlier are still down here on what could be finals day, cheering on Jackson Baker through that heat. Yeah, they're not going anywhere. We've got one of the Aussies now moving through to the semi-finals and uh, great result there for Jackson Baker. Frederico Marais has started to make a move on the Challenger Series as well. You just cannot blow opportunities if you get a, a decent sized set wave out there at the moment. And Jackson Baker converted it on every scoring opportunity that came his way in that heat. And it was a strong victory over one of the toughest competitors in the draw. We're going to take a quick break here. Up next, Cole Hauschman takes on Mark Lackerman.
the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy is brought to you by GWM, official automotive partner of the WSL Australia. By Destination New South Wales, official strategic sponsor of the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. By Harvey Norman, official lifestyle destination of the WSL Australia. And by Oakberry, fuel yourself with the official SAE of the WSL Australia. Welcome back. What a day it is. Sensational. The weather's been perfect. It's a great time of year here. Good time of year for uh, weather. Good time of year for waves. And it's been firing throughout the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. And we are on the lookout for our second semi-finalist here. The winner of this one will go up against Jackson Baker, Cole Hauschman and Mark Lankerman. Two of the serious uh, heavyweights on the Challenger Series meeting here in this second quarter final heat. Cole from San Clemente and Mark Lackamant from Le Lance. The beach breaks over there in the southwest of France. Rich, you've spent some time there. Had some big wins there too, mate. Yes. As we see uh, oh. the opening exchange here from these two big hitters. Just a 3.33 for Mark. Cole Hausman with a number on the way. Yeah, uh, Cole Hausman, just the one turn, but he thumped it. This guy has got so much power on the backhand. So watch the replay here, gets nice and low and just throws that board up, stabs it out of the lip. Have a look at the power in the thighs here. Just uh, snaps it up there, brings it around, presses the, the knees. I think he'll be looking for something more, a wave like that, with a couple of open face sections, and uh, he'll be on his way to a big score. Mate, some big news has just come out from WSL HQ. Tours and comps have announced that today uh, Seth Moniz has withdrawn from the Surf Ranch event due to a back injury. Uh, and with his withdrawal, now the second highest surfer on the North American Challenger Series ranks is going to get the call up as well as the highest rated surfer from that North American region to compete at the Surf Ranch Pro. And that is super interesting when you look at who is sitting at the top end of the rankings at the moment from that region. It's Jet Schilling and uh, Crosby Colapinto. And I can tell you after their, their finishes, they were sitting equal third, but after their finishes in the round of 32, Jet Schilling is sitting above Crosby Cola Pinto at the moment. Jet finished third in his heat, so he's going to get an additional 1,900 points. Crosby Cola Pinto finished fourth in his heat, so he's uh, going to get 1,700 points. That's going to take their totals up quite a bit. Uh, but we know if these competitors, well, there's only one really that's in the running, Cole Hauschman. And if he can get a huge finish, if he can crack the uh, the final, then uh, he's going to be a, a fantastic ch uh, chance. And then that's on this side of the draw. And then on the other side of the draw, you've got Cade Matson, who's uh, looking to really go a long way in this draw. So both of those guys fighting <laughs> for one of those positions. But, uh, yeah, Crosby, he'd be cheering these guys on to a big result, no doubt. But it might be his expense in the Surf Ranch Pro. Oh, I don't know whether you'd want to have the voodoo doll out or whether you've got the, the pom-poms and cheer. It just seems like these guys are in full support mode. And we'll, we'll see how the chips fall. But at the moment, Cole Hauschman has the jump on Mark Luckermeyer in the, the opening stages here. You know, a real bummer for Seth. Oh, what a shame. Just uh, wishing him all the best. Hope that injury heals up quickly. He can get back to the CT for, for stop number seven. Yeah, wishing uh, Seth all the best. Speedy recovery. As we see here, uh, Jackson and Freddie. Just like give me one big section. And then after that, it was like, once I had that one, I was seeing another one away. Like, under your party, I was just like swinging, swinging. And once I had party, I was just like, it's another way. Like, yeah, Fred's loving that chat. And then you you were letting waves go, and I was just taking off on these insiders. I was just ripping them, and I was getting sixes. And, and then you were getting no opportunities, and, yeah, I had a great heat. Anyway, good luck at the next one, mate. <laughs> I'm going to get ready for the semis. That was classic. Did you used to like breaking down uh, heats <laughs> with the person that had beaten you, Rich? <laughs> Not often, <laughs> no. Here goes Mark Lagomir loading up a lot of speed, thinking about a big backside air. Hey, 
Wow, you can keep teaching old dog new tricks, eh? <laughs> uh, Mark Lackham here, obviously, um, you know, when we think about this guy, we think about some big old power hacks, some big, uh, you know, calves, uh, and just CT level intensity in, in the turns. And, and we don't often think about, you know, uh, his air game, but obviously something that he's been working on, streaking down the line here. And uh, this section just set up so well for it. And had the perfect little launching ramp here. And uh, just didn't quite get the rotation or, or, or the steadiness above his board there. He wasn't centered. And uh, obviously really hard to. God, the wind's just howling offshore. It's like the most difficult conditions to do an air unless you're Italo or Philippe. Or Gabby. Or Gabby. Or... Well, the list goes on, but you're right. For Mark Lackamere there, uh, you know, surely his power is the high percentage play here. But in saying that, Cole Hausman, he, he's, I think he's got it in equal measure. This is a, a fantastic matchup on paper. Let's hope we see a lot of wage roll through in this one. But just uh, to remind you all, we've got a, a huge opportunity for the Cole Hausman and also Cade Matson. They're on opposite sides of the draw. And they're trying to chase down Crosby, Cole, Pinto, uh, and Jet Schilling with a huge result to get themselves higher on the Challenger Series leaderboard. And if they they can, they're going to get themselves a, a bonus ticket into the Surf Ranch Pro. Yeah, well, this is uh, pretty fresh news coming out of uh, WSL HQ. So these guys wouldn't even really nah, know they... about it yet. But uh, and it's you know it's not front of mind. These guys are all they're thinking at the moment is. Challenger Series points. That's all we want. But uh, what an incentive. Huge. Yeah. What an incentive to have a crack at, uh, you know, the championship tour at the Wave Pool event out at Surf Ranch. Yeah, we've seen Cade get the opportunity in the past over there. And uh, that was in 2019. He had a 17th. Oh, right. but, but not Cole Hausman. Jet Schilling and Crosby also have, yep. have surfed a, an event there. So... You know, they, they know the wave, left and right, and uh, yeah, that, that, that experience is invaluable. Just over 20 minutes to go here, and Mark Lackamere getting himself in front with that last ride. Just a 3.53, but it's going to take next to nothing for Cole Hausman to get himself back in front. Just, just loved his run through this contest, Cole. You know, just a, so powerful, really consistent, and, and obviously really well-rounded, Rich. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed um, that heat yesterday where he did that massive frontside air. It was incredible because to date, to that point, he'd really just put his his power on, on show and his positioning and and placement in those bigger cuppy waves that we've experienced over the last few days. But, yeah, he brought that progression, and it was great. Just shows you that this guy's a real deal. He's got it all. He's got a wild haircut too, representing that uh, that crew from San Clemente, who are down here in force, cheering on Cole and, and Cade as they go after a big finish in this event. They've been that uh, you know, kind of sharing the big results around too. It was uh, Crosby and Jet and uh, Sawyer Limblad on, on fire up there at the first stop in the Challenger Series, but. Cole and Cade now getting a, a shot here. Yeah, nice to share it around. And uh, also uh, Bella Kenworthy still uh, alive in the semis of the women's event. She'd be coming up later on as we see Cole there just again showing just how much variation he's got. Did so well to just rip that turn out of nothing. Yeah, that was incredible. And you can see here the wind just picking up a couple more knots. That was uh, forecast, and I mean, it's not going to mess the conditions up, but might make it a, a, bit, a bit of a struggle to really gather some momentum. But yeah, Cole's turn, amazing. Didn't need a whole lot to get himself into the lead, and this should do it. He was only after a 2.36. He did so well to generate speed here for a big guy. Oh, watch this pump, pump, and all of a sudden that, that section stands up in front of him. It's nice and low. He's already swinging. Upper body, we already had that rotation started before he even 
uh, launched out of the lip there. So uh, the, the lower body just had to follow. 22 years of age and I think that breakthrough victory down there in the Dominican Republic for him with a 9.5 and a 7.1 in the final has just triggered a, a different mindset. Uh, really difficult when you're coming up with a obviously a, a big crew, even if they're, they've got your back and they're supportive of you. You know, if they're still in that spotlight and all the talks about them, you know, sometimes coming through can be difficult, Rich. And you kind of travelled in a posse and moved that way. Yeah, we did. Um, you know, all the, the Aussie crew, we all hung together. And, and again, we sort of shared around the love and, and a lot of the victories. But here we go. Mark Lackerman, a couple of big hits here. Wow. So keeps the board in the water this time. And I think it's going to work in his favour. We just saw Cole turn in a 6.67, so got himself into the lead. Mark now needs a 7.64 out of that last ride wow. to get himself back to that number one position with just on 17 minutes to go. Yeah, OK, so uh, there's a little bit of work for the judges to do here to decipher this um, last wave of Mark Lackamere. It was a good one on the backhand, playing to his strength. The final hit, it was solid, very solid. Yeah, back to that point quickly. It was, you know, you'd have your turn at a win and you'd just feel the energy and love from everyone and then you you gave it back when someone else was getting the win. That was a solid combination, especially that final turn. Yeah, so watch this. Squares up straight off the the first turn. There was there was no time in between and uh, Mark just gets straight on that heel side rail, gets back up into the lip. Beautiful, yep. fast transition, really smooth. Definitely his best wave. Not sure it gets him to the 7.64, but we're going to find out. Just under 16 minutes to go. We're going to take a Bonsoy brew break. We'll see if the freshman can get himself into the number one position again right after this. For me, coming home, spending time with the family and getting away and seeing Australia, for me, that's what it's all about. Staying at NRMA Parks and Resorts, it's always fun. The facilities are second to none, from basic camping into the cabins or glamping might be a thing. There's just so much to do. If we can go for a surf, we can go for a bike ride, we can even go for a skate. Perfect opportunity to disconnect from those things that hold you at home. That's the stuff that memories are made of. NRMA Parks and Resorts, not a better place to stay on the coast, especially when you're here on the northern beaches, set right back there on the Narrabeen Lake. Beautiful, that feeds down into North Narrabeen, helps create that incredible sandbar, but great campsites, Rich, you, you've been taken. Take it away, mate, come on. <laughs> Sorry. Well, they, they are, they're so well equipped. Uh, the NRMA Parks and Resorts, uh, the staff are super friendly and helpful. And But this one here, this is a special one down here at North Narrabeen, right on the uh, edge of the lagoon and the lake there. And you can you just access, uh, you know, paddle boarding, boating, fishing. Uh, kids love having a little jump off the off the bridge. They're awesome. Yeah, yeah, I always... Surf's over the sand dune. Always book a site down there when the in-laws are in town. It's unreal. 
Just under 13 minutes to go here as we uh, see we're waiting on numbers to come through. Cole Harshman has the lead. Mark Luckermeyer dropped a 6.53 to, to really narrow the, the requirement. Going into the, the final 12 and a half minutes here. Only needs a 6.25 to get into the lead. But uh, Cole Hausman just moving back into that takeoff zone at the moment. And he has a, a 6.1 from that last ride. So, you know, not a, a tall order here for Mark Lackamere to get himself in front. No, well, that's the difference. So uh, let's have a look here. This is uh, Cole Hausman, just a two-turn combination. Wow, he gets the third. Final little fourth hit just on the phone there, but you can see just the strength in this guy's legs. Yeah, these, this little San Clemente 2% thing that they've got going on is, you know, it kind of gets them all together. It's got that real good community feel to it. And, you know, when they're surfing, they're down at T Street uh, often, and, and they're surfing small junky waves. And I think running heat drills constantly and having little little uh, little mock events and it's got that they're small wave surfing just so dialed in uh, i mean they're, they're all capable of stringing together deep rail calves and, and flowing high quality maneuvers when there's world-class conditions but i think it's their small wave game at, at the moment that's really benefiting from from all those heat drills oh absolutely and it's so important in these smaller conditions that you do look energetic and, and enthused to surf these waves. Uh, you also need that sort of approach just to generate speed off the takeoff because the wave's really not, it's only providing so much power. You need to actually be able to generate that speed, use the board, use the fins, use all your, your body motion uh, to get speed because we know that speed's the key to everything. You know, you can, you can launch out of the lip better, you can engage the rail better, you can perform more powerful turns. You need to have that speed. Ten and a half minutes remaining here. His friends called him Bakehouse, but uh, you probably know him as Jackson Baker. He's through to the semi-finals, and he is down there with Stace. Thanks, Ron. Jacko. Mate, what a way to uh, get the day going. Yeah, stoked on that one. It's been kind of nice. I've whole contest I've probably been getting 10 or 11 points, so to finally get yeah, 14 and above is nice. And, yeah, nice to have a bit of a tussle with Freddie at the start. And, I don't know. When those heats happen like that, it's really good just to back yourself. And I'm, and I'm glad that I did. I held the inside. And I think that start just changed the whole start of the heat. And once I got that, I was like, get a backup and game on. Then block him for the rest of the heat. So I'm really happy with that performance. I've struggled to do that in the past. And by like, coming back from the CT and having to hassle guys like Philippe and John and that is, is on another level. So to be able to have that experience to do that and, yeah, perform there was, was really good. And equipment choice crucial in, in conditions like this. Two club wind at the moment. Yeah, I almost, I got an epoxy in the a string and epoxy channel lines, uh, exactly as the same as the PU I've been riding. And I waxed that up this morning, brand new, really frothing for that because there wasn't a lot of wind this morning. And then kind of right before my heat, I spoke with Brent Power from channel lines and we just said, let's stay on the PU. And yeah, I mean, the PU went fast enough. I'd hate to see how fast the epoxy would go, but I feel like that wind would probably, probably get under a bit more, but boards are feeling good. And yeah, two more heats, let's get it. A proud Nova Castrian. The nights were pretty average yesterday. What are you going to do to lift the spirits <laughs> of the town here this afternoon? Let's pop some champagne in the Sava and hold the trophy and get it back to the Prince and fire one up. So still got a few to go, but I mean, you got to have a plan and you've got to have a goal of why you come here and every event I enter, I want to win. And yeah, the closer I get to winning, the closer I get to get back on the championship tour where I feel like I belong. So let's get it. We'd love to see you there. Well done, Jacko. Let's drop that in. Oh, you're on fire, Stace. Good yeah. was he back? <laughs> the, uh, the pride of Newcastle, the new pride of Newcastle is on to the semi-finals here. A really important result for Jackson Baker. Underperformed on the Gold Coast. Needed to turn things around and he's done that here. You know, every single campaigner of the uh, the 80 in the mix here on the men's side. Just that their big goal is to, to leave the, these first two events. Hopefully with two keepers, but definitely with one. You want to save those throwaways for the back end of the year. You don't want to give them up at the start. It just adds so much more pressure to each performance when you're heading out in the, each of these heats. And Jackson Baker, it's been a, a really positive turnaround. A semi-final is a keeper result already. Anything better than that 
is huge in your chances of getting back to the CT. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I, there's, I'd say there's been a, a bit more uh, an air of intent around Jackson this week compared to the Goldie. It was, yeah. it was a bit too happy-go-lucky up there, perhaps. And uh, well, he's certainly got some magic in the mo at the moment. That's his vibe, though, isn't it? Yeah. That's, that's the way he gets around events. He's just one of those guys that's, you know, open to talk. He's got time for everyone. He's got a rude mustaka going at the moment. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. We keep both going, the, the roll and the, the mo. As we get down to the seven-minute mark here, Cole Hauschman looking to extend here, wants to get rid of a six. Break into the sevens and put the blowtorch right up. Mark Lackamere here. Yeah, it's a lead, but it's not a healthy lead. And uh, when you actually isolate their two highest scoring rides, there's really not too much in it at all. No. Nah. Mark Lackamere with, with two big hits can easily get this, uh, this score. Let's dive into the Harvey Norman heat recap and see what's gone down here. Again, Cole Hauschman flexing his repertoire, repertoire, Rich. Yeah, flexing all over this air rev. No grab, but gets it done nice and cleanly. And Mark Lacamere, the Frenchman, that was his best number. And you can see the final turn, it was big. Big and committed. And Cole, Oops. he got this uh, nice little number here. This is that backup, uh, backup number. But man, uh, man. yeah. I, in reflecting on it, I just I don't know. But... I know that uh, Cole Hauschman's got the lead, but I, I just saw more in his turns than what we saw from Mark Lacamere. I know he hit the, the critical sections, but there's a difference between hitting a section that, like, placing a, a turn correctly and driving through the moves. That's what I'm seeing from Cole at the moment, as we see Mark again with the two-turn combo. Is this a 6.25? Wow. Well, let's compare it directly against uh, his high mark, the 6.53. The last hit wasn't as big. The wave itself probably not as tall. The first turn was more directed down the line. You know, it was a, it was a nice, clean finishing manoeuvre. But for me, it, it it doesn't compare as highly as that 6.53. And I'm, I'm not seeing it being the number. I, I reckon it's probably a high five if I had to go out on the limb. Has it a guess? <laughs> yeah, we're, uh, we're waiting for this number to come through from the panel. You know, you, you've got to compare it. It was similar to his 6.53 in, in the manoeuvres that he chose, but just didn't feel like the wall is, was as tall and as big. And I think you're going to be pretty on point here, Rich. It was a, a 4.67, so a, a couple of points short of the requirement as we get the NRMA Parks and Re Resorts. Five-minute warning now. Cole Hauschman with priority on the outside. Nerve-wracking heat for, for Cole at the moment because he's, he's done some pretty good surfing, but Mark's r well within reach. He's got to be really careful what he does with priority in, in the does. final stages here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a nerve-wracking thing to have priority sometimes. It instantly pushes, puts a bit of pressure on you to, to make the right decision. Yeah, right. Thinking about these two, you know, Mark has achieved big results at the highest level couple of quarterfinal finishes from his five opportunities as a wild card in CT events. And he's overcome really tough opponents. You know, he's always got a great fighting chance, uh, but especially when it's chunky and thick on those French beaches, that's where he's absolutely minced the best surfers in the world. Felipe Toledo, I remember him giving him the, uh, the flick on a chunky day in solid conditions but overcome really overcome really tough rivals uh, on his way to those quarterfinal finishes i mentioned it the other day geordie smith julian wilson oh. kanoa igarashi michelle berez felipe wade carmichael he's a he's an animal i wonder if you'd list that on your resume i beat felipe i beat this guy i beat <laughs> yeah. <that> guy. <laughs> yeah i'm gonna give you the opportunity who are some of the people that you beat as a uh, ct i know you beat taj barrow in the final at trestles yeah, let's just focus on that for a minute, if you want. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't Kelly Slater, how'd you go again? Nah, never God, beat him. Never. Never once did I 
B. Kelly ever in the and I surfed against him multiple times. So. Yeah, maybe the hardest loss to Kelly was the one down at Manly oh, where I was down there that day. You had him. I had him. You and blew then, it. No, well I did. You threw really, it away. I did everything I could, and then he had priority. This little wave just popped up for him, and he did a couple, a couple of snaps, and then a little reverse on the inside oh. got the score. Overscored. Oh, so overscored. <laughs> 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 oh, no, it's uh. This is an amazing career, mate. The big win at Halle Eber was a favourite for me to earn your place on the CT. And, Kelly uh, yeah. was there for my hole-in-one, though. So that was oh, he was nice. too. He had a hole-in-one in France playing with Kelly. Yeah. Not bad. Got that over it. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, that's something we share in common, isn't it? a hole-in-one playing with Kelly as well. Thanks, mate. Thanks for bringing it up. Yep. Uh, two minutes to go here. Cole Hauschman at the moment has a 6.67 and a 6.1 and he has the lead but I'm guessing that he's sitting out there just absolutely freaking out at the moment internally he's on the uh, the cusp of a massive result he, he doesn't even know about the big news which we dropped at the start of this heat yeah and that is that the two highest place surfers from the North American region at the end of this second stop on the Challenger series are getting the call up to compete at the Surf Ranch Pro. It was just the, the number one from that region that was going to be taking that position. But with a, a back injury to Seth Moniz, he's pulled out of the event. It's now going to be the top two North American surfers on the Challenger Series that get that opportunity. And the top surfer on the, the women's side is going to get the shot to surf in, in the women's event there as well. All going down on Memorial Day weekend, and it's going to be huge. And uh, we also heard that a lucky ticket holder is going to get the opportunity to ride a, a couple of waves. No way. At the Surf Ranch too. Wow. A, couple, a couple of people are going to get that opportunity. Uh, that's special. That's like finding the uh, Willy Wonka golden ticket. Exactly. And I promise you it'll be the most nervous session that they have in their life. Here we go. Mark Lacamere fighting for the lead here. This wave doesn't have a whole lot of energy in it. Uh, and he looks he at his clock. There's 40 seconds to go. He knows that he hasn't done enough there to turn this heat. But to his credit, to his fighting spirit, he's, he's heading back out there to try and get it in well, the final stages of this heat. But wait for the cheers to go up here from the San Clemente crew. They're going to make plenty of noise for Cole Hauschman here in a moment. Maybe some waves rolling on in. If Mark's quick, he might just get a, another shot at it. Well, he's in a little bit further than Cole Hausman here. So, uh, well, he's going to take priority here, and I don't think there's going to be enough time for Mark Lacamere to get another way. But this is a little victory lap here for Cole wow. Hausman. And uh, what a result. I was expecting a little bit more, Kolohe. Make some noise. Cole Hausman is through to the semi-finals here. And now they start to really light up. What a result for the surfer from San Clemente. He is on his way to his best finish in a Challenger Series event and possibly the biggest result of his young career. Doing great surfing at the moment, overcoming a tough customer in Mark Lacamere there. And the Groms are frothing on this surfing. We've still got a, a couple more big quarterfinal clashes to come. As we see the numbers there, you can look forward to seeing Marco Mino. And also Kate Matson, San Clemente getting a shot at maybe a second semi-finalist. What? What? Oh, wow, <laughs> that's gnarly. But uh, well, deserving of getting through oh, that man. heat. He's been uh, on fire this whole event. One of the informed surfers, and the crowds, the grommets, they've turned up for the Sunday show here. The grommets are down there somewhere, probably. No doubt. He's been an absolute showman, and his run continues here. We're going to take a quick break. When we return, we're going to bring Kaipo Guerrero and Luke Kennedy for the call. Stay with us.
We are back at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy and men's semi-final number one is all set. Hi, I'm Kaipo. I'm the Harvey Norman hosted along with Luke Kennedy joining me calling you the quarterfinals for the men. We're going to set semi-final number two for the men. We just saw Cole Hauschman advance out of that quarterfinal number two. We got a new challenge out in the water right now in the way of Marco Mignot versus the young American Cade Matson. Marco Mignot representing France by way of Sayulita, Mexico. Clock is on and it's ticking down, Luke. Uh, big challenge right here. Yeah, Marco came out of the blocks fast this morning with some progression on the alley rights. Hopefully we see him uh, go to the air again. It will be exciting. Cade Matson, part of that 2% of crew that have been overperforming. Cole Hausman, obviously uh, one of the leading representatives of that group. He's got the 2% of haircut making it through to the semi-finals. Cade will want to back that up. He made it as far as the quarters here last year, Kaipo. He wants to go one better. Yeah. Quarters here last year where he got taken out by his good friend Jet Schilling. And uh, we're going to have a conversation about Cade and Jet after this wave is being surfed by Marco Mignot. Big float and a finish there. Quick closeout section, but some fast feet from Marco Mignot. This is Cade Matson right here. Young man from San Clemente, California, just 21 years old. Like you said, made the quarters last year in this event. Of course, the venue was Sydney. What's at stake this year in this event is not just valuable points on Challenger Series. We just got the word that North American uh, Challenger Series surfers, highest ranked first and second surfers, will get wild cards into stop number six on the championship tour. That's the Surf Ranch Pro presented by 805. So we'll be breaking down some of that numbers. But first, let's break down this first wave from Marco. Yeah, a lot of speed into the maneuver and just stomps it. You can see him in the slow-mo here. Watch the hands go out in front as he lands so that his body weight is clearly over the board. Wants to make sure that he rides out smoothly. You'll see the coaches talking the surfers through that one quite often. So just the one maneuver in the wave. Let's go with Cade. Snap to start. One more time up there. Float, no problem. Cade Madsen, solid on his feet. Big unit out of San Clemente, California. Right behind him, Marco Mignot throws the rotation and goes incomplete. So early advantage is going to go to Cade Madsen in this matchup. Meanwhile, you can see a paddle battle starting between the two surfers. Yeah, it's game on straight away here, Kaipo. Uh, a flurry of waves ridden in this early part of the heat. And right now, it's uh, what we like to call in Australia an Ironman battle. See who gets to as we fly by with our Sydney flight cam. And we have that priority judge up in the judges' tower who will award priority to the first to the takeoff, that being Cade Matz. And also, Marco Mignot did ride the last wave, so that also helped in the decision right there uh, for Madsen to get the pro priority, still waiting for his opening wave score number. You see Cade's wave in replay. Nice, crisp opening maneuver. Lip glide float to finish. Two turns in quick succession. No glitches or bumps in between. Solid score. Judges are still deliberating, but I think we can fairly confidently assume that Cade will get the better of the exchange. Yeah, 4.67. <clears throat> Clocks in for Cade Matson. So when we talk about that conversation on that wild card that's up for grabs for the two top rank Americans on the Challenger Series following this event, Cade is in the conversation. However, he's going to have to overtake Fellow <laughs> San Clemente surfers, a two percenter has got a cluster of great finishes. Uh, Crosby, Colapinto, and Jet Schilling. Jet Schilling with a third place finish over at the Boost Mobile Gold Coast Pro. And a 17th here has 7,985 points. Crosby, Colapinto, 25th here. Not as good, but also had the semifinal finish over there, stop number one. Cola Pinto, 7,785 points. So Cade Madsen, to take that wild card, needs better than a semifinal finish. So got to get through this heat and has to make it 
through the semifinals as well if he wants that bonus of the wild card at the dream wave over there in Lemoor. I wonder if Cade got the news. Cole Houseman obviously didn't because we made the announcement while he was out there. Someone may have whispered in Cade's ear, hey, there's an extra incentive here. You got a trip to the ranch. <laughs> Maybe. Keep the... Well, keep the pressure off the kid. We'll see. Here we go. Marco Mignot. Under priority. Finds a little corner. Swings it through that first turn. And an easy reverse to finish. A little bit extra on the in air gets to the lip one more time some fast feet some quick surfing by the 22 year old out of salulita as we wait for that score we got an update on what's going to happen today and i'm going to go to stace for that update thanks guys will what's the program yeah so uh we've made the decision to call on our semi-finals and our finals so it's finals day which is really exciting it, it wasn't an easy call to be honest the conditions are really fun when they get them. I spoke to Jacko after his heat and Bella after hers and they're really fun waves but it is a bit tricky but we've got so many question marks over tomorrow and the next day we've got sun and we've got waves in front of us and the surfers are pretty fired up to get a big result at stop two on the Challenger Series so let's do it. Well, let's roll. Thanks Kipes. All right yeah. Well the winners say it's, say it's good out there. That was a predictable answer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, good news, it's finals day, so we are going to run all the way through and crown some champs here on the sands of Narrabeen. <laughs> yeah, nothing like it. Well, it's Sunday in Australia, nothing like a, a surfing final on a Sunday afternoon. I can see uh, all the surf fans around Australia have now decided to put their feet up for the afternoon and stay tuned in. Yeah. Get back to work on Monday. No watching WSL on Monday. We've got no programming for you. <laughs> 20 minutes on the countdown here and Kate Madsen drops down to second place because the last score for Marco Mignot a 4.4 so chipping away at it got that 4.4 Marco did under the priority of Kate Madsen Madsen being pretty selective right now and why is he so this is a young quarterfinal here 22 year old Marco 21 year old Cade and that's a lot of the exciting stuff about the Challenger Series. Here we go, Marco, wave number three. Actually, it's wave number four for Marco. And he's scoring under priority right now. Gets the finish, and it was a lightning fast finish. Yeah, this one's a banger, Kuiper. I'm looking forward to seeing the replay. So much speed maintained throughout this wave. Marco has really been demonstrating the diversity of his repertoire. You see a lot of speed work early, throws so much spray with that first slash. And again, little gloss of the lip, wraps it back into the pocket. Now he's eyeing off this end section, hits the accelerator again, and a little bit of fin drift to finish. Solid. Yeah, and Marco employing the tactic, or the strategy, I would say, Luke, of just being busy out there. You know, he's not turning anything down. He's surfing under priority. That priority being freed up. Kate Batson, on the other hand, setting down the anchor outside. And sometimes that priority can turn into a heavy weight if you get too selective. Well, I think it, it, you know, it's really useful if there are clearly defined set waves. And if it is apparent that there are waves that are markedly better pushing through the lineup. But if that's not really clear, and you do anchor down for too long, then yeah, it becomes exactly that, an anchor. Yeah. Two percenters making a big splash here at Narrabee. We got Cade Madsen on the water, and we got Cole Hauschman up against the glass with Stace. Thanks, Kaipo. Cole, into the semis, you must be frothing. Yeah, I'm stoked. Best result yet. So, uh, uh, gonna keep it going, but try not to, you know, take the foot off the gas just yet. So what do you do now between the quarters and the semis? Um, yeah, they just called it on, so gonna get some food real quick and just kind of sit in the shade and reset, but uh, and just watch the rest of Cade's heat right now. So a tight battle between yourself, Crosby, Cade, and Jet for potentially a spot in the surf ranch. Does that play on your mind? Yeah, that's the word on the street is they're going off the highest ranking. So uh, yeah, we'll see what it comes down to. I think right now I need a final because the boys are good on the Gold Coast, but. I mean, any of us getting a shot at it, it's pretty sick. So just going to do my best and, uh, yeah, hopefully go for the final. A massive day here in Narrabeen coming up. Thanks, Cole. Thanks, All guys. right. Yeah, Cole Hauschman.
He did the math. The math's no mystery to him at all. During that interview, Marco got another wave. That's going to be number five for Marco Mignot. Last wave of 5.27, so slowly building upon his wave scores. Here's a replay. Again, generating a lot of speed down the line. Lateral on the first turn. A little more critical on the second. Tweaks the tail out into a foamier section. Just racking up the maneuvers as he rolls down the line and makes the effort to fade the bottom turn and get a little bit more vertical on that final maneuver. You see this one's more of a check turn. Deepens the bottom turn so he gets more critical with his slash. Love the little tail tweak onto that more marbled face, but it doesn't interrupt his flow at all. And just keeps rolling down the line at Alley Wrights. And again, an improvement on the score line for Marco. A 6.33 checks in. And now all of a sudden, Cade Madsen, who had the early adv advantage on the first exchange, needs a near seven point ride to turn this heat. Still sitting out there with priority. Yeah, Marco Mignon's really giving us uh, a lesson in how to surf a heat under priority, as you pointed out, Kaipo. He's staying busy, and now he's put the pressure back on Cade Matson. And that's mental weight for Cade Matson right now. Taking a look there, Marco says, hey, look it, I'm going to keep on doing this. Stringing down the line, throws it up there, a little revert. Tail throw and the kick out. So probably not uh, improving upon his scoreline, but this the strategy of the French surfer seems to be paying off right now. Ring, ring. We have a our Boost Mobile Stay Connected call. It's Brett Simpson. Thank you for joining us, Brett. Hi. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. Hey, uh, first of all, what do you think about this? I know you're from Huntington Beach, but is a 2% all the way make, made it to Huntington Beach yet, or is it just in San Clemente right now? <laughs> I, no, it's, it seems like it's pretty diverse. I think... Uh, I know I know Kolohe really well, so I think we, you know there's crews that can be a part of it. But um, it's 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 open. It's open to whoever whoever's kind of super psyched. Yeah, and I'm I'm psyched on the success. I mean, we've seen this before. We're just getting into it. We saw, well, now we got Cole Hauschman. He's in the semifinals. We're watching Cade Matson here. We saw Crosby and Jet go to the semifinals to stop one of the Challenger Series. It seems you know we talk about the Brazilian storm. It seems like there's a storm brewing in the USA. Yeah, no, it, it's it's been a long time coming. I think we were all we were all individuals for a while where we were kind of doing our own thing and wanted to do it our way. And it's been cool to see brother kind of bring bring the group group together. And I think it shows in the results. And obviously, we've seen with the Aussies, you know, many years ago, and even now now today. But also, you know, Brazil has a strong pull. And I think for us, it's it's so important to stay together, whether it's good or bad. You know, these results, you don't want to waver too much. And I think that's important to where you, you pull this encouragement from guys that are doing well. And, and you're seeing it here. You know, Crosby and Jet did great at the first event. And now you got Cade and Cole who had a bad result there, and, the, and they're carrying the momentum. So it's cool to see. Yeah, and it's really cool to see knowing that, you know, your, your friends and your supporters are not going to leave when they're eliminated because, you know, a lot of guys are flying solo for a while, you know. You get eliminated, all of a sudden you start losing your friends. Different story now. Yeah, it is. It, it, it's a tricky thing because you, you get bummed when you lose and you're like, man, I'm out of here. But then, and then again, it's like the, it, it's exactly this point where you support each other and you draw, you learn so much. I think that's the part, you know, I did it many times where I'd bail out early and I was like, why did I do that? And you learn from whether it's it's success or these mistakes that are made, it doesn't always have to be yourself, you know? It, it can be someone else where you learn a lot from. So I think that's the important part. And these guys are young, man. They had pretty much two years off with COVID. They're, he just, you know, Kay just turned 21. They're, they're still so young in this format. I don't think you're going to see a ton of teenagers qualifying anymore, just how you have to crawl up the ranks a little bit more. So, um, you know, they're learning a ton, and I think that's the most important part, and they're staying together, and, and they're, gonna, they're showing that success. Yeah, I love the insight, Brett. Uh, we want to keep you on the line, but we're going to take a Bonsoi brew break. We're going to get the froth on for a little bit. I'm going to we'll take be... a brew break. <laughs> Do you take a brew break too? We'll all take a <laughs> brew break, and we'll be back right. with more quarterfinals here.
I'm Kelly Slater. I committed my life to this, you know, all of this. There is so much pressure now, it's really do or die. He's not coming here to participate, he's coming here to win. Her career is at stake. You want to perform in the big stage? This is the biggest stage you can have. Oh my goodness. This is sport history. Make or break season two streaming now live on Apple TV Plus. Eight episode series chronicling the 2022 championship tour of the World Surf League and it opens up with a bang. Episode number one will feature Kelly Slater and his 56th championship tour victory. He did that at Pipeline. You want to check out check that out. Looks like we have a board change as we come back from our Bonzoi brew break. This is what happened. Yeah, Kate Matson racing down the line, throws the fins out, and straight away you can see the fingers rotating. Switch it over. Here's Marco Mignot again. So much sway on that opening turn. Another slash to back it up. Really nice crumbly section to finish with. So Cade on some new equipment. 3.43 for his second ride. Cade in second place now. Sitting under the priority of Marco Mignot. Mignot has been striking under priority over and over again. And while he's been doing those under priority strikes, he's been building upon his performance. He's been building upon his number. And he just put another brick in the foundation, a 6.83, add that to a 6.33. And now all of a sudden, the young man on the screen from San Clemente, Cade Matson, is in a pressure situation. He needs an 8.49, up, way up into the excellent range, Luke, is the need now for Cade Matson. Yeah, and we've seen this situation all morning. It's now getting down to sort of the eight and a half minute mark. Cade's got some decision making to do. Is he gonna try and strike with two waves? Or does he feel like he has the capacity to get it done in one? I'm going to ring up my friend Brett Simpson on our Boost Mobile Stay Connected call. Brett, you there? I'm here, guys. Oh, man. I'm ready. Okay. I, I want to hear for you as a coach, what's your advice for Cade right now, if he could hear you? Yeah, th this has been a tough situation because he started off pretty good. And then all of a sudden, like you guys said, Marco just kept rolling the dice and finding these little double ups that he kind of kept creating some scores surfing well and then it left Cade you know he kind of had to wait and sit for that wave and then he, he picked that one and it looked like he buckled his board which realistically the wave didn't look that great so yeah and then Marco gets probably he got the best wave of the heat and got priority so it's it's been rhythm uh, has kind of gone against him and I think you know at this stage with seven 740 or so he's going to have to He's going to have to wait. I think that hopefully there's a two-wave set. It looks like he's going to try to bait him right here. Who knows if there's a, a decent wave. But Cade's surfing's been on point. It's just, you know, when it's like this, it really comes down to who's got the most rhythm when those sets come. Yeah, yeah. how do you create rhythm? Is there a way to create rhythm? Uh, I mean, in these waves, I think, you know, if you feel like you got a good board and you can rip anything... I think that helps, but look, I mean, you take off on a wave like this, you you know, you have to do something big, and then you start to force things. I think Marco's waves actually were okay. I, you know, always hindsight in these things where you look back and go, Cade should have rode maybe that second six wave that he got. You 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 know, you put Cade surfing on there, he could even get more. I think so. It's it's yeah, you, you you sometimes the priority can bite you in the butt in a sense where you get a, you're waiting for something that's not there, and you know if you look at the waves, it looks like it's even gone more offshore, which when it's small kind of makes it even harder to surf. But um, it looks like pristine little conditions. It's just you got to be light on your feet. Sometimes priority is is like I said, it can you know in these type of waves can kind of bite you in the butt. Yeah, and I mean this. Uh this whole outlook here, Brett, looks like something that you'd find, you know, in, in one of your drills that you that you guys run in Southern California. It, it, look, it appears to me like that right now. Yeah. yeah, I mean, these waves are like this is it does look like a little SoCal morning for sure. I mean, uh, it's just 
they've been we've been training a lot these guys are they're they're prepped you know they're prepped and ready it's been cool to watch this event there's been so many different um conditions like the you know the slabby sandbar kind of that rabbit hill thing to the south which was amazing to watch i could visually or i could put my mind where it would be hard to surf a heat out there but you know watching it was sick there were some amazing highlights through the the last couple of days but you know it's uh I hope the wheels just don't fall off just yet. He's got five minutes and, you know, he can put, he's been putting up excellent rides. So hopefully he gets another chance or two. Yeah, here we go right now with Cade Matson. Let's see what he's got for us. Working down the line, wants something big, throws it up, puts it down. Uh, maybe just a confidence builder looking to to build upon a 3.43, just, just to get a bigger number. Is that how you do it, Brett? Yeah, I mean, look, he, he realistically, he needs something in the high five sixes to, to make it a little bit easier. I mean, an eight four isn't out of the books, but just the way the waves are, it looks like, I don't know if the tide's going out, but it's getting a bit quicker and crunchy. So it's going to take two massive maneuvers. I mean, Marco's had a, you know, I don't know. He's had a, just a good run. I think it's just freed up under priority. Sometimes that can work to your advantage. And he did surf those waves pretty well through spray and um, created some scores, which which is good surfing. He hasn't made any mistakes where now Cade's starting to kind of second guess himself with, you know, four minutes to go. He's kind of put definitely under the gun. So it's, it's tough. You, these these heats with, you know, man on man, um, they can kind of get away from you quick. Yeah. And but that was know, a nice turn right there. Yeah. He, he, he helped himself a little bit. I mean, Mentally, he helped himself. He still has the same requirement. He still needs that 8.49. He did improve a little bit on his scoreline. You can see the look up there by Cade and just trying to gather himself mentally. Uh, but, Brett, I'd like you to speak about, uh, from a coach's perspective, on just how you walk through a Challenger Series event because you start in four surfer heats and then you have to shift gears to these head-to-head -head heats, these man-on-man -man heats. Well, I think in this level, I mean, if you look, there was there was those four man heats are actually really exciting to watch. I think they're they're almost more fun to me just because there's so many more waves ridden. The the level, the uh, it's very tight. You know, everyone seems to get a really good look at a decent wave, and then it really comes down to that backup who can kind of create a score, maybe on more of a mediocre wave. You know, who can kind of up the ante where these heats become super strategic. The scores are a bit higher because, you know, the better waves are being ridden. So, you know, if your rhythm's a little off, like Cade's is here, you can find yourself, you know, chasing a, a bigger score easily because, you know, like Marco's been finding that rhythm and not, you know, realistically been on some better waves. So, yeah, I mean, you, I think the practice really comes down to uh, typically putting yourself when we do our little drills we do we start with like three or four man heats have a round where you kind of qualify for it and then you you go into man on man because that's kind of where the you know the the juice is worth the squeeze I mean you start to get man on man you're making points money and uh, that's where you want to be to get these results to get into the CT so you have to know how to surf a man on man heat it is a little more strategic and, and tricky in that sense but um, these guys all put themselves in those positions so I mean he knows Kane knew exactly what he had to do it just um, at this time it just that wave didn't come really realistically in that moment to kind of flick the switch on him so yeah. that's yeah. kind of how it pans out it looks like it's going to go that way Luke I mean now Marco Mignot he's got a big lead and he's got priority yeah, I feel like Cade's almost, uh, you know, he's hoping for a wave, but there's an air of conceding defeat out there in the water already. Uh, Brad, if you're still there, kind of really like to know how you, as a, as a big surfer, Cade Matson, Cole Hausman, both big guys, how do you turn that into an advantage in these small waves? Well, as you could, like, these guys are, they're big blokes, but they're, man, they're quick on their feet. And their timing, it really comes down to, like, that that uh, you know quickness in your feet, that that light quick twitch, and that's exactly what they have. And and we surf small waves all the time with them. And man, 
they're so explosive. They just can blow the back out of a wave and it, it looks a lot bigger than most others. So they definitely know how to use that to their advantage. And I think uh, it, it, it really, for them, it doesn't matter how small or big the waves are. They're pretty well-rounded. And uh, I like our crew right now. We have, you know, Cole, Jet, Crosby, uh, Cade, Taj. There's a, there's a handful of kids that are surfing so well that I think have a really good chance to, to get on tour and to do well. So, I mean, that's half the battle. Can, can you get there? But then once you get there, you're surfing equipped to do well on the tour as well. And, and the, it all takes it. There's all a learning curve there. But I think they 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 put in the work for it. Yeah. Well, he, yeah, this one's it's a done done deal. It's a done deal. Yeah. But the future yeah. does look bright for American surfing. And uh, you're one of the sure. keys. You're on the cogs in the machine, Brett Simpson. Thank you for spending Thanks, some time guys. with us. My Brett. pleasure. Enjoy the rest of the event. Thanks, Brett Simpson. And uh, so Marco Mignot on to the semifinals. Let's check how he got there with our Harvey Norman heat recap right here. Yeah, I'm curious to see how many ways we actually get speed, the defining element here, Kaipo. Nice power carve out of the top, tweaking the tail, making the most of every section all the way through, and then slightly more vertical on that finishing manoeuvre. Just adding 5% variety there, which is good. That's the opening turn. That's where all the points were on this wave, and this end section just sits up so nicely for him. And, of course, the Groms on the beach want some signatures. They're getting to know the name of Marco Mignot. He's into the semifinals. Who will he meet? We're going to find out. It's going to be a clash between friends when we return. Jacob Wilcox, Morgan Siblick battling for a spot in the semifinals. GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy is brought to you by BioGland, official vitamin partner of the WSL Australia. By NRMA Parks and Resorts, official accommodation partner of the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. By Bonsoy, official milk of the WSL Australia. And by Yeti, built for the wild. Quarterfinal number four. Featured here with Jacob Wilcox and Morgan Siblick looking for a spot in semi-final two at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. Two good friends actually drove here to the comp site day in and day out. And this is the opener here with Jacob Wilcox and a 2.5. Kind of little hustle there. Look left, led to the right though. Swings off the top. There's that whiplash file. Doesn't get the finish though, Kaipo. Morgan got the better of this exchange. This is a 3.43. So maybe some nerves creeping in there. Both surfers failing to get the completion on their final turns. There goes Morgs. Wave number two. Really working for it. And 
Just didn't show a lot of interest on the exit of that wave. Disappointed with the oncoming section. Yeah, we saw the two friends uh, sitting on the exercise bikes alongside one another earlier in the broadcast with uh, Stace Galbraith. That was a great little interview. I wonder if they had the, uh, the Strava app on where you could see who cycled the furthest and the fastest. <laughs> the race begins on the beach sometimes, doesn't it? Well, both can be proud about their uh, accomplishment making it into the quarterfinals, but semifinals is really, really a big jump in points uh, for our surfers. So semifinals is going to get you 6,085 points, and that is uh, a big difference from the 4,745 points you would get if you take a uh, equal fifth out of these quarterfinal matchups. Yeah, and you feel like Morgan Siblick really needs the result out a little bit more. Jacob Wilcox did do well on the Gold Coast. He did progress through the quarterfinal round. Here we go, Morgs. Couple of snaps there. And that's all he's going to get. He's currently in the lead over Jacob Wilcox. Jacob, happy to sit with priority and wait for a quality wave. Interesting for both of these surfers on the 2022 Challenger Series. Remember, on the Challenger Series, we take the top 10 men at the end of the year. Morgan Siblick, he finished number 12, two spots off. Jacob Wilcox, he finished 13, three spots off. Both of these surfers were so close to qualifying for this year's championship tour. And, um, you know, that must have been a heartbreak for both of these surfers. Oh, completely. I mean, I guess the key difference is that uh, Morgan has been there. He knows what it's like to be at that CT. He's lived the dream. Jacob has been chasing it for so long. Yeah. Almost, a, you know, a, a, I guess he came onto the scene in 2013 as kind of a giant killer. He yeah. beat Kelly Slater yeah. as a wild card. But the get square came a few years later for him. Yeah. In 2019, he was 10 seconds away from qualifying at the Halle Eva event. Kelly stood up on a wave, got the score, and Jacob didn't qualify at Halle Eva that year, so. Yeah, yeah, that's right. A lot was expected, right, from Jacob Wilcox. He's been getting wild cards since 2013. He's got wild cards at Bells. He's gotten wild cards over at Margaret's. He's won the trials at Margaret's and got his, himself into the main event. He's gotten wild cards over in Portugal as well. Um, so to your point, the guy who's been teetering on the edge of a championship tour career. Morgan Siblick, we know about his championship tour career. He came in, guns blazing on his rookie season, 2021, where Morgan Siblick finished fifth in the world, his first go around on the championship tour. Of course, the 2021 season was an abbreviated season, but a quarterfinal finish over here at Narrabeen in 2021 really helped his cause. Yeah, and, and some people will remember that that was the event where he beat John John Florence for the second time consecutively. So beat him up at Newcastle and then again here at Narrabeen, which is a huge confidence builder. And at this event, he was only marginally stopped by a, a rampaging Gabriel Medina who went on to win the event. Yeah, I mean, I think when we look back at his debut, Morgan said that his approach was a fresh approach of what I call, you know, expanded fundamentals. Fundamentals that are extreme. Nothing super flashy, but you can see in his surfing, he's always just so solid and rarely makes mistakes, always gets a finish that way. Yeah, it's a good point. It's sort of th those really good fundamentals with somehow he just found a way to add five to 10% extra to all of those fundamental turns. And that was the key. And there, what, there, there weren't as many surfers on tour at the time doing that kind of surfing. Right. So he kind of, he sort of shifted the conversation a little bit back in that direction. I like that. Here we go, the replay for Morris. Yeah, nice float to open up with. Drifts it up into the foam. Knows he needs one more section, chases it down as it doubles up. And there it is, that strong, polished finish. So waiting for that number. He does have the early lead on Jacob Wilcox. However, no surfer has broken the four-point range yet. So it's up for grabs for anyone. 3.23. Morgan Siblick kind of taking a page out of the strategy that we saw Marco Mignot employ of just staying busy under your competitor's priority. Well, if Morgan was paying attention to uh, the heat before, then 
you would have to think it was a wise decision to take a page out of Marco's book if you're under priority. That was like a perfect demonstration of how the surfer heat under priority by Marco. Here we go. Wilcox, good looking wave here. Throws a dart up on the board and puts it back down. One big dynamic backhand re-entry. Morgan Siblick this time, he's gonna be looking left. Nice start there. And gets two turns on a reeling left. Yeah, really crisp surfing from Morgan Siblick. I love the turn from Jacob Wilcox as well. Key element to his surfing is the speed through the maneuver. We've talked about it before. There's a real kind of whip effect to his turn. So quick out of the lip. Gets great rotation through the hips. Board's nice and vertical. Gets the combination of vertical board and tail drift. Morgan really crisp. Two turns, quick succession. Bang, bang. It's going to be interesting to see where these scores sit, whether the one turn of Jacob is deemed to be as good or better than Morgan's two quick backside snaps. Yeah, a little bit bigger wave for Wilcox, but just one maneuver. And look at Morgan Siblick staying busy again, finds a right this time. Slash off the top. Carve through this middle section. Looking for an oncoming closer. Little snap there, that's all he's going to get. So judges always two scores for Morgan Siblick. Meanwhile, the last wave score for Jacob Wilcox dropped at a 4.27. Up and out for Wilcox. He wants to keep his priority out in the lineup. There we go. As we see the lineup there. It's getting shallow, Kaipo. You can see that low tide draining out. Good conversation there, Luca. It's 1.21 local time. We have a low tide at 2.46. So we have over an hour of this tide continuing to drain off the sandbank. What do we expect? Oh, it's going to be interesting to see. I don't know. It's, it's going to get more zippery. It feels like it's sucking a little bit of the juice out of the swell right now. I feel like the big improvement may come just on the other side of that dead low tide. So we got the news. We're running all the way through to the final today. So we will be running heats in the water while that tide changes, while we bottom out, and then we'll have a new incoming tide before the men's and women's finals. So that's it. You can see it back uh, on the bottom of your screen with the Feel News Sydney update. Men's and women's semifinals coming up, and then our finals to follow. Yeah, it's probably going to get uh, a little quicker and a little more zippery across that bank as we get down to the bottom of that tide. I was a talking where we look at semifinal number one for the women as we shift gears after this heat. Semifinal number one for the women, Sally Fitzgibbons, the 30-year-old out of Jeroa, the veteran with 14 CT seasons, will be up against a young 16-year-old, Bella Kenworthy. That's going to be semifinal number one in the women's. Yeah, I mean, that's a, a, an incredible matchup when you look at the distinction between the two surfers in terms of where they are. Uh, in, in terms of the stages of their career. Sally, as you point out, so much experience. But in my opinion, possibly doing some of the best serving of her career. Yeah, I mean, it re-energized Sally Fitz after being relinquished by that mid-season cut after Margaret River. Oh, we got some numbers in right now. 5.17 and a 4.37 for Morgan Siblick. So Siblick continuing surfing underneath that priority and scoring some numbers. Sydney Flight Cam showing us Jacob Wilcox taking off right now. Get down to sea level on this view. Wilcox, rapid fire on the backhand. Nice finish. 5.27 is what Wilcox needs to turn the heat. Here comes Morgan Siblick. Yeah, they're just trading blows now, Kaipo. It's wave for wave. Obviously, it's not as apparent which wave is going to be super high scoring, so we're seeing the wave count kick up a little bit. Yep. Well, winner of this quarterfinal is going to face Marco Mignot. Let's hear from Marco. <laughs> Thanks, Kaipo. Marco, you were fighting in the regional series to get onto the challenges, and now you find yourself in a semi-final here at North Narrabeen. You must be pumped. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really blessed. Uh, you know, like, I started the uh, snapper pretty bad result coming into this contest i really wanted to do a keeper at least so yeah i'm stoked i may i'm now i'm in the semis and uh like you said uh, i was fighting in the regionals and now uh 
I'm in the semis and I'm really blessed uh, in, to be in this position right now. A lot of equipment online about your surfboard looking super fast under your feet. What are you riding? I'm riding a Monster 10 JS. Shout out to uh, Jason. Thank you so much for this board. It's feeling really good. <laughs> I heard he shapes his best balls between 3 and 6 a.m. in the morning. Did you know that? <laughs> keep it up. Keep it up. If that's the magic, keep it up. <laughs> what do you do between now and your semi-final heat? I mean, uh, try to rest, drink some water and uh, reset. Best of luck in that heat. Well done, Marco. Thank you. Yeah, young man making a name for himself. Marco Mignot, 22 years old, out of Salida, Mexico, representing France. He'll be in semifinal number two, either against Jacob Wilcox or Morgan Sublik. Here's a replay, Jacob Wilcox. This was a 7.67. Yeah, first turn really clean and vertical. Backs it up with a good second, and then a really strong finish. When Jacob gets into a rhythm with his surfing, it's just like a good tradesman hammering in nails. It's just bang, bang, bang. Well, Wilcox retook the lead off of Morgan Siblick. Jacob taking a look at that one. Jacob not going, so we're going to take a Bonzoi brew break. We'll be back and find out who's going to meet Marco Mignot in semifinal number two. Isn't it beautiful? Thank you to the Northern Beaches City Council, a major partner of the GWM Sydney Surf Pro, presented by Bonzo. Sydney's Northern Beaches right here. Stunning stretch of coast, 30 kilometers, stretching from Manly all the way past Narrabeen to Palm Beach. It boasts more than 20 beaches. Each of these beaches with their own personality. It is a delicious slice of the world, and we are enjoying it today finals day here at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoi while we return to action with Jacob Wilcox in the lead over Morgan Siblick. Wilcox with a monster number of a 7.67 to take that lead. Morgan Siblick sitting under Wilcox priority and needing a 6.78 Luke. Yeah Jacob Wilcox just stepped it up a notch. Morgan Siblick having a little look there doesn't like we saw a lot of similar sort of mid-range scores exchanged and then Jacob just found a slightly bigger wave got into a groove and just put together three seamless backside snaps yeah the the strength of, of the backhand surfing of Jacob Wilcox is always impressive but you made a point Luke and when analyzing Jacob surfing in that he gains speed through his turn he accelerates through his turns he accentuates his turns yeah, and, you know, obviously in the criteria, the term speed is there. But when they're talking about speed, they're not just talking about generating speed down the line or how fast you're traveling down the line. 
It also refers to speed through the maneuver. And when you, when that happens, it's you know it grabs your eye. Okay, it looks great. We saw it earlier on with Aaron Brooks in the women's. There's something about that speed through the maneuver that wants you wants you want to reward it as a judge. Yeah, I mean. Jacob Wilcox, he was flying down the line at Snapper at the Superbank at stop number one of the Challenger Series, surfed his way into a quarterfinal finish with, like you said, super speedy surfing that was so easy to watch as well. So impressive on just the explosion that he has out of his maneuvers, but also the body mechanics in which it, he's not flailing. There's no wasted motion. It's, it really is a nice dance that Jacob Wilcox puts on. Yeah, he's doing it with great form. There's no chinks in between, and it's very easy on the eye. Uh, it's something he's worked hard on. Obviously grew up on the West Coast, surfing uh, predominantly a lot of left-hand barrels. He loves a left-hand barrel. And you'd have to think he would thrive on the CT if he did get there at Waves Like, oh, Get him to Pipeline, get yeah. him to Tahiti, right? Yeah. He's going to love those sort of waves. But he realized that uh, his backhand was maybe a little bit of a weakness, moved up to the Gold Coast to really refine his backside surfing. And you can see how much that's paid dividends for him. Yeah. And move to the Gold Coast. He could be a little closer to his shaper, Darren Hanley. And looks like Darren and Jacob have put together uh, a really, really good-looking equipment that works well for him. Yeah, they have. And uh, looks really comfortable on his boards. I love the Darren Hanley-JS rivalry, I have to say. It's been around for a long time. <laughs> and we saw uh, Marco Mignon paying tribute to JS in the post-heat interview before. So, you know... I mean, it, it doesn't apply as much on the Challenger Series at the moment, but we obviously do have the Shaper ranking on the CT, and all those Shapers, are they're watching these surfers as well, thinking, I want another one of my surfers representing me on that championship tour so I can win that Shapers Challenge. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of competitive Shapers, I'm going to tell you right now. You know, John Paisel, he likes to see his guys win. Completely. And, and women win, you know. Yeah. Same for Matt Biolis. Yep. You know, Darren Hanley takes a lot of pride in his team as well. Yep. I feel like it's opened up a little bit more this year. There was so much of a push for the Sharp Eye team last year. Yeah. And, uh, Morgan yep. Siblick is someone who's championed the Sharp Eyes. Yeah, Morgan Siblick on those shapes by Mark Marcio Zuvi. Sharp Eye, who's... Marcio's quietly and efficiently taken <laughs> the surfboard world by storm. Uh, you know, with uh, the number of success that has been happening on those sharp eyes. Here's a sharp eye in action. Morgan Siblick off the bottom and catches a rail there. So that's not going to factor into anything. Jacob Wilcox on the move here. Here goes Wilcox scratching into this one. Got a long ways to make up. Floats to that section. Another floater on the backhand. Stab there goes down, so likely not a change in the situation out in the water. So I'm going to go to the beach and see where Stace is out and about. We're out and about on this lovely afternoon, Kaipo. I got uh, runner-up in the quarterfinals there, Cade Matson. Cade, a strong result, but you always want to go one more. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's a good result, good start to the year, and I'm uh, definitely stoked with that. But obviously, you know, coming like this far, it's it sucks losing. But I'm definitely proud of the way I surfed, and uh, yeah, looking forward to the rest of the year. What does the rest of the year look like for you? The next stop in Bolito, obviously a beautiful part of the world. Do, do you go there early or, or just fly in with a, a few days warm up? Yeah, I think I'm going to go straight to Indo from here and then go home for a couple weeks, get uh, start training again, and then, uh, yeah, probably go there like eight days early maybe. And, uh, yeah, get ready for that. Well done here, and we'll look forward to watching you in South Africa. Thanks, Cade. Thank you. All right. Not a bad itinerary for Cade Matson. Yeah, it sounds pretty good straight off the window. He's another guy, he is a really big guy, he's got that big square jaw, kind of reminds me of like a Ken Bradshaw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's got more like a lead role in an action hero movie. Yeah, he's okay. got that look about him. <laughs> Wilcox, our heat leader, finds his little double up section on the inside and negotiates that well, looking to improve upon a 4.27 to strengthen his lead over Morgan Siblick. Siblick holding priority right now and is going to stay put and wait for a good wave. Yeah, Morgan either, he either needs a good wave or he's going to have to really over-surf one of those smaller waves. That's, that's the scenario if he wants the 6.78. He's not the sort of surfer that 
you expect to go to the progression as a point of difference. He, he has it there, yeah. but doesn't often use it because it's not really his strength. Yeah, we, we heard uh, Stace talking about what's next for Cade Matson, and the next stop is in Bolito at the Bolito Pro presented by O'Neill. We're taking a look at the full Challenger Series schedule. Luke, what stands out to you? Uh, look, I can't take my... I'm going to go right to the end. Sakurima Pro in Brazil. I reckon that's going to be such an exciting event to watch. I feel like they're getting ready for that one already. It's going to be huge. Yeah, that will be uh, where we're going to do the final qualification for our Challenger Series surfers. We'll have the list of five women, ten men that will be joining the 2024 Championship Tour. That's going to happen in Sakurima starting the 14th of October. All the action going down in Itauna Beach there in Sakurema. Sakurema also stop number eight on the championship tour. So we're going to be in Sacktown twice this year with the World Surf League. I haven't been to Sacktown. I haven't been to Sakurema or Brazil, but uh, I'm sure it's a, a lot of fun, Kaipo. I love it. I'm coming back, Brazil. Get ready. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a good time. It's, it's a, actually some of the most... It's a cliche people use, but it's true. Some of the most passionate surf fans in the entire world. Families, groups pack themselves into cars and drive for a day to get to, from all over Brazil, to, to just descend upon this little sleepy surf town of Sacarema where occupancy is, goes up exponentially. It is a, a sight to be seen. And the waves actually are really good. There's a lot of swell there. Yeah, I feel like there's going to be a lot of good energy at that event. Morgan Siblick on the comeback here. Nice start. Some variety in turns, but the wave just is uh, not up to his liking. He looks a little disillusioned as he kicks out. So you can see the ruffled surface on that water there, Kaipo. Harvey Norman recap. Jacob Wilcox made it happen. So vertical and crisp in that turn. Only one maneuver. A couple little backside bangers here for Morgan Sibley. Consecutive turns, very similar. Then things start to rev up a little bit for Jacob. Vertical and crisp. And again, similar maneuver. Lots of spray as well. Maintains the speed down the line. Three back to back. Seamless turns without any glitches in between. That's right. That was the 767 that turned the heat. And Jacob Wilcox still up on top. Talking again about heat control. Jacob Wilcox with that control of the heat. He has the lead and he has priority. Just needs to, the clock to continue to tick down. I'm sure he's happy to sit through this one. Three minutes, 30 seconds on the countdown. Yep, ideal situation for Jacob here. It's gonna be interesting to see how much distance there is between the two surfers in this last three and a half minutes. We've seen some really cagey ends to heats over the last couple of days can see in the foreground Bella Kenworthy as well as Sally Fitzgibbons making their way out into the lineup at North Narrabeen. Sally and Bella will be semi-final number one before the women. Yeah, what a moment for Bella Kenworthy. 16 years old into the semi-finals. Morgan. Really needs to get going on this wave. The wave just doesn't have a 6.78 in it. Jacob Wilcox started surfing and then realized, hey, I don't want to give up priority. Kicks no. out early and wisely to control the final two and a half minutes. Yeah, so the equation for Jacob is unless he sees a number better than a 4.27 on a wave, there's no point in going. Been a pretty busy heat. 12 waves ridden by Morgan Siblick. 10 waves ridden by Jacob Wilcox. And the advantage is really going to go to Jacob now with the two big results coming out of the Australian Lake if he manages to hang on yeah, for the uh, remainder of this heat. Yeah, really, I mean, really good standing. He's, he's already duplicated his performance at snapper, but he's likely to make it into the semifinals now. And uh, in a good position to claim the number one ranking on the Challenger Series. That is true. We saw... Um, e. Mike Kalani DeVault eliminated earlier, as well as, you know, Sammy Pupo a, went out a, quite a early. real shocker for Sammy Pupo. Yeah. Just got a little complacent, perhaps, I think. And, and, and when you frame six events, 
top four results. So basically, if you do all six events, you get two throwaways. Both Sammy and Emai, one and two, already have their two throwaways. Yeah. Already have you know two throwaway results, right? Jacob Wilcox, he's got two keepers already. Yeah. And that's good. I mean, when we really start filing down the math further down the road in this Challenger series, that's going to be make all the difference. Yeah, it's going to be to see it's one less, uh, one more throw away. Yeah. So one less counting result this year. So there's a bit of an adjustment. Okay, well, now it's 50 seconds, and this should, should be uh, easy decision time for Jacob Wilcox, strategy-wise. Sees that that wave does not have the scoring potential. Morgan wants to prove him wrong. <laughs> He'll do everything he can to try. <laughs> you can just see the frustration right there. Jacob's almost grimacing. He's got to sort of put it, one of his good friends to the torch here. Never a nice thing to do, but we've talked about it before. If you want to make it onto the championship tour, you're either going to have to beat your friends or beat your heroes. Or both, most likely. Yeah, well... Here we go, Morgan Siblick's conceding. He's gonna take an equal fifth out of Sydney. Jacob Wilcox, don't hurt the board, don't hurt the body, Jacob, because you're heading into the semifinals. Horn makes it official. And the local crew applaud some friendly fire. They knew they were gonna lose a friend in this friendly matchup, but they're also applauding Jacob Wilcox, who has surfed his way into the semifinals, there's the numbers, and that 7.67 really standing out for Jacob Wilcox. That's where he turned the heat, turned the corner to the semifinals. Take yeah. a look at our brackets, our Bailey ladder brackets here, as things are getting closer and closer to the end. Semifinal number one, Jake Jackson Baker, Cole Hauschman, Marco Mignot will be joined by Jacob Wilcox, who's coming fresh out of the water. That's going to happen in semi-final number two. And speaking of semi-finals, women's semi-finals in the water when we return to the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. Welcome back to the show. It's time to get started here with the semi-finals for the women. And that first matchup, it is in a, a great one. Sally Fitzgibbons going up against the Super Grom. Bella Kenworthy, can't wait to watch it go down. Ronnie Blakey here on the Harvey Norman host set with Laura Anniver and Jess Grimwood. How do we see this heat going? It's going to be a, a great clash, a veteran up against the Grom. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just a, a fantastic narrative. It's like a perfect little look back into that history between, you know, us and the Americans or, the, you know, the Aussies versus Americans. I think it's going to be a really good one. Yeah, it's going to be uh, uh, an interesting draw. And I, I think with just the conditions that are on offer, as we take a look at the Bailey Ladders bracket, Laura, you know, maybe Bella Kenworthy's chances have improved in this kind of surf. For sure. I mean, whoever is on that 
gem of a wave in this heat is going to be able to drop a big score. And Bella's coming off of one of the highest scores out of that last quarterfinal round, 8.6 for a two-turn combo. So she'll be feeling confident going up against the veteran Sally Fitzgibbons. But what Sal has in her pocket is that ability to turn a, you know, not so good wave into something really, really special. She can generate so much speed and uh, really pull, uh, you know, pull her tail around. So. Yeah, excited to see this one unfold. It's going to be fun to watch in that second semi-final. We're going to see India Robinson going up against Isabella Nichols. So, you know, two of the surfers that are at that top end of the Challenger Series rankings, really looking to consolidate that position at the moment. Sally Fitzgibbons into her second semi-final on the Challenger Series this year and has been uh, looking incredibly sharp and, and probably had one of the, the best waves she's had in competition in a, a long, long time here in, at Narrabeen. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of like that Super Mario mode, you know, on the video games and you just get that special range. I feel like Sally's starting to hit that for her surfing and you can see it in that, in those big full tilt wraps that she's been doing all the way to this path into the semifinals here. Yeah, the, the conditions are, are going to pose a, an additional challenge to the, the competitors. It, yeah, well, you can see that texture on the face now. We have already gone past high tide, and now we're, the tide is running out. So that's going to mean that this rip is going to start in the alley right. So get ready to use your little arms, ladies. It's going to be a, a bit of a paddle. It's not too bad at the mo moment, but, um, yeah, it always sort of switches on at low tide, that rip. Bella Kenworthy just uh, blew our minds in uh, her heat earlier today with Macy Callahan just... You know, really showed that she's increasing the size of her moves. Really aggressive when, when the wave stood up. She uh, she was there to deliver a, you know, a sizey blow to, to get the big numbers she needed. Yeah, she surfs so smart and just in control and years beyond her age. I mean, 16 and up against, uh, you know, these world tour surfers. And, yeah, she made the most of every opportunity she had. And, yeah. What a, what a moment for her to be in this semi-final. Huge, huge result. How many points is that? Yeah, well, this is, you know, Sally's 32 years of age now. Um, so more than half the age of Bella Kenworthy. And no doubt Bella would have watched Sally chasing down 12 CT victories, some inspiring performances from Sal, overcoming injuries to win some of her best uh, events. And uh, yeah, now, now that inspired Gromit is ready to challenge her for a place in the final here. Yeah, I, I love the energy that she brings, like you two were saying. Like she's just that full Grom still. I saw her on the beach with her mum, literally at the end of that last men's quarterfinal, and it just looked like, to me, she was getting ready for like a pro junior. There was just no kind of... Um, the pressure didn't look evident to me, and she just looked comfortable in comp mode, and, and that's what it's going to take to take down someone like Sally, I think. Yeah, it literally feels like yesterday, um, you know, all those events that we had at Lowers in the World Tour uh, before the finals back is back on there now. Uh, Bella Kenworthy would be down there as a little five-year-old and just with her dad, Jason, who was always shooting the events and, and then came along all of her brothers and sisters and, uh, yeah, they've got an awesome little surf family and they just live and breathe it, honestly. It's really cool. So I'm not wasting any time here. Sees an opportunity to lay into a section, swings the tail around. We'll probably get the jump on Bella with the opening exchange, but they're going to be low numbers. 23 minutes to go. And uh, we know that the surfers, you know, they have six events to chase down big results. And Sally's already banked one good one. She's going to bank another good one here. As we have a look at the 2023 Challenger Series breakdown here, five women will uh, make the jump and graduate to the championship tour at the end of the season. 48 surfers in each draw for the women. And that's a, a collection of relegated CT surfers who didn't survive the cut. Top performers on the Challenger Series from last year. Regional qualifiers, which is how Bella Kenworthy earned her place in the draw. And then wildcards going to our two world junior champions, Jarvis Earl and Francisca Vaselko. But, uh, yeah, I, I said it this morning, that each region pretty well represented. It wasn't a great event for the surfers from the South American region, in particular the Brazilians, uh, but they did have a, a solid run and a winner up there at, on the Gold Coast, obviously. So a bit of a fight back here, especially from the Australians, as Sally Fitzgibbons 
in replay. So this wave, just uh, while we were explaining how the Challenger Series works, and it was a pretty decent one. Had a 3-1-7 for the little tail slide earlier, but that should be an OK score. Yeah, it looked like Sally found that halfway out, so really smart to find and search for waves under priority. You can see when that, that uh, you know, the, the waves come in on the bank there where that sand is and runs along. You can get those uh, more sucky, you know, standing up sections. So Sally just finding a little gem there and getting rewarded, 5-8-3. That texture looks really difficult, especially looking at, at that angle from the drone view. A lot of steps in the wave, a lot of ribs to deal with. Bella Kenworthy, though, does incredibly well to let a quality turn go. 5.83 from Fitzgibbons on that second ride. And the Grom is going to answer back here and keep herself on, on pace. Yeah, I like the response from Bella. She looks just really alive, like, like we were just speaking about. There's no evidence of the pressure mounting on her shoulders, but Sally's already posted that 583, so you can tell she's clicking into the conditions and it's changing a lot. Yeah, this is a tricky wave here. Had a lot of sand in it, just the one turn for Bella, but uh, doubling up into that inside section, she's got a lot of pop in her surfing, and uh, I've said it in, in her last heat, but she's so good at that. She's always been going above the lips, and she was just a... Uh, like she was seven, eight, nine, just started popping up there in the ladybirds and, and doing epic airs in the wave pools. She's one of those surfers, isn't she, from that uh, start of the clip of the Katie Simmers film. Yeah. And they have that big air off in Indo, and, and it's so sick, and they just go air for air and, and back to back. Yeah, they, they're in that little that little uh, group of girls. It's Sierra Kerr, Bella, Katie Simmers, Molly, Erin. Super progressive and... No, I think for them, they kind of got away from just the, the, the pro junior winning formula yeah. of staying on your feet and doing multiple manoeuvres on a wave and started falling off to, to their advantage. You know, it, it was something that I think we saw some of the, the Brazilian world champions do a lot when they first came on the scene. They weren't really consistent, uh, Italo especially, but they were always trying big moves to the point that they got so comfortable in the jersey doing that that it just it became just their approach. Their strategy was to just go all out. And, and this next wave of junior talent are going to have a real edge in that department. I, I don't think there's enough energy in these waves right now for, for anyone to launch a big air or in this wind keep your board under your feet so they probably will keep their boards in the water but Bella's got it for sure and it's something that Sally has had to work really hard at because once you're in that sort of consistent mindset of you know not wasting opportunities it's it's hard to flick it and, and turn yourself into an aerialist. For sure and you know Sally has uh, put so much time and energy into just lifting her surfing up and uh, getting above the lip and I know she'll go out there for some sessions and literally every wave just try to either do you know an air reverse or just going over and over again heading down to the wave pools and that's where these younger generation girls got so accustomed with with doing these these big airs and uh, just doing them with the rep of the same exact wave the same exact sex section yeah looking forward to uh, seeing what unfolds here Bella Kenworthy puts up a 3.4 can get a 5.61 and put herself into the lead here with just over 18 minutes to go. Let's check in with another one of our semi-finalists with Stace. It's Jacob Wilcox. Thanks, Ron. Jacob, what an amazingly consistent year or start to the year you're having. Uh, yeah, it's a fun start to the year. Um, that turned into Manly Beach out there then. <laughs> it got pretty hard to surf and that wind. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to be a grindy next couple of heats, I reckon. You moved to the Goldie a couple of years ago. You're well prepared for that. Yeah, yeah, that's how I moved over there to get better in this stuff. And I feel like it's definitely paying off. But, yeah, just keep nice and calm and get some food into me and get ready for the next one. Well, uh, particularly at this event, you've had to surf a variety of conditions and whoever the champion is, they'll be deserving. You feel like you can be that champion? Yeah, I feel pretty good at the moment, though. feel nice and calm. I feel like there's... I know how to grovel, so I feel like that'll come in handy. Um, we'll just wait and see what the next one brings. But just attack it with a bit of... Uh, a bit of happiness, a bit of effort, and um, hopefully it'll get the job done. Put the head down, see how you go. Thanks, Jacob. <laughs> Good on you, Stace. Yeah, Jacob Wilcox, he is looking really confident. In bigger stuff, he's looked sharp. 
in the smaller conditions, he's put it together beautifully as well. As we see Bella Kenworthy up again. Strong first turn. Wants the finish on this one. Whips it back, drawing through the carve and working this wave over. Just trying to add any extra she can here. It doesn't really connect through to an oncoming section. Needed a 5.61 to get herself into the lead. Yeah, that wave looked really nice when she took off, but it just sort of didn't really hit the bank and uh, fizzled out, unfortunately, for Bella. But love the speed she's carrying through her turns. Looks like that board is pretty awesome at floating over sections. But, yeah, nice first turn here. And then I think just went a bit too far away from this uh, power source. She sliced back, back here and then uh, just, unfortunately, nothing on the uh, end section for her. Still, uh, it's impressive. Small wave surfing. And you can tell, Jess, just how much she digs in on, on those first turns. Always moves plenty of water. Yeah, well, you've got to have it in, in your whole repertoire, don't you? If you want to be on the championship tour, you have to come through all the QEs and you have to grind and you have to grovel and then you have to be able to switch it on to, like, that finesse of the CT. But I feel like that turn from Bella 2, we kind of just saw, like, a little hint at it, was that that laying into that rail on her forehand. I feel like that's really been developing for her over the last few months. I think, like you guys are saying, she spent so much time um, in the air and progressive and, and maybe falling off. And I feel like this, like, Tyler-esque lay full tilt into the rail is going to come into play at some point very closely in her, in her career. Most definitely. 15 and a half minutes remaining here, and our competitors just caught out a position by one of uh, the biggest set waves in the last little while that, that wind strong. But there's still plenty of time for them to lock in some big numbers here. We're going to take a Bonsoi brew break. The upcoming Surf Ranch Pro presented by 805 Beer is offering you a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Do not miss it. At the end of competition, two lucky winners from the general admission and one from the VIP will be selected at random to surf at the Surf Ranch. You'll get those waves. Winners will get a left and a right all to themselves. You've got to be on site Sunday, May 28th to win the prize. The event runs from the 27th to the 28th. Buy tickets now at surfranchpro.com. And it is a, a buzz, I can tell you, from first-hand experience. It's a nerve-wracking ride, but really unique, something special, and, uh, yeah, you'll love it, I guarantee. Just over 12 minutes remaining here in semi-final number one, and Sally Fitzgibbons still just hanging on to the lead here. We saw Bella Kenworthy before the break get a wave. It's her best, 3.93, didn't get her into the lead. Only needs a 5.08 at this stage. 
to jump up into that first position. See how she fares. But Sally Fitzgibbons, you can tell with that position of priority, knows exactly where she wants to be situated so she can really hinder, I guess, the, the momentum of Bella if a good set ways rolls in. For sure, it's so important to be so, like aware of where you are in these alley rides. Looks like Bella might be looking at a left, though. Fortunately, you can see those white caps. They've just, uh, the wind is well and truly kicked up at the moment. So just another challenge to add for these ladies out here. But uh, they're going to make the most of it. Yeah, like I said before, I, I, you know, with full respect to Bella and just how well she surfs, you know, Sal still holds a, a performance edge just with how refined her surfing is and the power that she's got. And when you get conditions like this, it does sort of level the, the playing field because finding space, getting opportunities and obviously doing some great surfing as well just gives you a better shot at overcoming someone who's, you know, got all the experience and has a performance edge on you. Yeah, and without having the expectation as well of herself, I mean, she would surf this every day of her life, probably. You know, when you're at home, I'm sure you did, <laughs> Laura, just out here every single afternoon after school, maybe most mornings before it. So she just has that extra froth. But I guess a super advantage, but also somewhat absorbed by Sally. I feel like the more Bella will froth, the more Sally vibes off that kind of energy. She just, like, sucks it in and then uses it in her advantage to, um, to get things moving and stuff like this. I, I like what Bella's doing right now, finding some space. You know, the if she's in Sally's sphere, sitting among Sally's aura, then, then Sally, like you said, is kind of, she's going to zap that energy and she's going to know exactly what she wants to do. If you get out of her face and, and can find some room to maybe bank a score and get yourself into the lead, suddenly you can put some doubt in her mind. But, uh, Laura, I, I actually question, I don't think you would have surfed out here as a Grom. If you did, you would have got blown up the peninsula, <laughs> just tumbling across the surface of the water like a balloon. <laughs> oh, looks like Bella's having a, a go here, but I feel like she's going to move down the beach. She might have to head down to the car parks. There was a, a bunch of Groms sitting on a fun-looking little left bank down there. But okay. I like it. Yeah, yeah. just roam around. Tide is, uh, you know, heading out, though, so... Things can just change constantly out here with that tide. Yeah, Bella's been really quick, uh, even after her heat in the quarters with Macy to give respect where it's due. And she was like, you know, I'm, I'm really aware of how great a surfer Macy is. Um, but you, you could tell there was this underlying confidence yeah. there and belief that she can overcome these big names. And she's found some room. Nice hit there. Will she get another turn in? Just doing her best to generate some momentum. Uh, Sally, again, just tries to, to swing the reverse. It's a bit of a go-to move for Sal when she doesn't have a lot of speed. She can whip that board around, but unsuccessful on this occasion. So even though she's out in front, Bella's right in it at the moment. You can kind of see that left you were talking about too, Laura, can't you? That off the edge of car parks, or kind of was yeah. there, wasn't it, at some point? Or further the down morning. the south there. Mm. Yeah, that's a long way away from, from alley rides, though. Totally. It's that bit too far. You, you're probably going to have to have to run around for that one right now. Don't mind it as a, a strategy, though. Just, there's not a whole lot doing here. Yeah, we've got a dropping swell this afternoon as well. So with that low tide, these alley rides will, you know, stay around this size, I'm guessing. Looks like Sally might have found a double up, though, and this is what you need to find out here. Oh, this one sneaks by them. And then it'll be a little bit deeper here at the moment. Just on that eight minutes to go. Sal keeping a, a close eye on uh, Bella out there at the moment. She wants to get herself to the, the top of the, the peak where she can really make the most of that first section, but she doesn't mm -hmm. want to put herself out of position for a wave and give Bella opportunities down the line. Yeah, I think I felt like I saw that a little bit in Isabella's heat. Uh, at the first exchange, Isabella was kind of a little bit too deep and she missed all this scoring opportunity. She still banked a seven in her heat, but then the adjustment was that next set. She kind of skipped a little bit higher on the line and maybe like five foot towards where Bella is right now on the takeoff zone. And she found herself an eight. So 
Yeah, it's a fine line, isn't it, between those being a little too deep and then also missing that first turn. Yeah, and what Bella was able to do in her in her last heat in the quarterfinal, she did take off, uh, you know, just behind the peak, and she got to get a, generate a lot of speed. So she came around the section, and that's where she was able to do her first big hits and uh, get that scoring potential. So I loved her positioning last heat. It's a whole different ball game now, though. Talk to me, uh, Laura, uh, about y your thoughts on the evolution in performance of women's surfing. It seems like we're seeing yet a, another hyper jump. Uh, Sally Fitzgibbons that was one of those competitors up there with those multiple world champions who are still campaigning but, that really helped take it to a, another level. But this next wave is, you know, probably more, more rounded uh, at the moment. They've still got growth in their surfing, but it, it just seems like there's nothing that they can't do. Seriously, and uh, you know, we had Mel Bartels back when I was growing up. That was uh, she was the benchmark to look up to for pro progression, and then Silvana Lima obviously starting to do her air reverses and generate them and uh, you know, transfer them into heats as well. Uh, and then you know, Sally started getting some airs in as well. And uh, Lakey Peterson, obviously, Carissa Moore, she pulled off an amazing air at Newcastle last year in the CT, sorry, 2021, but uh, yeah, now. It just feels like the, this next generation, they are getting so comfortable uh, and doing these airs with so much style and with so much technique and yeah, with a lot of flair. So love to see it. And women's surfing is in a really, really epic place. I'm not going to ask you to talk about yourself, but uh, Jess, I'll, <laughs> I'll get you to talk about Laura. About Laura yeah, because there's another, component, do an air. <laughs> there's another component of the progression mm. that we're seeing happen now that women are getting those uh, opportunities to surf at those heavier locations on the CT. We'll come back to that in a moment. Ms. Bella has a quick one. But the, the evolution at places like Pipeline, Chopu, has been radical and we saw it in Fiji when it was a, a stop at cloud break H how quickly just in a few years the the level went up but uh for kids like Bella what mm. Laura's doing in big waves is, mm. is also uh, helping to push the needle just as Kiala Kenley and, and Rochelle Bella before her did yeah and credit to her as well I can see you squirming under that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that just trying to absorb so many compliments but People like Laura and um, the, those women that are pushing it in the big wave surfing, you know, paddling one of the biggest waves ever, um, especially for a woman. And, and then there's also the whole barrel riding thing that comes into play for the women. Here goes Bella. Oh, quick up and out in her. But there's just so many aspects that have come together at once. Like it used to be, you know, someone was only the barrel rider. And when it got smaller or got a bit more grovelier, they just couldn't surf. But now there's like... The CT surfers that go good when it's this small or charge, you know, 30, 40 foot waves. Here goes Sally Fitzgibbons. Hasn't been as busy as Bella. Using her priority to good effect on this ride. Getting the opportunity to push on that tail. That final move was strong and she's going to extend her lead now. That was smart. That was a well-found wave out here. And I just love the way she it feels like she was forcing it on those last couple. Just trying to just better that 3.17 and uh, just wasn't really happening for her in those waves but that that wave she had the flow back and that second turn was was cool she slid the tail a bit so i think we'll be seeing that 317 disappear and that 5.8 a bit higher now for bella to jump mm. the lead yeah I, I really feel like when sal was working on a surfing it was fantastic but maybe she forced uh, those progressive moves that she'd been working on in free surfs into heats and, and it kind of took away a bit of a consistency. It was great to see her land a couple uh, in sort of different events but it, it did sort of when she took the focus off her power surfing it's it sort of when she started to dip down the rankings a little yeah, bit. Yeah for sure and she didn't make the cut last year uh, and then she got the wild card and so she was in El Salvador and I think she wanted to make the most of it and she was shredding before the event posted this clip of her doing a really, really epic, gnarly blowtail um, air reverse. And uh, everyone was just like, this is amazing. But then uh, Sally in her next heat, she was she was a bit behind and then she just started going for the air reverse. And I do feel like she could have oh, got the Maybe just rail surf yeah. their way out of it. But uh, here we go. Bella's going to answer. Sal is uh, going to put a decent score up. But... Kenworthy finishing this one off on the inside. So Sally banked a five on her last ride. 
Waiting on scores to come through for Bella now. Ooh, I can't wait to see the replay of this in the context of the heat in comparison to Sal's five. That first turn is probably going to be the difference. So I'll, I'll wait to see the replay, Laura. Oh, that board looks so fun. It's just got so much natural uh, speed to it. But yeah, nice carving slash there for Bella. Getting it on rail and then she's waiting for this to push up and she pumps through to the inside here and then gets the finish. So I think the judges are really like that. Mm. And then Sal behind her. Let's see what she got up to. Just had a nice Ooh. bowl to it and closed the tail there. Solid individual turn. Not, not much else on offer there. This is going to be a pretty close finish to this heat. A minute and 20 seconds to go. Waiting on numbers to roll through. And what is going to be the outcome of this? It is just unbelievably close between these two at the moment. Conditions, you've got to say it, that they've come down a, a little bit. The wind having a, a massive part in that, but the tide also dropping. So not as much space to, to draw those turns out. Sal's last ride coming through at a 3.63. Bella Kenworthy, her number in two. 493 for Bella. So brings her requirement down a little bit, but 5.9 to advance right now to get the jump on Sal. So uh, 40 seconds to go and the 16 year old still looking for more. She needs a 5.9. Sal's with priority though. She's been in this situation so many times to close heats out. And Jessie just don't see her oh. faltering at this point in time. No, I, d I can't see this. I can't see Sal making a mistake. The only thing I can see is another opportunity coming after Sal uses priority. In 15 seconds though, I'm, I'm not sure for Bella. And I'm, I'm sad for her that she didn't get that end section on that 493 because that would have been the score. Yeah, it just, just felt like she was going to get a bit closer with that last ride. Yeah, I did feel like it was going to go up into the fives. I didn't think it was going to go all the way into the, the sixes, but I think maybe the downtime and the, you know, pumping through that dead section on that wave just uh, really I think, brought it down for the judges. Yeah, I think too that just the comparison to the depth of sales flow, uh, her rail turns, and uh, yeah. It was a, a close one, though. A, a real scrappy fight, low scoring heat as we dive into the Harvey Norman heat recap. Yeah, Sal dissected this perfectly, didn't she? She just played the heat well into her hand. And she had the best two waves and she just executed when it needed to be done. Yeah, that uh, opening ride by far the best wave of the yeah, heat. Yeah, definitely. And Bella, she came back strong. This was a really nice turn. This was a 493 at the end, and I think. What let yeah. it down was just this this downtime. That was a sort of a transition snap there, but just didn't really give her any energy at the end here. She is such a talent though. Huge future for Bella Kenworthy and and a massive result. A mm. third place finish on the Challenger series. She's gonna be charging up the Challenger series leaderboard, but it will be Sally Fitzgibbons having a shot at a win here at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. We're going to take a quick break. Isabella Nichols and India Robinson will go at it for that last spot in the final right after this.
that feeling going up and down the New South Wales coast with my family and my friends, all of the memories. There's no place like home and this place really does have a special feeling in my heart. You come to Sydney and no one's sleeping in here. Everyone's out and about doing amazing things, coastal walks, coffee. Everyone loves to be outdoors and just taking in the beautiful energy around us. We started the morning off with a surf at Narrabeen, then up to my favourite coffee stop at Zuby Narrabeen. Went and checked out a couple of the coastal walks, some really cool places you can just see, hold a line up and break. And then over to throw some clay around, which is something I've wanted to do for a long time at Throw Clay Studios. Northern Beaches coastline is just beautiful. You've got amazing waves all up and down the coast, cafes, restaurants, surf clubs, each that make these beaches so different and unique. Welcome back to the show. We're going to have a look at the Bailey Ladders bracket and you can see Sally Fitzgibbons just won through over Bella Kenworthy to earn her spot in the final here at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. And we're going to see two more Australians battle it out in that second semi. India Robinson looking to go back to back through those first two events of the Challenger Series up against Isabella Nichols though. It's not an easy draw. One thing for certain, it's going to be an all Aussie ladies final. Yeah, and Sally Fitzgibbons chasing a, her second victory in a, a major event here on the Northern Beaches of Sydney. So uh, she'll have some positive memories to call on there, but what are your thoughts here, Jess? Who do you think's got the advantage in these kind of conditions? Oh, big question, loaded question right at the start of this, but I think uh, India's ability to, I guess, keep that down the line speed and, and really high and tight, she's got that like takeoff um, skip hop kind of bottom turn. I think that's going to be really good for that if that exaggeration or that final manoeuvre. Um, although, I mean, Bella, she just seems to be very much in her own zone, not too worried about the other person in her heat at this stage and, and just working on improving her own performance regardless. So, I don't know, I, at this point, I'm going to give the nod to India in these conditions for now. For now. Okay. <laughs> for now. It is a tough question. Yeah. Uh, I just think that Isabella's found it. I don't think she had it yet mm -hmm. mentally after missing the cut. Yeah, too soon. Through those first five events on the Gold Coast. I think she was trying to convince herself that she was ready for the Challenger Series, but, you know, there was still a lot of noise between the ears, but she's just looked a lot more confident oh. through this uh, event so far. And I just... I like the way she just has that release in the tail, that extra poor shot. I think that might be an edge here. But India taking off on, on one. So just a 1.5 for India Robinson, the surfer from Janjuk, Victoria, who lives up north on the coast now. And uh, Isabella banking a 5.5 on her first wave. I feel like we're not really going to see Isabella take off on any wave that's not standing up because she's just so good if there's a little bit of pocket. She's got that slide on her. Uh, in a in a um, you know rail game and 5.5 for a first so that'll be that's a nice way to start for, for Isabella. Yeah, I mean both are so worthy at a shot at it. You you've got to remember what we've experienced and what the competitors have had to, to <laughs> deal with through this event window already, Jess. I mean such a a wide range of conditions. Yeah, it's kind of overwhelming to think back to the very first day of competition. Oh, he goes India. India Robinson, uh, again, it's going to be a throwaway score, but, yeah, just a, an amazing variety of conditions. And mm. we knew that it was going to take a, a great performance from someone who was able to adapt to each and every one of those different characteristics. Yeah, that staying really adaptable or changeable on the fly, I think that's what happened with Sally's heat. I think she's really good at that, obviously, um, and just kind of dominating the ends of heats and priorities. Uh, I, I feel like I, I can't particularly recall which heats, but over the last 12 months for India, um, seeing at some times her getting a little bit stuck in plan A or even plan B and not having the flexibility to roll into plan C. I see that is something that maybe she's been working on and we'll see, I guess, if it comes to fruition here because, like you said, Laura, it's just changing and it, it, the tide's changing and everything about this is shifting. Here we go. A bit of movement here from Isabella. Looks like maybe that wind's just 
holding off a, a little bit right now. Isabella not able to get a, a turn in on this one. This takes it way down the line and doesn't generate much out of it. So India assumes priority and she needs to get herself a, a score on the board here. We know that 5.5, while it isn't a, a big number, could be a score that Isabella is able to hang on to. Yeah, that'll be in the scoreline, I feel, at the end. Uh, I just think that the quality of that wave was, was up there with the best we've seen in a while. So hopefully Isabella can find some more of those. And, uh, yeah, India, like you said, Jess, I think she's she's come leaps and bounds, you know. She's had a lot of adversity to, to deal with, with that concussion that she suffered a couple of years ago and still dealing with, with you know, things at the moment as well. So... How amazing for her. She she said that in one of her post aid interviews at, at Snapper that she came into it with not really too much expectation because she had a lot of lot of stuff going on outside of surfing. So, you know, to win that event mm -hmm. and then be here in the semifinals, hats off to her. Yeah, it's uh, been a, a really solid first couple of rounds in what's going to be a, a six-round schedule. Surfers get the opportunity to drop their worst two results from the six events on the Challenger Series. And, you know, to be leaving Australia and still have those two throwaways up your sleeve is mm. massive, huge. And there was a, a number of surfers that counted, you know, a win and, and a semi-final last year. And, well, two, two surfers in particular, um, fifth and, and sixth on the ratings at the end of the Challenger Series, uh, had wins and, and a semi-final. And one of them, Teresa, didn't qualify. So it's not a guarantee with a win in a semi that you're going to crack that top five, but it, she's on her way. Yeah, Alyssa Spencer also had a win and she had two fifths and was down in seventh at the end of the year. So it uh, just goes to show that even with a win, you have to have that consistency of being up around the quarterfinals in most events. Gosh, that's a lot of heats to be winning through a yeah. contest. I mean, well, yeah, when you, if you looked at all the numbers, the how many heats you have to win over the six events is going to be very high for the women, yeah, for those I, top five. And that came down to just those top, the women that in the top five, they were just more consistent. You know, they, they all had wins in their in their pockets, but then they also had semifinals, finals. And, uh, yeah, it was the same group of girls that we found in the final series at most events last year. So you got to get up there. So 19 and a half minutes to go here. Isabella Nichols trying to find some space while India's holding that priority. India pretty staunch with her positioning, though. She didn't, uh, didn't flinch at that ride. She knows what she's after out here. She would have identified where the, uh, the best waves were coming in with her, her coach, Jay Thompson, former CT surfer. And, uh, yeah, she's... Just hanging out for, for a, a bigger set wave at the moment because she's had a, a couple of attempts at, at rides and wasn't fantastic wave selection. It's not easy to find them out there at the moment, but two throwaways so far. She's got to put up something that can uh, match it with the 5.5 that we saw from Isabella, who's actually willing to take a chance on just about anything by the looks of things. <laughs> Maybe trying to... I don't know if she's building that momentum into her corner or just trying to little bit of rattling of India's cage there because, yeah, she is she's really anchored down in that spot with priority. She's sitting, or oh, India's sitting exactly where she wants to sit. She's obviously identified the exact type of wave as well, and Bella's just going everything that comes under her nose. Yeah, I think with 18 minutes to go, Bella just wants to drop that one mm. to, you know, if she can get one slash in and, and even get a three, that's, that's a lot of pressure on India. Just over 18 minutes to go. We just discovered our first finalist here at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro. It is Sally Fitzgibbons. She's with Stace. Thanks, Ron. Sally, all that time at Jaroa Beach, you paying off. Oh, that was insane. The wind kind of kicked up right as Bella and I paddled out. And it kind of went into her wheelhouse. She loves the NSSA days, you know, Huntington grind. So good in it. So created this, like, kind of pressure cooker situation. And then I, I kind of got a mid-ranger and then just trying to improve on the three. So there's a lot going on in your head. She went to the left and kind of the, even though the waves are terrible, the chess match was, was really awesome. 
the chess match almost becomes more intense when the waves sort of die off like that. Oh, for sure. And, like, you know, with the wind picking up, you couldn't really hear. And you're looking up into the, the wind, it's just like white horses coming out of your white caps. And you're thinking, oh, is this a little chippy and how do I get into it? Um, so, yeah, you just kind of got to adapt. And I've surfed plenty of heats like this in, you know, Grom days, QS days. Even on the CT, we've had the wind change like that. So uh, you got to draw on the experiences and uh, keep up with the young kids. You're doing that well, Sal. Into the final. Thanks for your time. God, love it. Oh, she's buzzing. <laughs> yeah. She's like the most beloved surfer that I have seen in a contest site. Oh, I just love the uh, the She chest. never leaves. <laughs> I think she's been in her wetsuit the whole entire week. There's there's love for everyone else, but they they tend to go home after they surf a heat. <laughs> Sal's she's first here, last to leave, and it seems like that's going to be the case today because uh, she has cracked the final. She'll be going up against the winner of this one. Isabella Nichols hanging on to the lead at the moment, but you know, she's at the moment not hanging on the huge scores. There's India Robinson on the outside. So much wind to deal oh. with. And she opts to get out back to that takeoff zone for, for priority here. Got to put her head down and paddle hard, though. Isabella's in this race to the takeoff zone as well as we wait for the numbers to come through from that last ride. Which way are the judges going to throw the priority here? Geez, that was almost a section as well for India. I feel like, yeah. I mean, what what else could you have done? It, it ran so quick, but I, it, I thought wind, she was loading. Yeah, the wind kind of caught her off and uh, she got stuck at the top when she took off. Isabella now yeah, she, looks... She got the priority. Sorry, Laura. Oh. Didn't get much out of it, though. So uh, good sell from India. Just under 16 minutes to go. And yeah. yeah, I think you're right. There might have been a section, but how's what she was dealing with in just trying to get to her feet on that last ride? Yeah. Look at the water going up the, the face of this thing. I think she uh, needed to get into it a little bit sooner. As soon as she was stuck at the top, it just made it so much more difficult to quickly get up into that lip. Isabella just grinding away to try better that one. She did it. She got a 367, so putting a bit more pressure on... I yeah. Robinson. Yeah, amazing. Uh, you know, it, it's such a crucial score. It's such a nothing number, a 3.67. Like, even I can get those. And uh, I have <laughs> as a top score. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's an important score in the scheme of this heat. At this point, the halfway mark, you know, Isabella's had a, a number of attempts at it, just trying to add to that heat score total. Because the requirement now for India is a 6.5. And... The best she's managed is a 2.67. I, I think within the context of that heat as well, like there was that flurry. Nothing was really happening. It was just jostling. And then within 15 seconds, three different points of differences happened at once. And just like that, it all fell into Isabella's favour, I think, during the second half of this heat. And that's, I feel like they have been really um, distinct throughout the day of competition, those real changing points in momentum. The warm-up. For India, Robinson would have been challenging. Kicking the football on the beach today, uh, I mean, there's a pretty good chance it's going to get blown away. And uh, it's sort of the same in the lineup. You know, it's not really something that you can get too prepared for. You've just got to call on, oh, I think as Sally said, all those sessions that you had at Grom in surf that, you know, no one wants to be in, really, that the, there's not even a lot of opportunity. And India, she's the one who's kind of falling behind at the moment here. Even in the... When there's been an opportunity to hit it, she hasn't been there in time. I, I feel like she could kind of be in a right there with similar numbers to, to Isabella already. So, got to give credit to Isabella in just finding an edge. For sure. And Sally even uh, touched on it. Finding those chip-ins today, you know, there's a lot of bump there and uh, you don't want to waste that priority. So, finding that little chip, finding that edge that's going to give you that extra push into the wave. It's back to small wave basics, basically. And... Uh, just really getting that lift as soon as you take off to generate as much speed and as well this wind. It's just blowing you back. And then the paddle in is crucial, isn't it? Just yeah. getting that momentum, getting ahead of that offshore breeze. You've got to paddle twice as hard, honestly. 13 minutes to go here. Isabella Nichols with priority. Something moving her way at the moment. She's having to think about it. A little worried about India Robinson. She gets into this one. Looks to generate some speed for a hit here. Digs in the best she can. But not sure that one's going to go into the top two. Just over 12 and a half minutes to go. 
And we'll wait on that number to drop. And while we do, we're going to go to a Bonsoy brew break. Welcome back. Semi-final number two underway. Ten and a half minutes to go here. Isabella Nichols holding a slight edge over India Robinson. India with priority. She needs a 6.5 to get herself into the lead. We're going to get an update now from Stacey's with Will Hayden-Smith. Thanks, Ron. I do have an update. Will, probably the most thankless job in surfing. What are we up to for the rest of the afternoon, mate, as you're about to lose your toupee? Yeah, speak of that southerly wind, um, we just had a really rapid deterioration in conditions. Um, the wind was a direction that we didn't really see coming. We kind of thought it would be strong west and it was strong south-southwest. And uh, So we're going to stop. There's only four heats left, but this is really important to these surfers and their careers. So we're going to wait. We're going to do a call tomorrow. I haven't decided exactly what time, but it's probably going to be around 7.15. And I saw you canvassing the area, talking to surfers and coaches and getting feedback from just about everyone on site. Yeah, exactly. I, I spoke to Sal, I spoke to Cole, I spoke to Jacko, and even they, Jacko and Cole were originally pretty keen to go, just because they were in their wetsuits, fired up, and after having a chat and a real hard look, they went, it's probably one foot and about as bad as it can get. So we think, we know we've got better. We've got three days, we'll get, we'll get better surf than this. Thanks for your time, Mill. Good call. Thank you, Stace. Yeah, it, it seems like the right call. There was excellent numbers dropping earlier today. It wasn't huge, but, you know, there was opportunities for competitors and this, this strong southwest wind has just really taken conditions apart. The low tide not helping either at the moment. For sure. And, I mean, I think that's a smart call. There are waves on the forecast. Tomorrow we, uh, we don't know how it will be. It could be uh, that, that big south swell. We know it could be either too big or it could be really good we're just not really sure we we'll have to wake up and see but uh yeah this south wind is really wreaking havoc right now oh, also, i thought we were going to get blown <laughs> off the set the harvey norman host set we've got to protect that yeah this is home i just buckled up thought we were going flying out <laughs> to new zealand take off <laughs> but it is uh, a good call what we've got is unbelievable semi-final heats established on the men's side. We're about to work out who our second finalist here. It's been a, a tough one for these two competitors as the conditions have worsened throughout this exchange. And Isabella's just managing to, to edge ahead here at the moment, but it's not over. Even though Isabella's found some room here at the moment. Oh. Nice hit. There's some solid oh. surfing <laughs> as she gets another one in. And that's a big combination. And India. Or well, she'll be absolutely up against it when this number drops because it's not going to just replace the 3.67. It's going to blow the 5.5 out of the water too. It's going to be a really good tally. 
Ali Wrights have turned into Ali Wrongs, but Isabella found <laughs> a gem here. You know, she just knew when she took off. She had that speed and that down the line momentum and then just made the most of it here. And that's going to be a huge score. Look, just that stand up wall, Isabella. Whoa. That's her, her classic trademark slash there and up into the pocket here. So, so much flow. Man, that, so well done. Yeah, and that's someone with their, their mind on the prize, Jess. That's someone yeah. who's, you know, in it. Despite the conditions, she's right here fighting for it. She knows that she needs a big result to turn things around after falling out of the mix early on the Gold Coast. But that was such a hard wave to serve. She ripped it. Yeah, she did. And that's the single point that I took from her previous round as well in the quarterfinal, that ability to adjust under pressure and with these changing mm. conditions like that just snap decision to go to those quick transitional big snap straight into the next one and just like that she's going to collect that score the hardest the hardest part of the wave was that whitewash takeoff as well mm. but i think the way that she angled her board it pushed her and, and gave her this really nice uh this speed and placement for that first turn so so well done by bella 7.83 almost busting into the excellent range a few judges said that she was worthy but uh, that means that india now with just over six minutes to go and, and no real scores to speak of she's comboed she needs a two-wave total of 13.33 uh, i mean it's a short punchy ride here at the moment no dramas getting back to the takeoff zone so she still has time mm. realistically to turn this around with two rides yeah, that's where that important plan C or D or whatever number you're up to in the heat comes into play, I think, for her. She has to just get out of whatever mindset that she was in for the first 20 minutes of this thing or 25 minutes and go into absolute attack mode. Two consecutive rides, you know, two sevens, and he's back. She was always going to have to uh, fight for this result regardless of what the conditions were doing because Isabella's shown strong form in the, the contest. But uh, this is a, a real battle now. You know, she's she's lost the first few rounds of this heat, and uh, she she's got to throw some haymakers at the end for a knockout. Isabella up again though, just chipping away, and she's trying to improve on a 5.5 now. Won't do it there. I mean, at the end of the day, India Robinson, she's going to be. Uh, leaving this Australian shores right at the top end of the rankings. We've got to see how, how Sally fares in, in that final, but, a, you know, a, a chance that they're sharing the number one position on the rankings. Yeah, for sure. That would be huge. Uh, huge for Sally, huge start for India. You know what? Believe it or not, the, uh, the conditions are getting worse still. <laughs> Four and a half minutes to go. And, and it, the reason why that is a, a major factor now is that India Robinson's, you know, so up against it already in chasing these scores down, but it's just getting harder and harder for her to find those with the, the wind howling the way it is at the moment. Yeah, this wind is bonkers. Go away, please. It's so strong it's not even good kite flying. It's, it's, it's too strong. We'll fold the kite in half. I hate you. But uh, Isabella Nichols on the Harvey Norman Heat recaps made some sense, some sense out of this lineup, and this was her best ride. This was an absolute bomb by Bella to stay composed out there and turn this around. Bella just showing why she's uh, so experienced. She's been around doing some incredible surfing and... I feel like we're going to see her back on the World Tour next year. Mm. Like you said, Ronnie, she's just, she might not have looked like she had found her spot yet or found her feel. And in this heat, this is it. This is that turning point in the scheme of the whole contest for her. And possibly in the series, like at the end yeah. of the season when she looks back and looking at how she handled and processes this whole heat, you can see both of them <laughs> maybe sharing a word there too about nature and all the things they have to handle during professional surfing, it's its going to be a real high point for her. Oh, yeah. They can't even hear each other and they're shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> yeah. Water in your eyes. You know, no updates probably or audible from oh, the on-shot announcers, so they don't really know. I'm sure Isabel, uh, Isabella knows that she's had some decent rides, though, and, and India, if she reflects on, on what's happened for her, she would know that she's had nothing. So she'd understand that she's well behind at the moment. Yeah, with that uh, wind blowing out 
the scene up the coast, I'm sure they're not hearing any <laughs> anything from the uh, speakers right now. Two and a half minutes to go. Uh, you know, this is uh, that moment, Jess, I, I think India in her mind is going, you know what? What? <laughs> if she hadn't had a Challenger Series win, if she had a, a bad result up there on the Gold Coast, this would be just the most painful heat for her to surf right yeah. now. But she's already cut a, a mean run through this event again, bringing great form to this second contest. And he's so well situated now on the Challenger Series rankings that she almost... You know, there will only be a slight amount of disappointment. <laughs> yeah, well, I think she has some good points to take out of it anyway. I, if she, Isabella lost in this heat, though, she, yeah. she'd be devastated. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Totally devastating if you don't already have that thing in your bank or the back pocket. Yeah. But and, and the thing is, Isabella has been able to pick the eyes out of this, which is unbelievable. But uh, India just hasn't been able to find any of those gems that Bella's been on. Yeah. Isabella might even come in and say, I can't believe they're calling it off. I'm ready to go, <laughs> bring on the final. That's how well she surfed this heat. She almost got herself an eight-point rod, for goodness sakes. Yeah. I, I, I loved, I'd love to see the moment when she comes in and she realises she'll be matching up against Sally. Oh, I can't wait to see the adjustment of that. And I, I want to hear from her how she absorbs it. Look, they, I think they know. They've, they've processed it together. They've discussed. Yeah. They know what's going on out there. Yeah, for sure. It's going to take, you know, we'll be here for a call tomorrow morning. It might take them that long to walk back into the Sutherland and make their way back to the contest yeah, site. India's just going to come in and uh, put some chapstick on. <laughs> <laughs> call it a day. Oh, I think her nose and her lips got blown off her face. <laughs> 50 seconds to go here. And the result is a given. Isabella Nichols is going to be taking on Sally Fitzgibbons in the final of the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. India Robinson's going to consolidate her position at the top end of the Challenger Series ranks after these first two stops with amazing surfing at Snapper Rocks and some highlight moments here at North Narrabeen as well. Yeah, well played, India. Definitely, definitely a uh, great result for her, nonetheless. What a turnaround, too, from, you know, that devastating uh, injury, the concussion that, you know, obviously takes so long to come back from. Yeah, it's, it's no joke. It's been a, a long road for India. She's spoken openly about it and um, just you know, the symptoms that you can get post-concussion are just really, really intense. It took her out of the lineup, out of the water for a long time. So it's something that you have to deal with. And I think Owen Wright's talked about it openly as well. It's, it's always there. It's something that uh, you just have to you know, keep on top of and, and really protect and, and look after your brain. Congratulations, too, to Isabella. What a good heat for her. The Isabella finalist. Nichols charging on through to the final. She'll take on Sally Fitzgibbons. We're going to take a quick break. The WSL Post Show is just around the corner.
Thanks for staying with us for the WSL Post Show. A lot to look at, some big heats this morning to set up our semi-finals. And, of course, we had the completion of the round of 16 for the men, and we got through some quarters there. Mm. And we're going to have some uh, some good waves to have a look at. But this afternoon, things just got a, a little crazy, Laura. The wind picked up big time. It did. It, uh, it just it came so intensely from the southwest. We were thinking it was going to be an offshore breeze this afternoon, but that southwest wind, you can see the white caps in the background there, and uh, we thought we were going to take off in here in the Harvey Norman Hotel for a while. We did, yeah. Uh, it was a, a kind of a, a decision that had to be made. We were looking at a finals day today, this Sunday, but Jess, I, I think it's the right call. Yeah, it will be. And it's a hard call to make. I mean, there was a lot of fans on the beach. So there's a lot of people that were revved up for finals, but it is the right call conditions-wise. Yeah, let's have a look at the women's bracket. Uh, we'll thank Bailey Ladders for that. But this is looking like it's going to be an all-time final. Sally Fitzgibbons, she already bagged a, a semi-final finish up there at the Gold Coast. Good run for her. And Isabella Nichols just overcoming into India Robinson in that last heat. Full CT final right here. This is uh, going to be an absolute banger. Cannot wait to see these girls fight out for it. And uh, yeah, Isabella, she'll be looking for that win. And, and also Sally, I mean, huge start to the year for her. I feel like she just relishes in these Australian events and, and soaks up, you know, all of the fans, all of, all of the beaches. Uh, she's just looked so excited and, and her attitude is just... <laughs> It's like always, just just on. Yeah, it was all about really just surviving the conditions to, to stay alive in the draw to get a shot at the win here. We know Sally's had a big victory here on the Northern Beaches before, Jess. She's looking for mm. a second. Isabella, just a, a really important result on the way for her, just trying to get a place at the top end of the Challenger Series rankings. Yeah, she looks a little bit removed from the hype that's going around the comp as well. So I don't know if that's going to play in the hand for her as an advantage or if Sally's going to be able to feel everybody wishing her this win. I can see a million little grums running up and mm. down the sand with Fitzgibbon's jerseys on. So it's going to be a tough one. Um, for Isabella to overcome, but I think if she can stay in her zone, she's got this. I know what you're right. Yeah, Sal, it almost feels like it could be the Sally Fitzgibbon Sydney Surf <laughs> yeah. Pro. That's how involved in yeah. this uh, event she is. And like you said, she, she's she been buzzing uh, around the event and she's probably as a result of uh, her contact with the fans here and all the competitors have got it, but Sal's just got it a little bit more. I'm sure she's, she's gathered a bit of a following down here. Yeah, it's huge. Like she talks about connection, um, you know, to nature and, and to the whole thing about being a professional surfer. And I feel like when you're that connected to something, you can't help but receive all of these well wishes. And there's literally from the oldest dude on the beach to the youngest little Grom are just going sal at the moment. Yeah, oh, for sure. She'll Let's, be uh, stinging for the win. It's been, <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah, for sure. She wants to get that feeling back. Let's have a look at the Bailey Ladder men's bracket now. And we had an amazing finishes in the round of 16 which set up our quarterfinal clashes and here are the surfers that are going to battle it out for the semis and into the final. Oh these are some great semi-finals when I look at look at uh, what's going on here Jackson Baker Cole that's uh that's going to be an amazing semi these two have been standouts in the event dropping you know excellent scores throughout the whole you know waiting period in so many different types of waves and uh you know, like Stace and Will Hayden Smith said before, they were fired up, you know, just an hour ago to get going and they really wanted to do it. But then that wind just rapidly just went boom. Yeah, it did in a big way. So Cole Hauschman, uh, Jackson Baker on the top side of the draw, you know, much like Isabella Nichols on, on the women's side, didn't have great results on the Gold Coast. Down mm. the bottom side of that semi-final bracket, Jacob Wilcox showing some real consistency through the Australian League so far. Yeah, he has. I mean, he's bracketed both times and he just looks really calm. I felt like even in the post-heat interviews with him, you just couldn't help but settle back into like the Wilcox effect. You just quietened down a little bit and everything felt like it just simmered down rather than being this like intense overboiling cauldron. So I think that he's going to be really hard to beat yeah, in that semi. Looking sharp and fought his way out of some tough heats as well. There, there hasn't been a tougher heat maybe than what we just saw though. Isabella Nichols gets the win and let's hear what she's got to say about it. Thanks, Ryan. Bella, give us a rundown. Good call to call the contest off. <laughs> um, it was fun for like the first minute of my heat and then um, this squall came, squall came through and... I don't know, I just, with the wind came a bit of scattiness, I was just kind of tripping out there taking off on anything and uh, I don't know, I just got so lucky in that one. Whoever had the waves was going to get through and Indy's been on fire and she's one of my good mates so yeah, it sucks to have a heat against one of your good friends but 
That was hard. All well, that practice at Coolum paid off. Uh, yes, uh, Coolum. Coolum's a beautiful place. We do get waves like this. Um, so I think it's put me in good stead. Just like I actually kind of saw it, even when it was glassy, it still looked hard. But I was frothing. I'm like, this looks like a shory. Like I'm, I'm so stoked. Um, but it just got just uncontestable out there. Then that was hard. <laughs> you did well to manage the conditions. Thanks for your time, and we'll see you maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. Thanks, Ron. Good on you, stay, Sam. Well done there to Isabella Nichols, making sense of it. But uh, look, it's. It's never easy. We knew you, we were going to see competitors having to adapt to, to all kinds of conditions. We, we didn't expect <laughs> they were going to have to adapt to that. But uh, let's have a look at some of the better conditions that we had earlier today. The Boost Mobile Wave of the Day, it does belong to Morgan Sidlick. This was an absolute bomb. Morgan this morning just taking off. Look at the line and the read on this. Slashing first turn. It was so clean. And these waves look like little lowers rights this morning. But he got this uh, epic end turn in here, just banging, throwing water to the heavens. And fortunately bowed out. We don't see him in the semifinals. Yeah, highlight moments though and a solid result for him nonetheless. Let's get stuck into it. Even though the conditions did fall away toward the end this morning, it was really clean. We saw big numbers dropping and we'll get stuck into our top five moments of the day. Starting with Jacob Wilcox, who turned things around in his heat earlier this morning. Yeah, here's the Wilcox effect right here. He's so calm, he's calculated and when it's time, he just attacks. Just such a big backhand performance from him throughout the day and he just looks so lethal and so well timed so sharp through those transitions as well he just clicks so perfectly every time with the lip there and he was a crowd favorite oh yeah and he was letting the crowd know he was happy with that ride a couple of big numbers for him an excellent heat score total and it was the same for Sally Fitzgibbon. She was on fire in the quarterfinals. Yeah, two eight-point rides off the bat. She was just generating so much momentum through these waves, just slicing through, then kicking the tail out, releasing that. And, uh, you know, who wasn't even on the best waves in this heat, but just really found a way to make her mark and uh, throwing the tail there and just love this speed from Sally. She's, she's in fine form. She's on, that's for sure. Coming in at number three, my favourite performance from today, a great two-wave total. Jackson Baker looking every bit the CT surfer. Yeah, he has. Look at this explosion he has through that first top turn. And he just makes the best of the conditions. Really explosive, a lot of energy. My favourite part was this, though. <laughs> the post-heat debrief with the guy that he just beat. Yeah. Best part. Yeah, Fred, Fred looks psyched. <laughs> Coming in at number two, Bella, Bella Kemworthy, 16 years of age and getting a win in the quarterfinals over Macy. Yeah, this was huge for Bella, the biggest result of her career and 6,000 points to add to her total heading into the rest of the Challenger Series. That is absolutely huge and what a confidence boost for the Grom. But coming in at number one, it goes to the guy that got the boost mobile wave of the day, Morgan Siblick. Just a, a fantastic read on this one, Jess. Yeah, clinical timing, precision, everything you wanted in a wave. And he's found the nine-point rage multiple times now in contests. So he was looking so solid. And, and unfortunately for him, like you said, um, he's fallen out but nine points again, top wave of the day. Yeah, he's back on track. Uh, an unbelievable morning of competition. We've only got four heats to go. There is a chance we'll have finals tomorrow. So we'll be down here first thing, making a call nice and early. Right now, though, we're going to leave you with highlights. See you tomorrow.